operating stations report to a, a system um, which is called the South African Air Quality Information System. 1,475 uh, EPWP work opportunities were created through a departmental uh, employment programs. Next slide, Samu. And then under performance search, um, as I've indicated, Chair, the, the target in the APP, it's invoices that were paid to five within 15 yeah. days. And then the target was 100. We managed to achieve a 93%. But as I've indicated, Chair, um, in terms of the PFMA, uh, which is supposed to be paid within 30 days, we managed to pay 100% of those. Now, the, 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 the variance of, of 7%, uh, is because of um, uh, some payments did not clear for the final payment run due to the system closure at eGov and duplication of invoices on SEP system, which did not interface into BAS. And uh, these this challenges, Chair, were escalated to GPG and, and GP, uh, GPT, uh, eGov, and they managed to assist us to resolve them. That's why we managed, Chair, at the end to uh, 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 pay our suppliers within 30 days. And then the next one is procurement that target businesses owned by women, by youth, and also total procurement that uh, target business owned by people with disabilities. The target for youth, it was 20%, we managed to achieve 5.6%. And then for people with disabilities, the target was 5%, we managed to achieve 0.63. So the, 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 the reasons for deviation and also um, a corrective measures chair are the same for, for, for both indicators. And then the reason for deviation chair is, just, is that less uh, youth and also people with disability um, a, 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 a within the department couldn't procure services than we anticipated. The department acknowledged the weaknesses in supporting uh, these target groups, and 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 the intention is for us to ensure that we realize this target by working in cooperation with Department of Social Development uh, (DED) to intensify supply development interventions uh, to equip the, the these target groups uh, so that they can be able to transact with departments where we request uh, quotations for procurement below five hundred thousand. The department also chair. Um, will continue to implement measures put in place that will pursue more targeted approach towards business owned by these target groups. The, the GDAT will also as has also established a task team which is looking at issues of procurement of these target groups. Next, next slide, Samu. And furthermore, Chair, on um, work opportunities. Um, we, which were created through TEPO 1 million. The target was 3,000. We managed to achieve 1,501 of those work opportunities. Uh, the reason, Chair, is because the Minister of Public Works issued a directive to suspend all EPWP projects. That's where our uh, TEPO 1 million uh, 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 job opportunities were supposed to come from. And this meant that we couldn't achieve because some of these operations had to be put on hold. Um, the resumption of this notice chair um, um, uh, uh, to only came very late, and then it was not uh, easy for us to achieve the, the desired 3,000 uh, 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 target, annual target that was set. Next slide. And then in terms of hectares of agricultural land rehabilitated and the, and the jobs that are created through that, we didn't achieve that check. Out of 2,846 jobs were created. And then uh, uh, no, uh, agriculture hectares of agricultural land were rehabilitated. And then out of 100 uh, jobs that were targeted, 66 were achieved. Um, the reason here, Che, is almost the same as the one that we indicated in quarter two, where there was a delay in the approval of the land care conditional grants uh, business plan by the National Department, and this led to us not being able to achieve uh, the set target because this was 
uh, 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 received very late in the year. And then uh, our corrective measure chair, it was to ensure that we engage a national department to ensure that all the business plans are approved uh, uh, earlier and then so that we can be able to implement and achieve these targets. And then on smallholder uh, supported with agricultural advice, uh, the target was 1,500, and then we achieved uh, 1,463. And then also on um, a participants trained in skills development program in the sector, the target was 45. We didn't achieve anything here, Che. And then on smaller producers trained as well, the target was 350. We only achieved 12. Now, this one, Che, especially on the, on the training one. On the training one, we can indicate that um, there was a moratorium, Che, in terms of us being able to uh, train uh, 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 our participants and smallholder uh, producers because this was supposed to be interactive type of training. And then based on that, the department was working on seeing how we can be able to use different online training uh, 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 platforms so that we can be able to achieve this. But the 12 that you see there, Chair, under small producers, we managed to have also um, MOUs with a, a Twani University of Technology and they assisted us in um, being able to, uh, to train at least 12 uh, small uh, older producers. And in terms of a visit to a political unit for veterinary intervention, the target was 6,439 was achieved. Um, the reason here, Chair, is because of um, a few pet vaccination campaigns that were held uh, because of provision of, of public gathering to mitigate uh, against the risk of COVID-19. Um, uh, our creative measure, it was to say in the beginning of the financial year, which is 2021-22, um, as, as the, the, the legislations or regulations uh, uh, COVID levels are, are eased, then we can be able to visit more farms and be able to uh, 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 vaccinate more in this financial year. But it was unfortunate that we cannot be able to uh, 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 offset um, the, the, the variance that we, 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 we experienced in the uh, previous financial year. Next slide, Samu. And then on, on the next slide, Chair, it's research presentations that we made at peer review events. Um, the target was 32, we managed to make 31 with a variance of one. Here is because, Chair, we managed to make our presentations at the 13th Annual Research Symposium, the Visual Agri-Technical Seminar, the 47th Annual Conference of the International Embryo Technological Society, which were held in quarter four. And then this resulted, Chair, in one presentation being presented twice, um, and this affected uh, the total number of presentations that we made at peer review um, events. Now, the department will ensure that uh, in this financial year, we don't duplicate presentations that are made in planned research symposiums that are held in 2021-22. And then for other parts established um, and those that are operational, uh, we are unable to establish uh, the, 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 the planned one agriculture uh, agri park that was in springs on Tombeni and also uh, in terms of agri parks that are operational we have eight uh, we have the target of eight and then but seven are operational and one it's not now the, the reason for us not being able to establish the agri park chain is because of the um, delays in the initial um, a, a project in the project initiation report that has been uh, produced by um, a, a Gauteng Provincial Treasury. And then um, because of these delays and not being approved, we managed to, to um, a, a have a, a MOU with, with the Development Bank of South Africa and which uh, at the end of the day, we are able to go forward and 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 
and, and, and establish the, the country. I don't think we can say, Chair, we are at the planning phase, at the, at the design phase, and we are hopeful that by the end of the term, if not this financial year, we'll be able to establish this particular impact. And the one that is not being achieved, Chair, in terms of uh, operations is the Morafon. The Morafon uh, Agri Park Chair, um, it, it is not operational <laughs> because of the fence that has been vandalized, and this uh, helped all. Uh, 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 it helped in in our power cables being uh, stolen and also the power, the power the water power pump being stolen. So the the, the collective measure is for us to have uh, we are having a joint um, uh, 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 plan with with the national department and both local and district municipalities so, so that we can address the security challenges with the aim of ensuring that we revive production in Next slide, Samu. And then on, on percentage of um, EIAs, applications that were finalized, as I've indicated to say, the target is 100%, and then as, as the, uh, the provincial target. But in terms of the uh, PFMA, um, it's 30 days. It's, it's 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 in terms of PFMA, it's 107, but the provincial one is 30 days. So we managed uh, to achieve 91 percent of of legislative time frame, which is um, um, 107, and then uh, for 30 days we managed to uh, complete EIA applications within 30 days, um, uh, and it, which is 55, uh, 57 percent of those. Now, the reason for, for this is because we did experience um, a, a, a online a, a system challenges, and then the online system challenges chair failed to send emails of notification to departments, officials, to enable them to download the reports that were submitted by the applicants. And some of the applications were downloaded after 30 days, and this resulted in us not being able to achieve the set target. The meta chair was resolved with the service provider, and going forward in quarter one, quarter two, we'll be able to uh, 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 download those reports. And um, in terms of um, percentage of facility of facilities with atmospheric licenses reporting to uh, the National Atmospheric Emission Inventory System. The target was 100%. We managed to achieve 89%. The reason here, Chair, is that um, we do have a nine municipality-owned facilities that are supposed to report on emissions to the department. One facility, which is a Johannesburg Road Agency, did not report to NAIS despite the numerous uh, reminders that were made. Um, the corrective measure is that the, the facility is not being handed over to our compliance unit in the department so that they can en uh, enforce, uh, they can be able to ensure that there is enforcement for the submission of, of these reports. Next slide. And then on... Um, Biodiversity uh, in the conservation estate, the target was 87,412. We managed to achieve 87,012,400 was not achieved. The reason here is because of the delays during the COVID-19 pandemic chain and which prevented many of the due diligence on, bi on biodiversity stewardship. And this uh, needed us to conduct uh, in during the procurement processes. And then this also affected us publishing, in publishing the note in the government gazette. Um, the corrective measure chain is that okay. only biodiversity stewardship <laughs> due diligence yeah. processes were undertaken to enable the National Environment Management Protected Area 
Area Act declaration of the same property as part of the Crocodile River Reserve. However, the RFQ from, from SCM for publishing the Government Gazette was received in March 2021, which was late for us yeah. to receive. And the procurement process will be completed for this 400 hectares in this financial year. And on number of biodiversity economic initiatives implemented, it was one we didn't achieve that. This is because the two bids which were received and assessed did not meet the threshold for evaluation in terms of the functionality. The initiative will be reprioritized and see and, and be uh, 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 implemented in this financial year. On number of permits issued within legislative timeframes under biodiversity, the target was 9,100. We managed to issue a 6,376. The, the, the variance, uh, the reason for the variance is that the regular, the regulatory uh, indicator uh, for uh, sustainable use of biodiversity is a demand driven uh, indicator. Uh, and this uh, led to less application being received as anticipated. Now, Chair, because this is a, 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 a demand-driven indicator which the department doesn't have control over, and it's also a sector indicator. The department is it's, it's continuing in engaging the national department in trying to relegate all um, a, a, a demand-driven uh, indicators to the operational plan, because if uh, we are not receiving what we expected, then it's going to be an unperformance for the department. Next slide, Samu. Next slide is the finances chair, and then I'll leave it to Barry, the active CFO. Thanks, Barry. Um, thank you, Mr. Munyani. Uh, honorable chair, honorable members, um, our stakeholders in this platform, uh, good morning. My name is Barry Fint. I'm the acting CFO in the Department of Agriculture, and I will just present the financial information for the department for the 2020-21 financial year. Chair, just on, on this slide, it's just a projection of our programs. So we've got three programs, administration, agriculture, and rural development and environment. So uh, for the 2021 financial year, our performance was sitting at the 96%. Uh, the previous year, we also achieved a 96%. Just on administration, our final allocation appropriation was 251.3 million. We managed to spend 248.6 million. That's a 2.7 under expenditure and a 98.9% .9 achievement. Agriculture and rural development, a budget of 470.3. We managed to spend 377.5. That's a 59.7 under expenditure and a 19.5 percent achievement for the, for the for the financial year. Environment is sitting uh, alloca uh, allocated budget was 325.9. We managed to spend 325.6 and a 275,000 under expenditure, which brings us to a 99.9 percent .9 spent on program one. Chair, just quickly reflecting on uh, program two, agriculture and rural development, the 59.7 million under expenditure uh, that can be related. Uh, it's applicable to our two sub programs in, in that program. It's RTDS and BETS. So RTD it's underspent by 21.4 and BETS 18.3 million there. And that's basically just on our Contractors, 11.3 inventory, uh, inventory uh, um, in uh, medicines, 5.8, and consumables, mm -hmm. 4.8 million. Then also it relates to machinery and equipment, uh, transport equipment, 5 million under expenditure, and other machinery and equipment, 9 million. Uh, the 9 million uh, other machinery, it's relating to our import of our laptops. There was a delay in, in the supply there. Uh, because of the uh, COVID um, level that lockdowns uh, restricted imports of our computer equipment in, in that regard. Um, then also just quickly, uh, uh, Chair, Honourable Chair, um, with the department did request for a rollover request for 21 million on our equitable share and 1.7 on our CASP uh, ERP conditional grants. Um, the 
Treasury did approve uh, the department's request for 16 million for equitable uh, equitable equitable share and 1.7 on conditional grants. In just going to uh, slide number 15. Oh, sorry, uh, just on the revenue. It's fine, somebody. Just go back. Um, the department on the revenue, um, the uh, projected revenue collection for the financial year was 18.4. The department managed to collect 21.9. So there's a 3.5 million over collection. It's 190% um, over. Uh, so it's a 90% over collection as what the department projected. So basically, just the main um, reasons for the over collection is the 1.9 collecting for Section 24 G fines. That is a revenue that's actually unpredictable because it depends on when the um, um, uh, the not service providers, but the companies will pay their fines. Uh, then also sales of goods and services 1.4 million relating to veterinary service and permit applications with our demand driven uh, initiatives were not affected by the COVID-19 level restrictions, as well as our nature reserves, the opening of self driving tours on the 17th of August and the 1st of October, some of the na nature reserve uh, open for, for overnight accommodations. Um, that increased our revenue collection of COVID-19 restriction levels were lifted. Other uh, main sources of revenue is permits, EIA fees, shows the increase in collections and contributed to our collection of revenue for the 2021 financial year. And then, like I've just indicated, the department then achieved a 90% over collection on, on the revenue, which amounts to 3.5 million. Okay, then that brings me to the end of my presentation. I'm giving over back to Mr. Moniani. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. In terms of human resource capacity, Chair, uh, by the end of the financial year, we had a staff complement of 944, and then uh, 26 of the staff members were people with disabilities, which is 2.75%, and then young people uh, uh, below the age of 35, it was 271, which is 29%, and women in senior management, it was 49%, uh, which is uh, 37, which is 18 of the 37 uh, senior management. In terms of the vacancy rate, by the end of the financial year, Chair, we are at 8.4%, which is below the 10% target. And, um, and the department, Chair, had 72 new appointments in the financial year, 45 terminations, uh, which were due to resignations. Uh, dismissal and death. Um, the work uh, skills plan uh, commitment had been approved to the department and training interventions were implemented. And that is also in the annual report indicating the types of trainings that we have implemented as a department. And then also in terms of the a new internship program check, we, we, we managed to complete the internship a program and, and, and employed and appointed candidates, and we should place the chair in different units within the department. Next slide. This, this is the area chair that I was saying. Initially, in the initial request, we are also requested to give a summary of um, the, the, the audit opinion, the audit findings and also indicate progress in terms of action, the action plans. Um, Chair, we, 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 we want to indicate that in the past three years, we, we did receive, in actual fact, in the past four years, we received unqualified um, audit opinion. And then in 2020-21, we did receive um, an unqualified opinion with no material findings, which is a clean audit. Next slide, some, before that, some. Uh, in terms of the findings, Chair, we had 15 findings, um, and and from 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 August uh, 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 last year to date, we managed to implement seven, which is 47 percent, and then eight of them, which is 53 percent, are still in progress. Next slide, Samu. 
Now this this chair, it's it's these are all uh, in green. These are all the seven uh, findings, uh, AG findings that we have resolved so far, and and the ones that are in progress. Um, we have eight, and then um, I'll go into detail chair. Um, in 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 the next slide, slide 22, going forward to indicate um, what type of recommendations were provided by HE and what is our progress in terms of resolving these ones, the eight that are in progress. Next slide, Sam. And Jay, maybe just to indicate majority of 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 our findings. They are mainly IT findings. Under core, um, we, we received one finding which was resolved during the, the development of, during the AG process. And, and, but majority of what you see here, Che, they're all IT uh, related findings. Um, uh, in terms of progress, Che, of those eight, the actual finding for number one, the, the first finding, uh, it was done compliance with section 38.1c2 uh, of the PFMA prevention of fruitless and wasteful expenditure. The recommendation from AG was that the county officers should implement consequence management for officials who have contravened the law and regulations. Compliance checklists should be designed by management and monitored and reviewed for compliance. Uh, progress to date in terms of the actions that we put in place, the fruitless expenditure matter, uh, which is two cases have been referred to so the premier for forensic um, investigations. Consequence management will be implemented based on the outcomes of, of the investigation. And then the second one, Chair, it was critical IT position, uh, which remains vacant. The recommendation was that at the ICT department management should ensure that critical positions are filled within the next financial year, which is this financial year, to support the entry service requirements according to the ICT structure. Currently, Chair, the deputy director position that we're talking about, ICT support post has been advertised, the shortlisting has been completed, a approval to conduct the interview has been sought, uh, the only thing that we are waiting for, Chair, is, is that the deputy director ICT application post uh, should be part of the uh, uh, new uh, organizational structure that is going to be approved. And then the third one is inadequate skills gap analysis. Uh, the recommendation from AG was that management should ensure that all identified skills gap, gap analysis conducted and training is rolled out based on the needs capacity of the overall ICT personnel. And the second one, it was management should review the training timelines and identify workarounds such as online training attendance where possible to allow delivery of training. Appropriate training should be sourced and provided in order of importance. Now, in terms of the actions and progress to date, Chair, the management uh, will ensure that skills gap analysis is conducted during the personnel management development assisting and training is, is it's rolled out based on the identified needs capacities of the overall ICT personnel. Um, another action and progress management will review the training timelines and identify workarounds such as online training attendance where possible to allow delivery of training. As I've indicated, Chair, we also uh, had um, we also have an um, MOU with TUT which is all assisting us ensuring that we achieve training on participants and also small holders. Appropriate training will be sourced and provided in order of importance and relevance. Next slide. And then number four, ineffective patch and antivirus management process. The recommendation from AG was that management should engage eGov with regards to antivirus patch reports to ensure effective, effectiveness reviews and complete update, updates deploy, uh, deployment on all machines on information technology environment. Furthermore, patches should be tested following the changes in management process. Um, actions and progress to date, management reviewed and submitted the policy pro, uh, through procedures for approval to adequately include the key elements of patch management uh, 
uh, online in line with the GPG guidelines. EGAF is also engaged with regards to the antivirus patch reports to ensure effective reviews and complete update deployment of all machines on, on the information technology environment. Furthermore, patches are tested following uh, the, change, the change management process. Number five, users access not formally authorized on MEREMS. MEREMS chair is the system that we use as um, a MNE to um, for reporting, collecting all uh, reports and also ensuring that we analyze them and report to um, oversight bodies. MEREMS is the monitor and evaluation reporting management system. The recommendations from um, AG, it was that the ICT management should ensure that only approved access to system is granted at all times. All also ensure that the vendor development and include clear historical traffic functionality to indicate address, accurate electronic record for audit purposes. In terms of action and, and progress management, ensured that only approved access to system is granted to all time at all times, and that the vendor develop develop include the, the vendor develop include clear historical trial functionality to indicate accurate uh, electronic record for auditing purposes. The request for quotation for the current financial year covers this function as part of enhancement. Number six. In, uh, uh, the finding was in adequate termination of users. Um, the, 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 the AG's recommendation was that ICT management should ensure that the terminated personnel's information system access is timely activated. And furthermore, such termination requests and instructions to deactivate or disable users' accounts should be adequately recorded where users' accounts are not terminated, that a valid business reason be documented for not implementing the control. And the action and progress to date, management is facilitating receiving communications from HR with regard to the exit of employees. And also a process will be put in place where, where all the users are deleted when assets are returned and signed off is done. Number seven. Number seven, Chair. The, the 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 finding was an adequate review of user access rights and monitoring administrative activities. The recommendation from AG was that management should ensure that user access rights and activity logs are reviewed, monitored on a regular basis, such as supporting documents should be signed off and kept as evidence. And in terms of action and progress to date, um, set which is access rights are reviewed online and. Activity of logs review will be requested from eGov. Management will ensure that um, MEREMS uh, users' access rights and active logs are reviewed, monitored on a regular basis, and supporting documents be signed off and kept as evidence. The last one, Chair, uh, it was lack of adequate backup operations. The AG's recommendation was IT management should ensure that the oversight, the oversight identified is clarified with the service provider as per service level agreement to ensure that data is recovered in an event of disruption. Restoration and even offsite storage should be consist consistently replicated. Um, action and progress to date, MEREM's backup are performed by the service provider and the management will ensure that the SLA covers the following activities, successful stroke failed backup reports, backup restoration, backup store off-site. Um, uh, uh, those are, are the findings check, the recommendations, and also actions and progress to date of the eight uh, remaining findings uh, from AG that are still in progress. On that note, thank you, Chair. Oh, the, the last one, Chair, sorry. Uh, yes, I've done it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you very much, Chair. We we hereby submit the annual re the 2020-21 report for GDAT. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, invaluable uh, presentation. 
I'm now going to give the AG, and then from there, I'll allow engagement from honorable members and subsequently the, our, our stakeholders. Uh, AG. Okay, thank you uh, very much, uh, Chair, and uh, once again, good morning to the uh, 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 committee members, honorable members, as well as the colleagues from the GDART. Uh, if I can get the confirmation from yourself, uh, Chair, that you can see my slide. Hello, Chair, can you hear me? I can hear you, and your slide is. Uh, we can see that. Okay, thank you, Chair. Okay, I'm gonna present the audit outcome for uh, for the uh, uh, Department of Agriculture and the Rural Development for 2021. Uh, Chair, this uh, this slide talks up to our uh, mission as AG that we exist to strengthening. Um, uh, our country demonstrated by enabling uh, oversight and governance in the public sector through auditing, thereby we build public confidence. Uh, Chair, in the next slide, it's the table of contents, which I have, the areas that I will cover is just the key message, overall audit outcome and summary, as well as the audit outcome, uh, risk areas to be addressed to sustain, in audit outcome and key recommendations. Uh, Chair, I'm glad that the officials, uh, colleagues from GDAR did take yourselves into details, which then will save me uh, in terms of uh, just speaking to the uh, highlight uh, uh, of the audit outcome. Uh, Chair, and then our key message is that we are seeing as an uh, as, uh, alluded by my colleague from uh, GDAR, that they obtain the improved audit opinion with unqualified with no findings. And um, in addition, we did not, we also uh, focused on the audit of COVID-19. Uh, there were no material findings um, that uh, uh, for COVID expenditure that we identify. Um, we also um, uh, identified that um, that there's an increase, there was an increase in the underspending compared to uh, the prior year uh, to 39.7 million. Uh, we did not identify any material uh, findings on irregular expenditure for 2021. And uh, we also identified that there was a, a in decrease, decrease in fruitless and wasteful expenditure to 55,000 if one compared to prior year of 6.5 million. Uh, then, Chair, in terms of the overall audit outcome, we've prepared the graphics. And as you, as, as mentioned earlier by my colleague, uh, the top left, you see, Chair, we are uh, um, demonstrating the trend uh, of the audit outcome. Uh, Three-year trend, you will see that um, for the first time, uh, the, the department got the unqualified with no findings in 2021. And uh, in terms of, we also assess the level of assurance that is provided by the different assurance providers. Um, you'll see Chair, that uh, the first level of uh, assurance by providers, which is mainly the department uh, from senior management to the executive, which is the MEC. Uh, all the have provided, uh, of course, except for senior management, where we said they've provided some uh, assurance. And the reason being that when we um, uh, audit the, audited the, the financial, the, 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 the submitted performance information, we picked up the error in the, that in the uh, information which the department uh, accepted and then they 
with an adjustment in the in the annual performance report and which then resulted in them uh, uh, getting an improved outcome and uh, also on the in the areas i think the, in the risk areas of information uh, technology i think uh, the colleague from GDAR did alluded to it on the areas that the department still need to address in terms of information technology we talked to governance as well as on the uh, IT systems. And then, uh, Chair, um, on the next slide, uh, like I've indicated earlier, Chair, in terms of the audit opinion, this is just a summary that we're saying that the audit opinion is unqualified and we commend the department for getting the improved. And then on predetermined uh, objectives, there were no material findings again reported in the audit report and also on the compliance there were material uh, non-compliance we identified we chair under emphasis of matter must mention that emphasis of matter is not a finding we are just bringing to the attention of yourself a uh, chair of what is already disclosed by the management in the uh, in the annual performance report uh, that uh, the first one being that there's material incident attached to various lawsuits against the department and that there's an underspending which uh, is demonstrated in the appropriation statement. And then uh, we, while we, 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 are, we are also, we congratulate the commend the department for getting an improved audit outcome. It is important that the department uh, sustain this uh, audit outcome. And uh, we have, uh, as auditors, have um, identified the risk areas which we believe that the department need to look at. Some of you, the department have already uh, alluded to um, uh, in detail uh, during their presentation. Uh, first, the, we are saying that the on consequence management that all um, investigate relating to priors on irregular expenditure um that are uh, that are referred to the office of uh, that they need to be finalized so that uh, those that are found uh, to have contravened then that they are they are uh, there's a consequence management if needs be or or, or disciplinary uh, action in terms of pfma if it's required and also we're seeing that the control deficiency that led to material adjustment in the annual performance report that they need to be addressed. We're seeing this chair because, um, you know, as audit, audit, we don't look at the whole annual performance report. We do make selection just like when we do the auto financial financial statement. So it is important that the department, they close those uh, uh, gaps to make sure that um, whatever it's reported in the annual performance report is complete and accurate. And also uh, on the IT control weaknesses, which um, my colleague uh, did um, went into detail relating to user access management, uh, security management, ICT, continuity, all those patch uh, management uh, processes uh, that which uh, which could result in unauthorized uh, access as well as security breaches. In the, and the environment that they need to be addressed. And then, Chair, um, finally, uh, for the recommendation for portfolio committee, we say that the portfolio committee should provide effective oversight to ensure that the risk areas and control weaknesses mentioned above, that they are being uh, addressed and also that will include corrective action to be taken by accounting to prevent recurrence of errors in the annual performance report and that the finally they close they should be closely monitor the implementation of portfolio committee release and collaborate with AGSA through regular interaction preferably on a quarterly basis uh, on the implementation of resolution relating to audit outcome. Uh, Chair, that ends my presentation. Uh, I thank you. Uh, thank you very much.
uh, this is one of the, the departments that got unqualified audit with no matters of uh, emphasis. Uh, let me give it uh, to honorable members if there is anything that they would like to raise regarding this department. I'm noting hands. I see the hand uh, of uh, Honorable Nube, the hand uh, of Honorable Sellers, and uh, also Honorable Ghana. Yeah, those are the three hands that I'm noting for now. Uh, Honorable Nube. Thank you, Honorable Chaperson, and thank you for the presenters, including the AG. I just want to clarify myself what I meant at the beginning. When when it was, the, the question was not clear, so I was covered when the department um, presented the report because they did include uh, the the, <coughs> the auditor the, the auditor findings. So that that's why I was confused to say when we say no, is the AG the department want, but it is included. So. That was I, that was, that is what I meant. Uh, thank you very much. Honorable uh, Nube, do you have a question or you are clarifying something? I was clarifying myself that when I raised that the auditor uh, is not accounting to us, I thought the, your question is that the 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 department must not present what they've presented. Oh no. To, yes. Okay, no, thank you. Uh, let it go to Honorable Sellers. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I think that we need to be balanced in our approach. So I want to acknowledge that the department got a, a clean audit and that they were not flagged for material irregularities and that they were subsequently not called to SCOPA um, to explain anything. And that's good. I think we should we should we should be upfront about that. I have um, a few questions. The one relates to the senior management service. You know, it's not a, it's not unique to, to this department, but province-wide, the vacancy levels at senior management services sits at about 43%, which is very high. So I want to know what is the situation in this department? I note that the CFO is acting. Um, I want to know how long you've been acting, sir. And then if you can give me some indication, it's really a pity that the MEC isn't here on what you plan to do to address um, vacancies at the senior management service um, level. Um, and then regarding the supply chain management issues and the fact that you underspend, this is historic. Um, I remember in the fifth term, the previous CFO um, always lamented the fact that there was some new system that was implemented um, that required a lot of additional bureaucracy and that that hampered you. Is, is that still the case or is the problem to do with the, the, the personnel that you have? Is there a skill shortage? Um, because this is not just um, a 2018, 2019 issue. I remember this from the previous term already. Uh, what are your long-term plans to sort that out? And then my last question relates to Isigayo milling plant. You, you forward spent some money there. Um, just give us some details of what exactly went on in, in, in at Isigayo in terms of the forward spend. Just in very plain language. Um, you don't need to give us consult and speak. Um, that's it. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Ghana. Thank, thanks very much, Chair. Uh, Chair, you might you might remember that uh, last night I asked to two questions, uh, two pointed questions to the department, uh, one relating to the uh, the 6.5 million, and I need to uh, make sure that I fully, fully get clarified on this. Um, so in the in the presentation, second, second quarter presentation that uh, was uh, uh, tabled yesterday. It it says that uh, this 6.5 million uh, of wasteful expenditure uh, was uh, was 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 for the 2019-20 uh, 
uh, financial year. Uh, is 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 my understanding uh, correct in that regard? That the 6.5 million that was disclosed, that the, the issue is said to be under investigation is for the, uh, like for the uh, past financial year. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not the one for 2017 or 2018 with the with the Karikis, but it was incurred way after the uh, what you call the the contract was flagged uh, to have been uh, uh, fraught with a lot of problems. So that's the that's the uh, uh, one question. That one needs to uh, uh, clarity on, um, and then the the the, sec the second one, I I also asked yesterday around the rehabilitated land, agricultural land. Uh, so it's uh, I think we uh, we seriously underperformed for the previous year. So if that that uh, identified land, because uh, if you say you are going to rehabilitate, there's an identified land uh, that you want to rehabilitate. Is it the same uh, uh, the same uh, uh, land that uh, for this financial year you you seek to rehabilitate, or it's a it's a it's a different parcel of land uh, or parcels of land that you will you will uh, rehabilitate? And then, if that's so, uh, what happens to the land that was uh, identified in the in the previous financial year that didn't get uh, rehabilitated? Uh, unless if uh, we just set the target, and then if we don't meet, we go back to the same. We don't meet, and it's not necessarily uh, new parcels of land that are identified, but we are still working on the same uh, on the same land. Uh, thank, thanks very much, uh, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I see again the hand of Honorable Nube. Honorable Nube, you're on the floor. Thank you. Um, the question is, are there officials that are doing business with, with government? And if so, what are the measures that have been taken? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think from my side, I'll really echo what uh, Honorable uh, Selirs has just uh, indicated. And I think the advantage uh, between Honorable Selirs and uh, myself is that we are proper and we've interacted with this, also with the Office of the Auditor General. And um, I must really say, one, we have ready to comment to the department for this improved audit opinion. It's one of the flagships in the in the in GPG, and uh, you need really to say, let them really sustain where they are now. That really has to be sustained. But obviously, there are areas of improvement that the department should really work on. This increase in understanding, it's a cause for concern. We, we, we said it yesterday, that when you talk about this department, especially agriculture, we can't afford that to understand while the work is so, is so challenging. You need to really meet the, the, the needs of their opportunity in the, in the, in the province. But they, uh, we've noted there is this increase of understanding which I think the department should really work on it. And secondly, under the emphasis of matter, the issue of the lawsuits against the department, the department must really be wary because if we are going to have these lawsuits, they end up with unauthorized expenditure. And that will really put you back, you will regress. So I think those are the areas that I think we have really to also uh, uh, make sure that you, you 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 deal with them, and then we really welcome uh, the recommendation from the office of the auditor general. Uh, I think, as the committee, we'll make sure that we hold this department on those issues that we have really recommended. 
but I must really, uh, 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 let me just check if we still have uh, 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 stakeholders in this platform. And if they are, let me welcome them to the platform and they should feel very free to really participate. They've been listening. And then whoever has question, wanted to raise anything to the department, you are at liberty to do so. And uh, just raise your hand. I will note you and then you raise the question. And if you are struggling to raise your hand, you can just start talking, then we'll recognize you. I'm noting hands. If we have stakeholders, or if they are, you don't have anything to input, then thank you very much. We are now moving to the next item, which is the economic development. They will present, will follow the route. You will present everything. Then the Auditor General will come later. Then we'll engage with your presentation. Uh, Memo Dissi. Uh, sorry, Honorable Chairperson. I was just asking if we are going to get a, an opportunity to respond to some of the questions that were raised on the GDAD report before going oh, to the Sorry, uh, Memo Dissi. I forgot to take it back so that you respond to the questions. Now is your opportunity to respond okay. to the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair and, and members. Um, I'm going to respond to one or two questions and will then immediately after that ask our ethics champion, Mebola Olowa, to respond to the issue of business with government. And uh, Advocate Molesha, who's the head of support services, will respond to the questions by Honorable Celias on the SMS vac vacancy rate, as well as a uh, duration at which the acting CFO has been acting and the skills shortage issues. And I will request also Chief Director Mutlajo Magaibia to respond uh, to the Isigayo milling spending and our plans around that. Chairperson, on the... Uh, questions by Honorable Ghana. There's 6.5 million we can confirm that was it was spent in the 1920 financial year. And uh, it's, it was not with regard to the procurement of the uh, garigis themselves, but it was relating to the storage of those garigis where there were some delays in terms of um, the department taking ownership and there was a a legal process that was underway and therefore um, resulted in a settlement agreement where the service provider was paid the 6.5 million. And uh, as we had said uh, yesterday, this matter is also under the investigation of the SIU and they, they are currently uh, busy with looking into that and, and the entire uh, contract. So we are confirming that it was it was in fact in, in 2019, but it was, yes, during the 2019-20 financial year. On the issue of agricultural land under rehabilitation, so what, what would then happen, uh, Honorable Ghana, is that uh, if we wouldn't have covered all the hectares that we would have planned in one particular financial year, before we even commence with new parcels of land, we would then uh, have to deal with that backlog of the land that was identified for rehabilitation. And as and when we do the land care work as well as the conservation work, such parcels get identified, most of it even in, in, in tribal land, and, and a lot of the work is around the clearing of invasive um, plants and so forth so that we render the land agriculturally vi viable. So we wouldn't leave uh, whatever was not done in the previous uh, financial year that would also be, be covered as a matter of priority. Uh, Chairperson, we do note uh, the concern on, on underspending and uh, as indicated by CFO yesterday, um, we are really in the process of um, speeding up the, the three-year uh, tenders for a number of uh, large projects that we are currently running. So uh, from the next financial year, we shouldn't anticipate much of a challenge, even with 
the issue of procuring from other organs of state because our tenders will then be uh, be in place. And on the lawsuits, we also uh, it's also a challenge. A lot of our lawsuits have to do with development, um, and it's mainly around um, EIAs and authorizations where uh, companies would take us uh, to, to task. Um, and, and yes, legal processes do take a life of their own and, and they do take time, but we do try our best to even circumvent before we get to a point of lawsuits through the MEC's appeals panel, who, who handles a number of, of those issues. But we do take um, that comment and cautionary note that we should do more to really accelerate the pace in dealing with our legal, uh, our lawsuits. May I request you, May Bola, to quickly respond to the question by Honorable Mube on um, officials doing business with government and the process we've undertaken. Thank you, DDG. Um, good morning, Chair and Honorable Members. Um, there are no officials doing business with government. Um, often what happens every quarter is that the internal audits, they do carry out an audit on the CSD system and when they identify it, we then deal with it um, immediately. So as at the end of the reporting year, there were no officials doing business with government. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, Advocate Mulesha, please cover the issue of SMS uh, vacancy levels raised by Honourable Celia. Good morning, honourable members. Um, thank you very much, DDG. Um, in so far as the, the 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 reporting period that we are referring to, we had um, three vacant posts uh, which were vacated. However, the two of them have since been filled, which is the chief director support services as the well as the, as well as director legal services. And then the post of the CFO, we had issued an offer letter to the best candidate that the candidate has declined. So we are just um, uh, processing for the second best candidate so that we can also close that, that, that because of it. But it was mainly those three posts that were vacated and 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 both of them were vacated towards the end of the financial year. I think the the chief director support services was vacated in November, and then the the legal services post was vacated in March, um, and then the the CFO it was much earlier. We had struggled initially. We the post was advertised, and what then happened? The person declined on the last um, after uh, concluding the recruitment process. And then we had to go for a headhunting process, which is the whole process now I'm referring to, that we are concluded. Thank you very much, Didi. And thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, Mr. Magai, uh, Isigayo, just a, a brief explanation of where we are and the spending around that. And CFO can add um, if needs be. Mr. Magai, Thank you, Okay, it looks like he's not in the meeting or not hearing me. Uh, acting CFO, are you able to speak to our expenditure on ECI or milling? Mr. Magabia, just. Uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm here, Chair. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mr. Magabia, go ahead. My, my apologies. I was, I was muted and uh, morning. Um, yeah, so far uh, from, uh, from establishment. Sorry. From establishment of ECI. We uh, can you mute here? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, uh, the cost is around 25 million uh, since uh, establishment from from uh, foundation up to where we are today. Um, and uh, the, the the department has been engaging with the cooperative in order to try and unlock the operational challenges. What has been the major challenge has been the issue of cash flow of of the cooperative, and we have since resolved that uh, to assist the cooperative to make an application for operational funding of 2.5 million from CHAP. As we speak, um, they submitted the application on Monday, and uh, we had a joint meeting between uh, JEP and 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 the co-op and and ourselves. And and we have kind of um, come to to the conclusion that that will certainly address um, 
the the challenges of of uh, of none of them not operating because of cash flow uh, challenge where they uh, have to come to the department relatively for uh, minor uh, minor things that they could actually just resolve by themselves so that is basically the the solution that we we have come to and uh, they've they've all uh, uh, submitted all the documents and all the supporting uh, information that JEP requires uh, to resolve the, uh, the the issue of of operation of operations, so that's basically the uh, where we are. We believe that uh, with the amount of offtake offers offtake uh, agreement uh, that they they are getting, uh, they should be able to uh, proceed smoothly uh, after this intervention. Thank you, Chair. Okay, th thank you, thank you very much, Chair Peasant. Uh, thank you very much. Unless there is any follow up from members. Otherwise, we'll be moving to the next. But I think uh, one thing that is uh, important to our goal to follow up these issues, especially your 6.5 million, which is under investigation. You see, the Makariki thing has cost uproar in this province and is sitting in our, in, in, in our department. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we follow it up up until we understand that, that logical conclusion and as well as others that has really been raised. Uh, Mumudise, let me thank you with your team and thanks for the presentation. I'm now moving to the vote three, our economic development. Uh, I'm not sure who's going to take us through, but uh, the platform is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> no, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson of the committee. And good morning to the chair and good morning to to the honorable members of the portfolio committee. Um, I'm not certain, Chair, whether should I start by responding to the promise of yesterday or should it be something that the chair will tell us when to, to give feedback about Two things that the chair said we should we should come back with was each of the chief uh, uh, chief executive officer of the gambling board. Uh, the what how far is the case, or the chair wants us to speak now or later. And and uh, the other matter that I thought we would also raise with the chair was the the commitment we made that we would fill in all the issues that were raised by the committee. Uh, I did brief the HOD, who's also not in this meeting because of the, the commitment of the exco that what what was the expectation from the committee which relates to the question the chair asked whether they send the questions and how far are those questions so i also wanted to give feedback to that but the person who's going to present for us chair on behalf of the department is senator mirasi who's going to give the feedback about the the annual report so so chair i am I'm, I'm under your guidance Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Nawa. I think uh, let's stick to the presentation. The issue of the questions that I raised, they were sent formally to the department, and the department will formally respond to the committee. So for now, let's just stick to the to the presentation. At the end, when we we, we will be asking questions. Somewhere you may come in and then also put in some of the issues. But with the, regard to the questions, that would really have to come formally as we've also requested the department to do so. Thank you very much, uh, Dadenawa. We can proceed with the presentation. Thank you very much. It's not me. I invite you to present for the committee. <laughs> Um, thank you, DDG. Um, greetings to the chairperson of the committee, members of the committee, and the senior management of both departments. Um, I'm going to be presenting the um, annual report, um, uh, and I will do that with um, guidance from my colleagues, the CFO, who's going to assist us with um, the financials, together with uh, Madia Khane, our CRO, to assist us with the um, audit outcome. Uh,
Um, thanks. So the um, in the context of service delivery, uh, it had been a very challenging year, uh, noting the uh, pandemic and the um, uh, and and the uh, country uh, lockdown. While there's been a gradual growth in the GDP, it still was not enough to create economic growth and to secure jobs over a long term. So the province had a, has a total of 1.3 people unemployed youth with the corresponding unemployment rate of 47.6. And this was very concerning for delivery in the year under review. Specifically from a, uh, the department conducted a survey uh, which saw 40% of jobs that existed in businesses prior to the um, pandemic being lost and only 41% being retained post the pandemic. Um, so while we did attempt to align to the trajectory of the province, the department saw a gradual decrease in performance across its agencies. The overview of the DED annual um, performance under administration, we were able to uh, meet the one indicator that was listed Economic services is the um, program that responds to work that's being done at the agencies. Under sector, we had four indicators and three of them were not achieved. Um, governance and regulation, the five indicators, three were not achieved. And um, our inclusive economy of the three indicators, one was not achieved. So to just look at the areas of performance, the um, administration indicator on financial management, we achieved 100% of suppliers being paid within the 30 days. Under trade and sector, we had 15 um, um, plans that were developed against the initial target of uh, 10. So it was then post the economic review where the um, uh, premier had pronounced that uh, we need to to increase or, or 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 select certain sectors that we should be working on, and hence we were then able to create 15. Under consumer affairs, 168 business compliance inspections being conducted as planned, and this was done together with the com um, competition um, commission that inundated the province with requests to partner up with them um, during the time of the crisis. Under liquor, we did the three compliance blitz as, as planned, and under inclusive economy, uh, we, we got the township um, approved. And under, if we look at the areas of non-performance, the indicator on industrial park site supported, we were unable to meet um, the, um, that indicator. And further to that, uh, the department has then concluded that we move it through to um, the GGDA, who assists with infrastructure programs as part of the mandate. And the, um, the, the, the agency is currently working on that. So while it is not in our APP, we have followed up to ensure that it happens. Under level of development of sector specific implementation tool, the tool was not developed. However, there was work um, that was done in that area. SWOT analysis was done and we were able to finalize the um, sector specific plan itself. Um, although the department was unable to, to, to begin working on the actual tool. Under business regulation and governance, the three indicators um, that were not achieved, number of liquor awareness programs conducted, um, I'll, I'll put that together with the tourism awareness um, workshops, and this was purely um, to the lockdown itself um, and um, the inability for us to have physical interactions with our stakeholders. And percentage of um, uh, uh, um, targets being achieved by agencies, uh, we fell short of just one. The last one on economic planning, the GPG local production and content framework, um, it wasn't approved by um, EXCO. Um, the request was that we go back and um, have um, stakeholder engagements. Um, the indicator itself, again, is still on our APP, so we are still tracking it. Um, human capacity at the end of quarter four, the department um, had a total of 450 staff members, with 4% of them being people living with disability, 23% young people below the age of 35, 63% women employed by the department, and 48% um, of those women being in senior management position. At the close of Q4, um, our vacancy rate was sitting at 19.76. The department had 10 new appointments, eight employees at the time were acting, um, suspended, alleged to there were suspensions 
alleging to fraud, fraudulent activities. 17 terminations were done due to resignations, retirement and expired contract. And the department had managed to um, complete the development of its um, gender equi equity uh, strategic framework. Um, I will then um, request with your permission, Chair, uh, for the CFO to then come in with the financials. Thanks. Thank you very much, Sinat. Um, good morning, Chairperson um, of the Portfolio Committee. Good morning, members of the Portfolio Committee. Good morning, um, senior managers on this platform. Chairperson, in regards to the um, expenditure of financial outcomes relating to the 2021 financial year, the department that the um, achieved a 97% budget spent, which was then for informed by the, in particular on program two and program three chair, which we then spend about 100% of our budget under program, one, which mainly um, housed the centralized function. We spend 86% of the budget, the business regulation, we spent 95 and the economic plan, planning, we spent um, a budget of 99%. Um, Sinat, Pardon. Sorry. Thank you very much. In the next slide, Chair, it, it's an economic classification. What we are outlining is compensation of employees. We spent 97%. On our goods and services, Chair, we spent 90%. 90%. Our transfers to the agencies, we spent 100%. And our capital budget that we intended, we spent 86%. There were some capital projects that we had not concluded at the time. And then the payments for financial assets chair was just on 100%. Those are related to any other payments that we we'll do for staff leave and all that particular process chairperson in that regard. So our underspend at the end of the financial year chair was uh, 57 million, which we did make an application for rollover. You will see it in the, in the responses chair. Provincial Treasury only managed to approve about 20 million rand um, of the 57. So the 37 million rand we will be surrendering back into the provincial um, fiscal chairperson. In terms of the last slide, um, Chair, which is on revenue collection, which I alluded to yesterday that our biggest um, contributor of the in, into the fiscal, the GPG um, fiscal is GGB chairperson. They had collected um, um, about 103%, which is, was exceeded by 3% chairperson. And the same analysis, you remember um, last night when they reported, Chair, they alluded that they are projecting to over collect again, Chair. During the 2021 financial year, which was um, the start of the pandemic, Chairperson, um, they did revise their budget. Um, I think we had about 1.1 billion. It was therefore then revised to 721, but come the end of the financial year, Chairperson, they collected 738 million rand. That is why there is that sense that um, if last year's um, outcome is this, um, this year's could be even better on the basis that um, the regulation is even much um, lesser as compared to what we have in the 2021 financial year, Chairperson. I think the highlight, Chair, one could ask the question around the horse racing taxes, Chair. The horse racing taxes, the budget was revised to a, a 42 million rand. And the, res, the reason, Chairperson, is that during last year's pandemic, there was no um, um, gathering. So therefore, we would not have expected any horse racing um, um, to be taking place at your various horse racing um, fields. So therefore, the budget was therefore then revised. However, what then popped up and came up, Chairperson, that would have increased is that in the horse racing, there was yeah. around the bookmarkers um, in terms of your tapping. Anyway, ben, can you mute? Oh, sorry, Chair. Mm, and also KG. I'm presenting, Chair. Um, KG. Oh, you are presenting, I see. Uh, okay, continue, uh, KG. I apologize, Chair. I couldn't come in with my official designation. Um, Komoto is the full name, Chairperson. Komoto Mojapi. Okay, no, thank you very much. Thanks, Chair. The bookmarkers, Chairperson, which is the, the contributor of the under the horse racing chair in terms of the sports betting, the online betting, it therefore demonstrates that um, um, so that, um, in Gauteng, we are a community that would want to increase. Our, our resources by um, undertaking into the betting areas, Chair. That is why we therefore then seen an increase 
um, over collection of about 212 million rand share under the under the horse racing, which is increased as a result of the horse of betting. The other share is just the normal um, revenue that we collected. The DED is not a revenue collection, with the exception of the collection by GGP. Those ones relate to the sales of goods. It's when we undertake issues around the parking chair, which it is just a mere uh, collection in terms of what we we, we have. Um, the interest is the projected interest um, that we project um, should we have a favorable balance. Um, unfortunately, that is managed between ourselves and the provincial treasury. Financial transactions chair relates to issues that we, we receive your uh, percentage of Kanish orders um, that we have with the third party organizations chair. Um, that ends the presentation chair on the on the on the budget um, outcome of the previous financial year. Thanks very much, Senator. Thanks, um, CFO. Um, Uma Diakhanu, please. Thanks, thanks, Senate. Good morning, uh, Chair. Good morning, members of the Portfolio Committee and colleagues. I will be taking um, the members through the audit um, outcomes and in terms of their progress um, when it comes to the recommendations that made by the Auditor General. We can move. Thank you. So, on overall audit outcome for the department, uh, we had uh, had a, a clean audit, um, and to date, chair, um, we have managed to close about ten findings that AG has issued. Um, we are remaining with the three findings that our management is currently working on. I will take through the members, the, the remaining three. Um, Chair, the main one that was remaining was the, the, the finding that was raised by Auditor General relating to uh, disclosure on MAL. Um, the auditors in the previous years identified that the relationship or the triple P of MAL um, and the department ceased to exist. And as a result, we needed to have certain disclosures in our financial statement. Um, however, that part has not yet been fully implemented. What the department has done, they had uh, done a due diligence on MAL to identify exactly how do we go about uh, disclosing the relevant figures in the financial statement so that we don't disclose incorrect figures. So the process was done in terms of the due diligence. Um, it was then recommended that um, mal be converted into a non-profit company. So those are the deliberations that um, uh, the mal as well or Kregel uh, colleagues as well as the departments is having to make sure that the, the amount or the relevant disclosure that the department needs to disclose is accurate. So that is the, the, the main one that is it's still outstanding when it comes to AG findings. And then with regards to to the second one, when it comes to the program change management, um, where the auditors noted inadequacy on the system that we use, we use MEMS for uh, performance information. So what they have noted was that the changes that we normally uh, one would make on the system, they were not tracked. So the auditors then re um, requested that we look into the system so that we are able to track, you know, uh, the logs, um, what has happened, what has been changed. So what the, the IT audit um, IT team have done, they've went and they have updated that. So currently what we are waiting, the internal auditors are in the building. They are then assessing what we have done, if it's adequate to close the matter. And then the, the, the other one, Chair, the, is the organizational structure. Um, the organiz uh, our organizational structure was last updated uh, or reviewed in 2012, and we are in a process of um, uh, reviewing, finalizing, and there are a couple of steps, Chair, that as the department we needed to do um, to make sure that this process is it's, it's, it's finalized. And the, the progress that I got from um, the team was that the engagement were held with the Office of the Premier 
um, so that we are able to fast track this process. But there are a number of things that we still need to do, the service delivery model that we need to do as the department. And looking at the progress that they provided is that um, we will be in a position to finalize the process by uh, May 2022. So those are the, 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 the three uh, chair that are still outstanding. Um, I will just take through the, just on a high level, the, the areas that we have closed where inter auditors have noted the internal control deficiencies. It was on the issue of inconsistencies that was noted between the performance uh, information as well as the report as well as the APP. So what uh, uh, the, the, the matter was corrected during the audit process, but then in terms of the measures that we have put in place, I think from the unit as well, the way capacity constraints. So we have capacitated the unit in terms of the reviews that will be um, properly be reviewed going forward. AG as well identified the classification or misclassification where we have uh, classified the transfers as uh, goods and services um, instead of transfers um, um, uh, in, a, in a transfers uh, a disclosure. What we have done, uh, it was corrected. Um, the CFO's office indicated that we, they will continuously look at uh, the classification of the expenses so that they avoid um, the misclassification go going forward. AG also noted that in our annual performance report, we missed the disclosure on most people in the accounting officer. They just recommended that on the accounting officer's report, let's just make mention of the 20 SEZ as much as we are transferring some funds. So that has been done as well, Chair, and what, you know, continuously reviewing the, our, the, our reports to make sure that it does contain the, the relevant uh, information and it does contain the relationships that we have. Um, we can move. And then in terms of the employee doing business with the state, auditors noted um, there was an employee that did business with the state. Um, we, uh, we then engaged the, the particular employee uh, to identify the HOD did send a letter first to the relevant employee to understand why uh, the transgression. Um, and then it was then noted that the employee was not aware of the, the, the regulation. These are, um, it, it, she was absorbed from the, um, the, the cleaning company. That's when we're doing the insourcing, then they, they then came in. And then she indicated that she was not aware of the regulations. And then we actually went and draw the report and identified how many people that are in the company. And we've noted that there were about five um, people in that particular company, and she was one of them. And then she was advised to, to resign since as much as she cannot close the company. She was then re uh, advised to um, re uh, resign from the company and should this matter um, not be resolved within, I think we gave the deadline uh, and beginning of the financial year and um, what she has done, she went, she resigned and we went and we confirmed uh, with the CIPC and the matter was closed um, from that. But then what we do in the department, continuous awareness sessions are uh, carrying on so that we, we identify employees that are new so that we are able to um, indicate what is and needs to be done and what not um, has to be done from the code of conduct point of view. And then in terms of the policies, um, Auditor General noted that there are policies that were not reviewed um, to date or the police. So it has to do with uh, irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Uh, on bereavement, those policies have been reviewed and finalized and approved by the HOD. Um, and then in terms of the, the misstatement of employees, so Auditor General noted that there was an employee who was uh, dismissed, however, they still uh, received salary. Um, uh, upon inquiry with labor relation, we then noted that you know, a, an appeal was lodged, uh, hence that employee was um, still being paid for it, but the matter has since been uh, closed and finalized in, in, in September 2021. Can move. And then from IT, some machines were not, uh, did not have the security measures. Uh, the, de um, the department 
uh, the IT uh, as well as eGov, they engaged and then this matter has been resolved, making sure that all of the relevant security measures are installed in the in the in the laptops and you know doing a, 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 a patch uh, a remotely as well that assisted with the anti virus as well um and then in terms of inadequate skills that were identified at um IT, um, what they, uh, the team have indicated that they are training their ICT officials just to make sure that um, they are aware with the latest trends and they are aware with the relevant uh, information that they need to comply with. And then in terms of the password, they've noted that our policy did not really had it had a password but some elements were missing in terms of our policy they just requested us to update the policy of which that's what we have done chair um thank you uh that's that will be the end from my side thanks chair oh from from how the board um the how the board um received um uh, unqualified with no findings um, I think it's the first time in the longest time if they had ever received uh, a, a, such a audit outcome chair. And then in terms of the, 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 the findings, AG raised four findings, two are still um, outstanding. The main one, it was on the presentation and the uh, disclosure of the financial statement of which it was corrected during the, the audit, but the team, you know, uh, indicated that they will go through the, the financial statements just to make sure that it is in line with the GRAB standard and they are not missing any critical element. And then in terms of uh, prices uh, of procurement, um, specialized when, when we're procuring the, uh, uh, the PPE, they've noted that um, there was a price difference from what um, the, the, the service provider and what the, the national treasury um, have um, indicated in terms of the pricing. And what the team has indicated is that that was prior to getting the, um, the national treasury, but then going forward, we are utilizing that. And then in terms of the revenue cuts uh, document. Um, they've noted that there were duplicates renewal um, when when they were doing the test, and the team indicated from GLP indicated that yes, there are duplicates in terms of the the license numbers, and it continuously as and when they identify the the duplicates, they refer those to the board so that a uh, new license numbers can be issued. And then we have suppliers in service of the state that did business with GLB. So what we have done, uh, the letters were sent to those businesses um, to afford them an opportunity to respond why they did uh, business with us. And that, that is to date, that's what we are waiting for um, response from those service. But there were just two service providers in this case, Chair. Um, I think that will be the end of my presentation. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think we'll move in that order. We'll now get to the AG, then we engage afterwards. From the AG office. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, good afternoon again, members and colleagues. Um, I, I will just be presenting the slides from my side. Thank you. Uh, please, Chair, advise when you can see my slides. We can see. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, um, presented in front of you, colleagues and Chair, is the audit outcomes for the 2021 PF May audit cycle for the Houting Department of Economic Development. Um, my colleague, uh, Mr. Mazena, did take us through the, the AGSA mission, so I'm not going to go through that again. Um, and then the next slide uh, presents the, the table of contents, which includes the key message, audit outcomes, as well as recommendations. Uh, in terms of the key message uh, for the department, we're saying the, 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 the audit outcome for the department has remained the same from the previous year, unqualified um, opinion with no material findings on compliance and reported performance information. And we, we really commend the department for, for sustaining the audit outcome. 
Um, and then commitments by management and the accounting officer in the strengthening oversight and monitoring over financial and, and performance reporting were implemented, which then resulted in the department maintaining its, its audit outcome. Um, supply chain management has improved as no material non-compliance identified in the 2021 financial year. Um, in terms of the, the department maintaining its, its audit outcome, uh, they will need to improve on the oversight and monitoring over compliance with laws and regulations, as there were some instances, as my colleague has indicated, in, 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 the, in the area of financial statements um, where we had identified uh, some classification issues. And irregular expenditure incurred in the current year was due to, to non-compliance with national treasury regulations that was identified and reported in the prior financial year. Commitments by management and the accounting officer in strengthening oversight and monitoring uh, over financial and performance reporting were implemented. I think that's, that's just repeating what I already alluded to. And Chair, now we're going to look at the, at the picture in terms of the overall message as well as the outcomes. Uh, starting from the top left corner, um, where we 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 presenting the the, the, the comparison uh, from the 2018-19 uh, for the past three years, uh, the department has actually improved in in the 2020 in the 2019-20 financial year uh, to an unqualified with no findings, of which then they they maintained uh, that audit outcome in the 2021 financial year. Uh, if we look then on the right top corner, um, where we, we, we speak to the assurance levels, um, if you look at the first level, um, the senior management is, is the only one that is, 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 is providing some assurance. Uh, the accounting officer and the executive authority do provide assurance. And, and the reason for, for the senior management uh, being uh, highlighted in, in yellow is because of of, of the issues that we, we I had alluded to earlier on, on the reported uh, financial statement areas of classification and the reported perform performance information as these areas resulted in material misstatements and findings. And if we look at the bottom, at the bottom right, uh, Chair, under leadership, uh, I think the areas of concern there are the policies and procedures. Um, of which during the, the audit, we, we had identified that some of the policies and procedures were not reviewed um, updated and approved timely and effectively implemented during the year. And if we look under financial and performance management, um, we there we've got regular reporting, compliance, and IT systems, which has, are of concern, um, of which those areas, especially specifically with regular reporting, relate to to the submitted financial statements as as well as the quality of 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 the submitted performance information. Uh, which then resulted in 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 the areas of compliance being impacted in terms of the the quality of of the financial statements submitted. Um, I think on the IT systems, the the colleague from the department did touch on on the issues that we had identified specifically on the on the EMRS MS system, as well as the dashboard on SCEP and SCCM. Um, if I then move chair to the risks, I think we we, we did notify um, note that uh, there were some quality issues on the financial statements, even though they they did not have an impact in terms of 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 the compliance findings in 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 the audit report. There was just a slight re regression on on the quality of the financial statements, and there were issues as well that were identified um, on 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 the quality of the submitted performance information of which my colleague uh, from the department did also allude to um i think another area that we we also had some issues on was on on information technology uh, which the department has indicated that they've they've done some some work on it to, to improve uh, if i move on chair i think i have also indicated that we we did identify some some areas in the area of classification in the financial statements but I must mention that those areas um, were not um, significant enough for, for, for them to, to result in, in a compliance finding. Uh, in terms of management recommendations for management to ensure that they, they sustain the audit outcome, we, we recommend that the, the, the accounting officer is, 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 we should continue to check all the commitments made um, to maintain the audit outcomes. Um, to continue to over to oversee um, uh, monitoring uh, to ensure compliance with with the laws and regulation, 
and our accounting officer is also encouraged uh, to continue providing sound leadership and adequate oversight responsibility over financial reporting and performance information um, reporting to ensure that the daily disciplines that sustain positive audit outcome are in place and effectively implemented. And in terms of the, the recommendations to the portfolio committee, um, it is just uh, to, to ensure that the, the PC uh, provide effective oversight to ensure that the risk areas and control weaknesses mentioned um, are addressed, including corrective actions uh, that are taken by the accounting officer to prevent reoccurrence of errors in the annual performance report and the annual financial statement submitted for audit and to closely monitor the implementation of the, the, the committee's resolution and collaborate with the AGSA through regular interactions, uh, preferably um, quarterly, just to, 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 to monitor the implementation of the resolution relating to the audit outcomes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's another a department that performed very well in terms of the audit outcomes, but there are issues that we have ready to engage and uh, make sure that together we really achieve our goals. Uh, let me allow members to really raise uh, whatever with this department. I'm noting uh, Honorable Nube is the new one. Also, Honorable Adams, uh, the three hands with uh, Honorable Ghana. Let me start uh, with Honorable Nube. Honorable Chairperson, can they please present um, the responses to our questions first? No, no, I think I've ruled on that one. Uh, unless you, you, are, you are raising something else. We have sent the questions to the department and the department must respond in writing. I, I think that's what I've, I've, I've really responded. So if they are in writing, we, we don't have them because they should have really been sent. Our, 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 our support staff have said, these are the questions. We can allow them to present verbally. I, I think that, 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 that directive, we need really to follow the processes and uh, we have really to stick to them as they are. I think I'll rule uh, on that one, uh, Honorable Nube. I thought maybe in the evening they did send. Uh, no, no, we don't have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Honorable uh, Adams. Thank you, Chair. Noted on the questions issue. Uh, just one question. Good morning to everybody on the platform. I just wanted to know the employee that was that resigned and and subsequently had a company company and was getting business from the department. Um, was there money paid out to to that uh, employee? And if there was, was the money recouped? Because it was a she she was. Uh, working for the department and still had a business. So if there's money that was paid, um, was it recouped? Thank you, Chair. How long it was? How long it was, sorry. Okay, no, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Adams. I'm giving to Honorable Ghana. Thank, thanks, Chair. Um, a, a point that I, I I, I forgot to mention when we're dealing with the agriculture uh, annual report. You know, I think I think uh, yourself, uh, chair, uh, uh, being being the de the deputy chair of chairs, uh, you need to deal with this particular one of uh, you know uh, find a way to raise uh, uh, the absence of the HODs and the MEC. I mean, this is this is uh, this is a, this is a very important meeting, and and uh, for whatever reason, someone felt it uh, uh, right that the, the the HODs and the MECs shouldn't be part of these meetings, but they should attend another meeting. I think it's something that should be raised with the 
uh, with the with the with the speaker and so forth. Uh, I, I'm not happy at all uh, that the HOD and the and the MEC are not part of this meeting because they are supposed to be the one tabling this this these reports. Uh, but then going into the into the report. So yesterday I asked the question and it was not responded to uh, regarding the the tasses. Uh, there's money that we have given tasses. It's then the annual report. The millions and millions of friends that we have transferred to tasses. Uh, but so yesterday there was nothing said about it. And today nothing is said about tasses. And one needs to understand what is their reporting because we are giving them money. We are giving uh, tasses money. Uh, uh, now, where does it report? How do we hold uh, tasses accountable for the money that we are, we are we are handing over? Unless if if uh, those transfers that we are making to the Twin Automotive SEZ, uh, it's a gift. Uh, how are we monitoring that particular uh, performance? Uh, maybe there's another avenue. Maybe if the MEC was here, was going to tell us how that particular aspect is being dealt with. You know, uh, because it can't be that we we take money and it was not even in the budget, the money that was taken uh, to support taxes. And uh, uh, it's taken from other programs to go and support the uh, taxes, but then nothing is, is being said. Even even on, on the report itself, very little is just said, except that money is given uh, to the Chane uh, 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 SEZ. Uh, I think I think I think that one chair uh, need need uh, a, a proper a proper uh, uh, what you call a proper report a status update proper proper report including the monies that are being spent as one of the uh, action items or as a one of the recommendations uh, flowing from our interaction with the department. It's me. I'm concerned, chair. That it seems the, there's a channel uh, from the department to the channel SEZ that makes the money goes there, but the 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 other channel that's supposed to report back and for us to provide oversight, uh, it's not it's not catered for. Uh, the second issue I want to raise, chair, I think, given the nature or the state of the province, I think it's unforgiving we, and we must not, we must not uh, forgive. I mean, it's, a, uh, it's, it's well and good that uh, the department has, has achieved a clean audit. We commend them for that. But achieving a clean audit was uh, our industrial parks, which uh, in a way, are also a source of em employment creation. Uh, very little is happening in that space. Then we are, we are, we are achieving a hollow uh, clean audit, if I can put it that way. Because the industrial parts are key in us uh, achieving uh, our stated goals. Uh, so that's the second point. Uh, the, the third point, uh, it was raised yesterday. And uh, the response was not, uh, was, not, uh, was not convincing. Maybe it's because the HOD is not here. Maybe it's because the MEC is not here. Uh, regarding the, the, the promised turnaround uh, strategy of JET, uh, it's like it, it just it's there. Every annual report, uh, you you pick it up. It's there. Uh, when we joined this in in July 2019, uh, the then MEC, I mean we're on our third MEC, 
the then MEC Spudler uh, raised, raised that, no, we are going to turn Jeff around. We are going to turn Jeff around. And even now, you know, uh, that, that, that song is still playing. And then every year you get this thing that, no, the service provider did not uh, uh, come with the right concepts and all those things. Uh, I, I think uh, at, at a certain point, uh, we, we need to fully, fully uh, have that session where we understand what is this new thing that people want to do with JEP. Because uh, if you hear, you hear things that, no, now we're going to channel money, now there's extra money. But then the performance, uh, and we'll go there now, the performance is just uh, not uh, not right. And, and, and then maybe uh, to the AG, I know we are not in the entities yet, but I know in the presentation of the department that uh, uh, JEP and GGDA, their audits are not concluded yet. Uh, is that an old information? Is that uh, is that as far as you are concerned, you have been concluded the the audits of uh, of JEP and GGTA? And if so, what are the holdups? Uh, the reason I ask this, you might you 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 are probably aware that we stayed for a long time without the uh, the audit of uh, of JEP in the last financial year. So just confirm whether that's a, uh, either uh, something that uh, is put in the report. Uh, just confirm that for me. I think those those three issues, uh, Chair. Uh, yeah, I'll 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 I'll, I'll leave it that. Uh, the rest uh, I'll ask maybe when the uh, the department uh, answers. Uh, because I can't ask this question to to uh, to the GG, to GGB. Uh, the department can then answer in terms of the uh, what's what's happening with the case of the suspended uh, CEO. Uh, because you see, sometimes when you see the the performance in terms of revenue, which, which comes from taxes, uh, starting to to go down. You start asking whether is it is it only COVID, or there is something that uh, is happening in the entity itself beyond COVID that might be leading to the collection of taxes and and and, and, and the likes and and casino taxes and horse racing uh, being uh, uh, being affected uh, because I, I think COVID COVID it's a it's a blanket. It's a. It's a. It's a, It has. It has become a shield that everyone who, who doesn't perform uh, goes and hide behind. Uh, but there are other things that happen uh, inside the 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 entities, and the the department must please uh, the promise to respond on my question. Um, and 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 that having had a situation where the representatives of uh, uh, of the department to this committee last night, not having some responses, highlights the point I'm making around the absence of the HOD and and the and the MEC uh, uh, in this meeting, uh, because we don't want the situation where the 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 responses that we get uh, are not full uh, as a result of uh, the, the 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 officials who are here not having the full information like it happened uh, with some of the questions that we asked uh, last uh, last night chair thanks very much uh, thank you very much uh, honorable movie thank you chair maybe let me start with the questions that have not been responded to um i mean we're not hearing an apology or what should happen uh, about that 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 is that is uh, i mean those that were here yesterday were supposed to have touched whoever um, and then raised this issue but they're quiet to us quiet 
um, it can't be left like that. There's no commitment, there's no apology, there's no what. Uh, the second one is the question of the surrendering. Uh, 37, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, millions to the treasury from the department. Uh, this is an economic development department where everybody, when you say, hey, I'm saving in economic development, oh, see, they have that hope of, 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 of this department working and, 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 and helping them. So I'm just linking this with the, with the hubs or the CASI labs, the youth that is not taken care of because of the status of, 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 of the hubs and or the CASI labs. Um, what is, is, may happen is that uh, the treasury will minus this money because what it means to the treasurer is that we did you didn't want it it was more maybe she gave you more so the implications of that say so you can't be rendering uh, uh, but in surrendering this kind of money i wonder if the youth is if, if this is if we had invited the public oh how were they gonna be saying that when everybody is crying about employment about projects about accessing funds, but there is this 37 million, which we didn't know what, how to use it. And we, we, was, we, 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 we were surrendering it. Even the one that you applied for, for, for condonation or whatever it is, um, it, it was not spent. And there are many implications of that. We're satisfied with what we have, cut treasury, uh, because in Houting, maybe we don't need all those projects. It's 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 a very it's a concern. Um, and the other one is a is a is that worker employee that happened to be identified by the 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 AG. And the question will be, if the AG did not raise this. It was fine that that employee would, should continue doing work with business, with the government, and also working in the department. I, I had the presenter talking about five. There was five that was raised. So I don't know whether this employee had five businesses that she was doing with government. I don't know whether there are five employees that were doing business with government. If so, we didn't hear anything about the form. So my, my worry is that uh, if it happened that the, 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 the AG did not pick this up, it was business as usual, it's fine, the law was passed, it's fine, it doesn't touch yourself. Uh, but I'll also check with the, the report of the, the PSC in terms of what are they saying. Uh, There's only one, uh, we'll check with that. And uh, the... The, 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 okay. Are there employees, senior employees, uh, that have not signed the performance agreement in the department and or in the entities? And if so, what are the reasons and what are the implications? The last one, uh, repeat employee, end of uh, the, okay. The last one is, what, what is the, what is the, okay, but um, which are the entities that maybe their term of, of their, their boards, uh, end of, of, of term is, term of office is ending? Um, or how many years do they serve and uh, maybe renewed? Can you just um, update us in terms of, no, they, they're still serving the first year or the second year or the third year is last. We are still going to be advertising. Thank you very much. 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me uh, note uh, and Dr. Makubel. Makubel, uh, your hand is up. Uh, Chair of Chairs, uh, good morning and good morning to the HOD, the department, the MEC, everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Chair of Chairs. Um, uh, um, well, I think that um, there are the, the, the areas where, we are, where, where the department has significantly improved. I just think that we only have one challenge and I think it's a the, the, the challenge that bedevils um, the Houghton provincial government, we need to, to fight it because our work is a function of budget. Budgets must, are passed and they must be spent. Um, I think Mam Ube um, would have explained it far better than me, the, the implications of not spending the money that we receive. Um, uh, it does not as augur well for for the creation of of employment for uh, for the rebuilding of of an economy that has been ravaged by the pandemic it does not work well for for business and all sorts of things we need to find ways to to spend our budget and it needs to be spent um the the and i think the, i i agree let's spend the budget but let's spend it correctly because there are, there are other people, they spend the budget, they spend it incorrectly. Then there are findings from the Auditor General, then there are probes, then there's investigations, there's this and that. We don't want that. We want money to be spent in the correct way. And I think maybe as honorable members, we, we also have to, to advise the department. Perhaps because some of the, and you can't blame them. <laughs> if If they advertise and people don't, don't 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 show any interest don't apply it becomes a problem but i think what they need to do it and i think i've been given this advice from 2019 let them revert to panel let them have a panel they know the type of work that they will be issuing throughout the year um, their budget is small enough for it to continuously be cut by national treasury they know the type of work that is coming every year they know the, the type of services that they need. They'd rather have panels, existing panels for three years, like other departments are doing, that they advertise for panel. There must be a panel for security companies so that if ever there is a new site they establish, they can, they can then take from the panel and appoint from there. It is, it is less expensive it, uh, in terms of time and resource and everything else. Um, the panels for if ever there's a panel that has to of 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 of, of agricultural companies that must go and plant gardens, for instance, at schools. That panel, then they know that they don't have to advertise because the the the, the sad part is because of the laws that we passed to ensure that we are able to um, to cap corruption, but also to to limit them. Um, um, uh, the abuse of uh, public uh, 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 funds. The, we, we, we then created a situation whereby a tender is a life of its own, where it takes you, it, you must advertise for a certain um, a period of time, where you must wait for those who are interested to then uh, deposit their bids, yeah. where there must be a process where those bids are adjudicated. Then there's an award or a non-award. That is a life of its own. That time, time is go, is moving. But if you have existing panels which are allowed by the PFMA and by law, um, then it will make their job serious. Then I think you will see a situation, HOD and MEC, where we would then be able to improve in terms of um, um, spending the budget. I'd rather deal with what we deal with in the office of the Premier where they overspend. I, I'd rather deal with such a problem. Overspending. I love overspending. Even in my own household, um, I'm not the custodian of, of, um, of my cat because I, I overspend. I, I think we want to deal with that. And I don't want us, the uh, 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 chair, 
uh, that we just uh, it, this becomes a session of complaints. No, we we have we have complemented the improvements that we see, but we are also giving solutions to the problems that we see uh, characterizes the department. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Makubela. I think one, two things uh, from my side, and also starting by saying we really compliment, uh, compliment uh, uh, the, the, the department, especially for the audit opinion that they've really achieved. But again, it goes to the issue that, uh, that Ghana is raising on the clean audits. To say, there is a serious problem where more often we can't really get a correlation between the clean audit and best performance service delivery. And it's like th th there's a problem somewhere. Because always you look at a department that got this unqualified audit without any matter of emphasis. But when you get to the service delivery, it becomes something else. So I, th I think that's a matter that it might not really, but I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a growing concern, especially among members, that how do you, there should be a correlation and we should really see the results, but it becomes really a problem. But I think that can really be addressed uh, collectively because it's not only for AG, it's just to check the system the way it has been arranged, something doesn't really tell you well. And then we need really to look at it with a very close eye. Now, as the department, you managed from the AG to close about 10 findings, but we talk about the three that uh, sort of outstanding. On your organizational structure, which is not yet uh, reviewed, you gave yourself a target of May 2022. Now, earlier on, you alluded to the fact that this is at the behest of the Office of the Premier. Now, obviously, for me, you don't have a control of that process. Now, what really precipitated that you come up with May 2022? Because as a committee, we're going to hold you accountable. You put yourself a target, we'll say, why? Maybe if you can really clarify in terms of controlling the entire process, are you able to manage it? Or is it something that is really beyond your control? I think it should come out very clear because that target you are setting, we are going to hold you accountable for it. Now, the other one is the issue of the program change management. I mean, you talk about the MEMS, your dashboard, your changing of the logs. Now, how does it become a finding? Do we incur some of the cost in terms of that process? And what is really finding there? Is there anything where you really misused some of the funds? It didn't really come out very clear from the presentation. I, I think if you can really uh, clarify that matter. But my last point is the issue of the liquor board. The status, I might be the one who doesn't understand it. Maybe other members, they really understand it. Because it just come to my attention that it's not really an entity. But if it's not an entity, what it is? And why don't we classify it like any other entity? Maybe that status, it should really come out very clear. And also indicate whether the way it is really packaged, the way it is, is there a benefit? Or is it really even a problem the way you have really located it? Maybe the, the status, just to clarify where it is. If it's not an entity, what it is? I, I think that's one thing that one would really want to get. Yeah, I'll just pause, uh, give it to you, and Dajinawa, you'll indicate we'll be responding. But uh, those are the questions from the members. But before that, let me check if ever we have uh, members from the stakeholders who want to raise a question based on this. And I must also indicate to the stakeholders that you are at liberty to use the language of your convenient. We'll see where we can really translate, but it's important that you raise questions where you feel 
uh, you have really to get the clarity. Can I really uh, note hands? Okay, and at an hour. No, thank you very much, and thank you to to the valuable questions raised by honourable members of the committee. I would want to say to the chair, we will have to respond to all questions as raised, and I'm going to request uh, members of the administration to come on board. Uh, Bralemi will take a question on the employee who had to do business with the department and CFO will take the Tazas uh, questions and the apology, uh, Marlit will send it, will take that discussion. And, and Chair, just to say the, the, the underpinning of the, of the war room predominantly is to respond to many other commentaries that the members have made of the expenditure of impact and reconcile that you don't get clean audit, but the work is the work is too dry, or, or nothing happens in the in the lives of the people. So at the core of the work war room is also to say we need to ensure that there's impact, and that impact must be reported in real life. Uh, so it's not about ideas that people would want to hear, but it's also about the impact that is happening. We also take the point raised by Honorable Makubela on the circle of, of procurement, because part is that if you want to procure on the second quarter of the year, for the financial year, you likely not to exhaust the whole uh, money you have or resources you have. And the department, as your CFO, have emphasized this point that we all have to procure prior because we know what's going to happen in the next financial year. So, so to to really come to over expenditure is better off than you 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 have not spent at all. I think members have raised an issue about what is what are the issues that uh, are at the zero that nothing has happened. And I think we agree with uh, the honourable Rana that uh, it is not enough to hide behind the COVID time and then say all of these things were arrested by COVID. And therefore, we couldn't move. I'm sure we will be seen through if 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 that becomes an annual excuse. So 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 Chad, at the core, and I'm making an underlying point for all points that are raised. That at the core of the war room, which is a, a, a weekly thing, is to really go drill real deep and look at the impact. And there's a special focus given to to agencies that uh, some work must be done. So so Chad, if you allow me, let me. I call Bralemi first to talk about the resigned employee and the CFO will come on the test. Uh, there's a question raised uh, by Honorable Ususue that uh, we should also give a report about uh, the term of the board members. I'm sure uh, Raymond Osbu will also give feedback to that point. On the apologies, as I said, Cement will give apologies. May I start with you, Bralemi? Yeah, th thanks a lot, uh, 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 DDG, and uh, good morning, uh, members and, and chairperson. Uh, I I missed part of of the question, uh, chair, but uh, if I understand well, you had said uh, uh, because I caught it at the tail end that uh, you needed to understand uh, the employee that uh, did business with. With the with the with the department. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, Chair, because this does not really fall within my ambit. Uh, at the time, uh, it falls within uh, Memadia Khan's area. Uh, that was sent uh, to the office of the Premier to be investigated, and I'm not sure what uh, transpired uh, because I have not seen the final report. Uh, that was uh, commissioned uh, by the HOD through the office of the of the premier. Thank you, Chair. Uh, CFO on on uh, Thank you, thank you very much, um, 
thanks, Chair, um, and thanks to my members for, for the questions. Maybe I would then touch um, other questions that now that then came out with regards to the understanding and so on. Chair, I think I think um, Member Gan is indeed correct. Chair. Um, um, I think um, if if the HOD and the MEC were also present, they would also um, agree with the sentiments that I think um, it would have been a a a. A, a, a serious oversight from the department in that we are not reporting on the fiscal that the fiscals that the D and has since then um, transferred them to 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 Tazas. In the same way that the Auditor General has indicated that the classification was incorrect. Because in their classification they wanted us to treat it the same way we treat in the agencies. So therefore there's a need that um, we should also then report in particular on the on the provincial um, um, fiscals that we have done that. I would propose therefore the chair, without necessarily mandating the committee chair, but to say that probably uh, we 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 at, not attack, but we the the committee be shared the progress to date with regards to Tazas because the understanding chair is that based on the work that we're doing with them, is that the certain phases, I think phase one and phase two, of the SEZ is operational. There is work that has started, they are finalizing. I mean, the speed in which they have done the, the SEZ in total, um, you know, it's amazing. So there are certain phases that have been done. So probably there would be a need, because the CEO of, of Tazas, um, he is part and parcel of, 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 of the reporting a mechanism that comes into the department as and when we report um, be it on monthly, uh, be it um, bi-monthly, be it quarterly, to both the HOD and the MEC. So there would probably be a need that we um, be then able to schedule a session um, in which um, Swano or OTSZ then present the report. Because it's known that um, Swano or OTSZ, it's an, it's an I, a IGR um, kind of a relationship wherein there's a, a DTI who brought in the, the super block funding. It is the city of Tswani, as well as the Gauteng province that um, contributed towards the bulk infrastructure. So the 214 um, in the current in the financial the previous financial year, 200 million was towards the bulk infrastructure. The 14 million was towards the operational cost of the office itself. So I'll propose, Chair, through your your summary when we could probably conclude that there, there would be a need that um, through the office of the MEC that probably then um, the department uh, with Twan OTCZ give the, the members and the committee a full detail um, from inception to date where we are with regards to Twan OTCZ Jefferson um, in that regard. The other part in terms of the Underspending. I think the concern is noted, um, Chairperson, with regards to the, the 37 million. However, Chairperson, it, it should be noted that um, every government department, when it starts a financial year, first of April, they should start on a zero, meaning the point that Member Ghan has raised. We're supposed to have spent 100% of our budget. But fortunate or unfortunate, Chair, there would be those um, commitments that we have not, we have issued a purchase order you have not paid due to work is still undertaking, or you have then not finalized due to having received a close-up report, you are not happy. So those are the monies that you then have to keep. But when you keep that money, those are the money that constitute your possible underspend in that regard. So then when you have that, so the department had 57 million rand. Then as part of the treasury process, we then said to treasury, we want to retain the whole 57 because there is this work that was still outstanding. There is this work that we have concluded, but we have not dispensed off due to processes. So we're requesting to keep the whole 57. Unfortunately, Treasury then came back and said, look, we are not happy with this. We are happy with that. So the 37 million, it is the projects that Treasury said we are not happy so we are not going to allow you to keep this money. You will find the money in your new budget. 
So we had to then um, reprioritize to find money to fund those specific projects. Um, the ones that were only able to give us, it is a 20 million. Because in some cases, the province closed their the payment of invoices very early. You still have the money, you have not paid for, for that money. But the point is noted that we should at least spend 100% uh, of a budget that has been allocated to us, Jefferson, in terms of that part. Just on the issue, I don't think um, Raymond would therefore then talk to it with regards to the GLB status, Chair. GLB is deemed as a trading, a trading entity. It's a component of the department, Jefferson. Um, that is why it is based under Program 4 um, in terms of that part. So it's not a, an agency. I think the, it's not a scheduled agency, but it's just a trading agency of, of the department. Um, Ronald could then able to, Raymond could then able to expand from there. Lastly, Chair, just to, I think Member um, Mpo has raised the issue. The decision that we have taken as, as, as a department is that in the quarter four of a financial year, we must advertise tenders. So the tenders must be advertised. In the quarter one of the new financial year, we must be finalizing the, the, the evaluations and doing the appointments. That will then give us at least about nine months for implementation and payment of invoices. We hope that um, through that chair, it will then see that we will then able to improve our, our expenditure come the 2020 um, financial year, Chairperson. Um, thank you very much, Member Mbo. That's, that's my view. Um, thank you, um, Chair. Um, just to address the uh, question by um, Member Ghana around the conclusion of the audits, it's an error on our side. Apologies for that. The two audits for GEP and um, GGDA were concluded. They were concluded a little later, and uh, both of them were unqualified. Apologies for that on the presentation. Thanks. Spook, can you come in for for the term of the board members? When are they finishing? And yeah, in that sense. No, thanks, Chairperson. All the members, they they uh, look at the term for the the boards of the of 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 of, of the entities of the open open title DD of of the of the DD. Uh, they are all for a three year term. I must start there. Uh, uh, and and we have just renewed the term. Uh, uh, of both the GTTA and also GTP, uh, who are uh, who have been who, who had to who had to then run the, who had to run also the, who run also the three year term, uh, being being the 2021 until 2024 October or September. I must sorry, I must say, the other three being being the GTA, GLB, and GEP, their term was then it was they were also renewed last year October. Uh, uh, because I think all of them, their term have lapsed um, at the end of September last year, and then we have then renewed the term again for the three years. They will then expire then in 2023 October as well. So all the terms of the TTT board of of, of of the boards of entire of entire of of, of entire of entire this thing up until DED, they have been they have been renewed successfully, uh, and and then yeah yeah so 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 that that they are all serving a new term as we speak. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. But uh, there's uh, another one on the chat that talks of um, uh, the secret boss uh, reserve. Maybe the status around that. I just read it is there on the chat from Honorable Newby. If one can also respond to that. Uh, Chair, may I request that? Uh... Um, is your for to to give an answer to that? Would it be fine? Is your for? Che, I think um, the the second boards. I'm not sure if the colleagues from GDAT are still here. It's under the um, it's under GDAT um, second boards. Che. I'm not sure if the CFO or the DDG Dora is still on on the call. Um, GDAT official could assist us on that one. Che, 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 che. 
No, thank you very much. Uh, it is understandable because it is on uh, vote 11, but I think it's a matter that we'll note as the committee we will send it also to them to get that uh, particular uh, uh, response. Now, on the issue of um, the MEC, you will recall that uh, yesterday we raised it as a concern that uh, for the MEC, and it was not really the, 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 the apology was verbal, but today it was written. We got a written apology, but uh, the, the, the point that uh, Honorable Ghana is raised, I think you are noting that with serious concern as a committee, that uh, when we have a meeting, really, it, it must really be prioritized. Because if the MEC, the HOD will go and attend another meeting, it becomes really a problem. But I would really say, we'll really uh, get into the matter deeply because I know this is the, 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 the long hotla, which also it will have its own complications. I know that uh, the MEC yesterday was supposed really to be part of the debate in the NCOP. He couldn't because of this long hotla that is there. So it might differ from one meeting to the other in terms of the character, but we'll, we, we, we really raise it that uh, when the MEC is not here, the HOD is not here, it becomes really problematic. We are really seeing this uh, uh, in hour and then uh, pass it also to the MEC because in the future, it, it will really will end up turning the entire committee back and which is not really a good thing. So just uh, make sure that you, you, you really relate this very strongly to, to the MEC. But now with regard to the questions, because we have not really received those written responses, and then we gave you a deadline for today, we're still hopeful we're going to get the responses today. And then once we get them, we'll make sure that we send them to honorable members. So that is how we'll really go through this. Now, I, I am not sure whether there are follow-up questions, but uh, I want us really to move to, to the entities. But uh, I see there's a hand of Honorable Nube. Let me give you the platform. Thanks, Honorable Chairperson. Um, <sighs> Yes, we can get them, but they're not presented. We can't even do follow-ups out of their 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 mm. their responses. Comes a problem. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, uh, Honorable Mubi. Uh, Honorable Nawa. Uh, Chair, can you also note me? Thank you. Uh, yeah, let me note uh, Honorable Makovela before I get to Honorable Nawa. Honorable Makovel. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Nawa is no longer honorable. He's a he's an honorable official. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, thanks. I think I think maybe we must also applaud the, the MEC for the team that he has assembled around him. It's a very competent team. He's brought people with experience, vast experience, I must say. Um it's it's very encouraging to see the type of people that he has brought together with his team. That will include Nawa, that will include um Me Aluani Chokwe, who also sits in the board of the 4IR. Um and I can see even some of the board members who are in our agencies are also being affirmed somewhere. It means that these boards are not put as, as a matter of factions or preference of political affiliations, but on the basis of competence. Uh, it's very encouraging. I see one of the board members of the of the LICA board has been made chairperson of the National Youth Development Agency. It's very encouraging. It means that uh, this is good. One of them I saw is at Sussex university studying a master's in economics um, it's it's very it's very very encouraging all we want is that they must come bring their expertise their experience and assist us so where i wanted to ask i think there was um, a kg i don't know who is kg was speaking about the it's the, 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 the trans, special economic zone 
And I don't think we want to overemphasize um, the great work, um, including the work that was done by the committee, because there were a lot of things we were not happy about. Um, we raised them and we were able to deal with them. In terms of the implementing agent, uh, we, we preferred something else, um, um, especially in-house. We're happy with the fact that we know, we know, we know, we know Ford. The Ford doesn't play. I mean, it disinvested in in Brazil when when the project was not moving. It removed billions of uh, of dollars out of Brazil and reinvested elsewhere. So for them to actually now commit more money into the SEZ uh, is testament to the work that the, uh, the the department led by the premier is doing. I mean, we took a project to to a township at the heart of Mamelodi um, so, so that we can produce jobs and also that 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 must be that must be commended. But that is not the only SEZ, it, it must be said. We want to see other SEZs uh, starting. We we want to know what is the progress of other SEZ. I don't know who is KG, but then we we visited um, the 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 site, um, the the fourth site. I don't live far from it. Uh, I see. I go there now and again periodically. I think it's one of the greatest successes of the idea that was uh, coined by the premier of a special economic zone. Um, but we want to know what is the progress with other uh, uh, SEZs. We want to know what is happening with the with the tra Tambo uh, or Liver Tambo prison, the SEZ that is uh, that is supposed to happen in in is it Mahali City in the West End. Um, we know that there were challenges with the SEZ where we had partnered with um, um, uh, what is this? Uh, you know, when you don't drink alcohol, there's this comp big company that uh, produces liquor and killing our people who disinvested because they were not happy of the lock lockdown regulations. We want to see some of the SEZs that are that are that are supposed to happen uh, happening. We want to get a, some sort of a, a feedback as to how far are we with those um, with those SEZs. There's also something which is happening which is shocking me. The gambling board was one of the most performing performing um, uh, agencies of the department of chess. Boom, the CEO CEO is suspended. Boom, the CEO is no longer there. Um, at some point, where the CFO, CFO suspend the CFO, no longer there. But but that is, that was one of our flagship um, uh, flagship um, agencies. Maybe if we can be given clarity as to what is really happening there, um, we are happy with the work of the of the of the GGDA, AIDC. We are happy with the work that they are doing. These are agencies that are led by young women. Black young women, talented, skilled, uh, qualified, um, um, who are able to, who, who have been able to turn around those agencies. But my question, really, uh, Chair of Chess, is on, on the um, on the matter that relates to um, to the other uh, special economic zones across the province. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, uh, I know we're going to get into the agencies one by one. So most of the questions I think will be will deal with them when we get to those agencies one by one. But uh, in terms of the economic zones, I think uh, we need to get a response. I'm not sure whether Stanley uh, Bezettenhout, you want to respond to that? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair, and um, good morning, uh, colleagues. Um, I think the question in itself relates to the economic zones, uh, Chair, and also the legislatures um, and the Department of Economic Development's uh, participation with some of the decisions that are made with regard to incubators, incubators um, that are to be rolled out. Um, there was an RFP, RFQ that went out uh, at the time when uh, uh, for an incubator in the province, and I think it had targeted three three uh, metros, uh, Tswane, Joburg, as well as um, um, as well as uh, Mukhali city. And, and 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 unfortunately, that RFQ came out at, at basically the wrong time. And, and really, my question is that to what extent does the does the uh, Department of Economic Development um, provide oversight to some of the decisions with regard to 
um, all of these critical uh, programs that needs to be implemented. It seems to be done uh, and executed sometimes at the wrong time and sometimes not even done um, and delayed um, indefinitely. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Uh, you are last wait on this item in an hour so that we can go to the agencies. Person, I've asked about the performance contracts of the senior man management. OK, also the response. OK, uh, you need to keep. And if now. there's no one, then it must fall under these questions that have not been responded to. OK, thank you. Yeah, and then now you'll indicate who will respond to that question and then you also meet your input. No, no, Chair. I, I just wanted to remind that uh, the questions were not completed. So I wanted Madia Khali to complete the question on the, the employee who had to do business with government to come to, she, she must come back to give that answer. Uh, I'm going to ask Bralemi to, to just say something about the contracts, but that also has received the attention of the of, of the war room. Uh, so, so, so Maria Khan, can you quickly say something before the, the chair moves to the question, including the questions of uh, that were remaining? So, before we, we jump to, to, to agencies, Maria, Maria Khan? Thanks, thanks, uh, thanks, chair. Um, I, I just wanted to clarify on the issues that uh, were raised by members. Um, the one that a um, member indicated that uh, the employee that resigned who did business, I just wanted just to say that the, the employee who did business did not resign, but however, it's the employee that was absorbed by the department. So it was initially the way the cleaners uh, with the service provider, but when we did the insourcing, then she was then absorbed in the department and then she was absorbed in June. Um, and the transaction happened in, in November. So that's, that's where then when we engaged her, then she noted that she was not aware of this particular uh, regulation. And uh, in terms of then uh, five, I was just saying that in that company that was identified, there were five um, 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 uh, partners, and then she was one of those partners. And then what we have done, was that the HOD then uh, sent a letter to her in terms of um, non-compliance and what she then did, she did respond indicating she was not aware and then she then resigned from the company so that she can then leave the other members uh, um, uh, to run still with the company. And then in terms of the, 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 the mitigating that we have, to identify the employees. What we have, we're working together with the internal auditors. What they then come, they identify employees. First, we do identify those who are on CSD and not have not necessarily doing business with the state yet, and then we deal with those. So by the time internal auditors uh, ran the report, I mean, um, uh, ran the report, AG had already up, um, identified this particular uh, individuals. So I just wanted to indicate to members that we do have mechanism working with the internal auditors to identify the people that are doing business with the state. Thank you. Uh, if, I, if I may come in. Uh, Chair, uh, at this point, uh, 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 everyone has managed to contract. The challenge uh, that we had at the time was that uh, we didn't even have uh, a permanent HOD, and we had quite a number of positions that were acting, uh, and it was really a challenge in terms of contracting, and uh, we were then uh, given an instruction that let's rather wait for the new HOD, especially for those that uh, were direct reports uh, to, to the HOD. Uh, at this point, uh, we have now uh, managed to resolve that, 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 that issue, and uh, all the, the SMS members have actually contracted. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, unless uh, the ten hour, you have anything. Hello. No, no, that, that that's enough, chair, for for the questions that were, were raised. I'm sure a lot of other questions 
will come in as we, we deal with the agencies because there are specific questions that are directly uh, in the agencies. Thank you very much, Chair. No, thank you very much. And uh, for that detailed uh, response, and uh, the, 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 the point that was raised in terms of the tacit, uh, the scheduling of a session, we are really uh, considering that. Our staff will look at it and then we'll see when that will be possible so that you're able to share with us the, the progress report around it. Otherwise, others will just package them as questions, additional questions to the, to the department. Now let's get to the agencies. We'll follow the same route. That will be an agency, office of the uh, of the AG, and then we we, we interact. We'll start with the GGDA, Housing Growth Development Agency. Yes, um, we can see the presentation. Good, good morning, good morning, chairperson, honourable chairperson, honourable members, and uh, colleagues from the department. Uh, it's Jamil. Uh, group CEO for the GGDA and uh, Chair, this morning I'll be taking you through the 2021 annual performance for the entire GGDA group. Um, I will deal with all the non-financial um, and performance related issues and I am accompanied by my CFO who will then go into the financial and issues around the audit. Um, Chair, just trying to get the slide moving. Uh, apologies, Chair, I'm just having some difficulty here. Oh, OK, there we go. Uh, so Chair, this, this slide basically just uh, outlines the table of contents. Um, we've broken it up into five parts, um, just listing the national and uh, provincial priorities, our mission vision. Part B goes into performance, uh, and this is at a high level. Then Part C goes into the individual uh, performance um, programs, and this is where we'll go into each of the different entities that make up the GGDA group. We've also included a section on human uh, capital across the group just to indicate uh, where we are uh, currently sitting, what the makeup is, what the structure, uh, and the composition of our um, human capital across the group looks like. And then part E and F essentially deals with the financial performance and uh, Auditor General matters. Um, Chair, moving on, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, this slide basically just indicates the different um, or, or the key strategic documents and policies that the GGDA group subscribes to. Um, when it comes to putting together its APP and its uh, five-year plan. And you will note, Chair, from here we are looking at all the critical um, strategic documents from the NDP, GGT 2030, the Township Re uh, Economic Revitalization Plan. And the idea for us, Chair, through our holdings company and the different entities for each one of us to be playing a significant role um, and in towards achieving the outcomes of each one of these uh, priorities and programs. Um, Chair, this slide just talks to the mission and vision of, of the um, of the GHDA as a group, uh, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide. Um, moving on, Chair, this is the executive summary uh, for performance information. Um, for, for the 2021 year, Chair, um, we, we set overall with a performance uh, achievement of around 73%. Um, if we look at numbers, we had 62 KPIs across the group that were uh, included in our APP. Of those, only 17 were not achieved. Uh, we were able to achieve 45 um, of those KPIs. Uh, Chair, this slide then goes into the detail in terms of the um, uh, summaries for each of the uh, entities uh, at holdings level, uh, which is primarily looking at your trade and investment and infrastructure programs. We set at 58% achievement um, at the AIDC, which focuses obviously on the automotive sector. We set at 83% achievement. 
the Innovation Hub, which focuses on entrepreneurship, innovation. Um, we set at 87% at GIDZ, which is our um, SEZ um, in the GGDA group. We set at 67% and the same percentage for Constitution Hill, which essentially focuses on business tourism, uh, the creative industry and heritage and, and, and education. Um, the summary, therefore, Chair, is 73% for, for the group. This slide then goes into the detail for each of the entities. Um, at holdings level, Chair, this is where there was significant uh, non-achievement, uh, and I'll go into the details around that non-achievement a little later in my presentation. Um, but we did not um, uh, achieve eight of, of the 19 um, uh, targets that we had at AIDC, we did not achieve two. At Innovation Hub, there too, we also did not achieve two. GIDZ, we also did not achieve two. And at Conhill, out of the nine, uh, we did not achieve three. So in total, Chair, out of the 62 targets, uh, 17 of those were not achieved. This slide, Chair, just gives a very high level breakdown of the um, the, um, the the some of the key uh, job creation um, achievements that we were able to 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 seek happening in the 21 uh, in the 2021 year from a temporary job perspectives just over 1800 jobs were created um, and that sort of made up of um, uh, uh, including permanent jobs as well um, there were six job opportunities that were created linked directly to people with disabilities as well. Um, so then moving on, uh, this slide essentially gives you the, the breakdown from a GOD perspective, which is your um, classification in terms of youth, female, uh, age, uh, people with disabilities and military veterans as well. Uh, and we thought this slide is quite important just to show um, that we have been very consciously chair, targeting um, the, the um, GOD targets, which, which is key specifically with regards to uh, youth, both male and female, and people with disabilities and military veterans. Um, so you'll see there has been a, a significant focus on, on trying to ensure that we are able to uh, position ourselves in a way that the jobs that we do create and facilitate come from those particular uh, disadvantaged groups. Uh, Chair, from a training perspective, um, we've been able to train uh, 716 youth. Um, we've also been able to train uh, from, from that 88 uh, women were trained uh, with a total 1.59 um, training uh, or people that were trained uh, across the group uh, from all the entities. Um, Chair Part C, as I've said now, we'll go into the detail from each of the entities. The first entity that I'm going to start off with is uh, at the holdings level. And as I've indicated, Chair, uh, the main KPIs at the holdings level relate to uh, traded investment, that's FDI, DDI, export development, as well as our infrastructure programs. Um, this slide, I think, just um, gives a nice pictorial um, sort of overview of um, what I'm going to be presenting. It's very high level. It brings up the numbers quite nicely in terms of what um, the outcomes were um, and the impact was with regards to some of the KPIs that we had in the 2021 financial year. So, Chair, the, the following slides then go into the detail. Um, with regards to FDI, we had a uh, target of 4 billion. Uh, we were able to achieve just under 3 billion, sitting at 2.9, uh, with a shortfall of around 1.1 billion. Uh, Chair, you would understand that um, the 2021 year was um, quite a, a challenging year, um, not, not just, I think, locally and, and nationally, but internationally as well, where we did see with the onslaught of, of COVID, a huge downswing 
uh, in terms of the global economy, bearing in mind as well that even pre-COVID, um, the South African economy was not in 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 a, in, a, in a good shape, and it was really on decline. I think COVID just exacerbated um, the decline even further. And um, as a result, yeah, a lot of the targets uh, from a trade and investment and export development perspective uh, did take a hit. And you will um, notice, Chair, that from a holdings perspective, um, a lot of the non-achievement is actually related to, um, um, to, to, to the investment. Uh, and part of the reasons around that is, as I've explained, the, the global economic downswing that occurred uh, as a result of the pandemic. So from a DDI as well, Chair, um, we were supposed to have uh, brought in 3 billion. We were 400 million short uh, on BRICS investments facilitated as well, Chair. Um, we were um, just over 300 million short of our target of, of um, 500 million. With regards to trade deals, uh, we were able to, uh, at least on, on this target, achieve slightly more than what our target was. Um, we've been, we were able to facilitate uh, just uh, around 925 million rand of trade deals from the province. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of these trade deals, Chair, just to add, um, was located in, in Africa as well. The number of uh, firms that we have assisted in terms of providing them with export readiness training, we were able to achieve that target as well. Um, infrastructure opportunities facilitated, uh, that target was uh, achieved as well. Um, our target was um, uh, 1 billion in terms of opportunities identified. Uh, we were able to identify just over 2 billion. Uh, from a construction perspective, the target around the uh, completion of the JMP super block chair, um, as at the end of, of the year, we were around 4% uh, under achievement. Um, I can say now, Chair, that that has been uh, completed and is operational. Um, the VAL PMU, which was a target uh, uh, for us to establish with regards to the VAL SEZ that's in the pipeline, uh, that target was was met as well. Uh, with regards to TIH, um, there were some delays on the um, approval that we required from a PPP's perspective with regards to the EB3 building. Um, we were hoping that by the end of the financial year, we'd be able to get um, two of the um, uh, national treasury approvals that's required. Uh, unfortunately, Chair, we weren't able to, to get that. One of the key reasons around that was the fact that one, um, there was a requirement for us to confirm, I think it was around 70% of, of the leases as well, um, which did pose a bit of a challenge for us. Um, we are still um, pursuing that in, in the current year. Chair, with regards to Biopark, um, there we should have actually uh, have completed the construction. Um, there were challenges with the main contractor, which we did report, I think, to the legislature during the um, the sittings you know, or in, in the last uh, financial year, uh, where the contractor, the main contractor actually went into liquidation and as a result, uh, um, construction did pause for a while. Um, and that resulted in us not being able to complete that particular project as per schedule. Uh, with regards to the high-tech SEZ, um, that business case was the target that we had set for ourselves, and that was achieved as well. Um, I did report yesterday, Chair, that there has been progress with regards to the location um, of the high-tech SEZ to be part of the Lenseria Smart City program. Um, with Connell again, um, our target was 40%. Uh, we did not achieve that target. Um, and as we outlined yesterday, because this target is one that now currently sits in our APP as well, um, we did have challenges with regards to the building uh, plans that could not be located. And, you know, yeah, I'm not going to go into all of those reasons as they were articulated yesterday. but. Uh, suffice to say, Chair, as reported, um, there has been significant progress and we're hoping that um, by the end of this calendar year, if not in the first sort of two weeks of January, 
we'd be able to hand the site over for the start of construction. So that that's good news, I think, on the visitor centre side. Uh, Chair, from a quarterly trade and investment outlook uh, reports uh, produced, our target was four. Um, just to give a bit of context, Chair, um, this is work that we do internally through our business intelligence unit at the GGDA. Um, and these reports are fundamental in terms of picking up intelligence not just uh, provincially, nationally, but continentally and globally as to where, um, what the investment trends are. And that allows us to basically uh, focus and zone in on particular sectors, particular um, countries as well, so that when we do uh, our investment attraction, we know exactly where to go to. Um, so that target was met, uh, the number of high value investment leads uh, identified in the Gauteng city region. Um, that's an outcome of the target that I've just spoken to now. Our target was 20, um, but uh, through the sort of aggressive work that we've done in terms of um, uh, dissecting the, the outlooks, um, the information and the intelligence, we were able to identify 50 uh, investment leads that go into our pipeline. Um, and the same, I think, Chair, with the um, the last target on this page, which refers to the investment signals identified for attraction. Um, so this is all internal work that we do within the AIDC at the Business Intelligence Unit, which directly gives impetus um, and enhances the work that our trading investment um, division is able to do. Um, Chair, the number of infrastructure programs identified, um, there we've overachieved on target by 23. Uh, the number of routing suppliers matched to infrastructure projects, uh, there there was also an overachievement. And like I said, I think a lot of that is based on the fact that we've been able to get to a point of collating um, very accurate and reliable intelligence that guides us in terms of how we are able to uh, proceed with our trade and investment activities. Um, we were also able to hold uh, four of the colloquia that we planned for the year. Um, then, Chair, moving on to the AIDC. Uh, this slide again, I think it's just a high level pictorial uh, display of, of some of the key uh, achievements of the AIDC for the 2021 period. The AIDC had a performance of 83%. Um, there were just two targets at the AIDC that were not met, uh, and I'll go into those um, in, in the next couple of slides. Um, so, Chair, um, on the AIDC independence ratio, um, this is a target that, that we included um, you know, while some might say it's a sort of financial stroke uh, administrative function, um, we did notice that there, there were some challenges in, in the prior years with regards to the AIDC's independence ratio. And one of the ways we thought that it would be, or at least management would be able to ensure that that does um, improve was to actually make it a key KPI within our APP as well. And that has worked for us in the sense that we have been able to, to get our independence ratio um, to the required level. Um, we had a target of 65%. We actually overachieved on that uh, by an additional 2%. Our occupancy rate um, was an increase as well. Uh, to from, from 85 or target of 85% to to 91%, and and this particular target I think for for the AIDC and to some extent Conhill and and um, uh, and TIH is also very critical because the occupancy rate um, is directly related to the entity's ability to pull in its own income. And by us being able to, to, to pull in our own income through revenue streams uh, reduces our reliance on MTF funding, which then allows, I think, the group as a whole to prioritize uh, a lot more resources into capital programs. Um, so I think the key here is really to make sure that, you know, all leasable properties are uh, out um, and, and are being leased uh, accordingly as well. On the number of youth, unemployed youth trained, uh, Chair, there, there was an overachievement of around 86%, uh, 86 uh, youth. 
Uh, our learning center, or not learning center, the trade center assessments, uh, we've overachieved by five as well. Uh, the efficiency program, uh, we had 22 companies contracted. We were able to, uh, with, with some additional uh, external funding, um, increase that to 24 companies. So that was um, uh, achieved as well. Our efficiency program, Chair, this is the work that we do with companies um, in the auto sector, uh, mainly tier two, tier three component manufacturers, where ADC actually goes into um, these SMMEs to see how best they can support these SMMEs to increase their production and productivity. Um, and and uh, this directly relates to the 24 companies that I had just spoken about. We had a target of, of improving the efficiency rate by 20%. Um, with the work that we did on these SMMEs, they were actually able to show an improvement of around 46%, which is great, uh, simply because what it means is that now those SMMEs are a lot more efficient, a lot more effective. They are able to produce a lot more and um, they are able to then attract um, more uh, workers into, into, their, um, into their production chain. Um, to the number of SMMEs skilled and supported in our township hubs, and in this one in particular relates to the Winterfeld hub, we were able to support a uh, 10 SMMEs. Um, then the last target to your chair was the um, RAN uh, the RAN value generated uh, at Winterfeld, um, and there this is one of the targets that we didn't achieve at the AIDC. Um, the target was around 400,000. We were able to only show revenue of 81,000 uh, or 81.4. So there was a huge underachievement. Um, and, and a lot of this chair was um, because of the impact of COVID. You would know that from, I think it was from, from March till about October chair, we were aware we had quite strict restrictions um, that did hamper what what uh, we were able to do at, at the hub as well. Um, Chair, and um, also at AIDC, the number of um, incubators uh, uh, that were graduate um, uh, within the uh, incubation program, uh, there we had a target of three and that was achieved as well. Um, the incubators within the hand holding phase of the program, the target was 10 and we were able to achieve that. Um, and the incubators that graduated from the incubation program, uh, we were able to see one SMME uh, graduate out, out of the program and stand on its own two feet. Uh, Chair, these three targets dealt is, um, essentially with the two incubation programs that we have at Ford and, and Nissan. Uh, Chair, moving on to TIH, again, this is the high-level um, pictorial illustration. Um, we were, we, we did achieve 87% uh, of our targets at, at the AIDC. Again, yeah, I think it was just two targets, Chair, that was not achieved. Um, our master plan, um, this was one of the targets that, that um, we weren't able to, to, to achieve. Uh, and that was mainly related to us not being able to um, uh, source the, the full funding that was required for it. The uh, percentage site developed, uh, our target was 29%. Uh, uh, and there, Chair, that, that was also uh, not achieved, uh, mainly as a result of our biopark project not uh, being completed as I'd outlined earlier on when I was talking to the GGDA infrastructure programs. Um, the application for subdivision on, um, on uh, EB2, uh, I mean EB3, uh, which is one of the things that we would, would require when we make our submissions to National Treasury on PPP process, uh, that was done. We were able to secure that. Um, then the next target treasury application for exemption from the PPP process, uh, we did manage to make the application, we just did not get the outcome of that, but that target essentially was met, Chair. Then we also had a target of developing one business case for the smart industries, and that was met. Um, our partner strategy um, was also approved, uh, both by management and the board. Um, the implementation of that partnership strategy 
has also been put in place in that uh, financial year as well. The number of open innovation pro uh, programs contracted to government and industry, we met that target of 11 as, as we had planned. Um, number of joint projects conceptualized with anchor tenants, um, that was met as well, and this was a result of the close relationship the TIH team have with uh, the tenants uh, at, at the Innovation Hub. Um, we were also chair able to see 58 innovation, innovations commercialized by our incubate startups, um, and that gave us a, a additional six against our target of 52. The number of technologies exported by our incubated companies, we had a target of six and that was achieved as well. Um, number of companies graduating from our incubation programs, that target of 14 was achieved as well. Um, Chair, then uh, from an ICASI lab perspective, uh, we did have a target of recruiting uh, 52 new companies into the ICASI labs. Um, and as I think the CEO outlined yesterday, the labs are spread across the province. Uh, we were able to uh, attract 56 companies into the various ICASI labs. Um, the number of new ICASI lab sites developed um, and, and this target related to us growing our ICASI labs as was outlined yesterday um, and we were supposed to have completed the feasibility study and that was done as well. Um, we also then developed a alumni program to actually support the uh, incubators and the companies SMMEs that we're mentoring um, and that's really to uh, ensure that uh, post-graduation, post-SMMEs uh, leaving the Innovation Hub, there is some support that they can um, uh, see coming from the, the, uh, from, from the Innovation Hub, but I think more importantly for the different companies to continue engaging with each other so that they can support each other as they, they move out of the, the, the Innovation Hub. Um, then the last target chair for the Innovation Hub was the number of youth trained in ICT skills and that target was uh, met as well. And uh, main enabler for that was the fact that we were able to secure uh, additional external funding. Um, the bulk of, of the funding on this program is uh, external funding that the TIH team um, is able to secure with uh, strategic partners. Chair, then moving on to the GITZ, um, overall percentage for the year was uh, 67%. Uh, going into the detail, Chair, the first target was the um, construction of the top structure. Uh, we had a 30% um, hope or at least planned uh, construction to have been completed. Um, that didn't happen. Uh, we were only able to see at the close of the financial year, uh, just around 5% of the site uh, being developed. Um, uh, and, and that was essentially the, the actual site establishment that we saw by the close of the quarter or uh, in the year. And again, there, Chair, I think the main reason was just the impact of, of COVID. Um, you would know uh, the, the severe restrictions, especially in the early months of the lockdown, and, and that did impact on contractors as well. Um, the next target was the, the township establishment for Precinct 2 um, and there we had targeted to at least have the town planning and EIA reports done. Uh, we were able to reach those targets. Um, the same with the ORT Springs um, Precinct. Um, those targets related to town planning and EIAs was completed as planned. Um, the number of students trained, Chair, um, there we had a target of 10. Uh, we weren't able to do any training. Uh, and the main reason for that is that the way the training has been uh, programmed is directly linked to the construction work that takes place. And the fact that we weren't able to do any construction due to, to the restrictions of, of COVID meant that we weren't able to actually bring in um, students to, to actually be mentored and trained. Um, by by our partners in, in, in the actual construction work. So that target wasn't met. 
the enterprise development strategy chair um, that target was was approved was uh, met the strategy was developed and approved uh, by the JDZ board as well and the investor strategy as well was developed and approved by the board um, the last two targets chair are particularly important in so far as they are now guiding us as we as we are now in 21 22 and moving into 22 23 uh, from an investor uh, attraction perspective as to how we are going to be able to grow the precinct. So at least we've got the framework, we've got the foundation work for a lot of that work to be now coming into effect. Um, Chair, then moving on to Conhill, and as indicated, um, Conhill had an overall achievement of 67% for the quarter. Um, going into the detail, uh, yeah, I think COVID also had its uh, impact here, given the fact that, um, uh, especially with regard to the first target, where it was looking at uh, warm bodies, uh, visitors coming into the site, uh, we had targeted just over 18,000. Uh, we had just over 2,000 with a shortfall of, of, of just under 16,000. And that was mainly due to, to um, the impact of COVID. Um, our second target there was the number of public programs. Um, we we had planned four. We were able to um, to to carry out nine. Uh, so that's an overachievement, and I think that overachievement was a result of a lot more uh, active engagements that we had with some of our strategic partners, like the Department of Justice, Constitutional Development, the Human Rights Commission, as well as the um unesco as well um so through those partnerships we were able to to do a lot more of the uh, public uh, programs uh signature events we we aim to do two and two were carried out a uh, number of acquisitions made um we, we were hoping to uh, add uh, just five new acquisitions to the historical artifacts that we have exhibiting at uh, Conhill. Uh, we were able to, to, to acquire eight additional artifacts that just adds to um, the level of interest and uniqueness of, of the Conhill uh, precinct, which again then I think just draws more people to, to the precinct as well. Uh, Access to, to market opportunities for SMMEs operating in the creative and, and, and tourism sectors. We had a target of 140 SMMEs. We were able to support 143, so that target was achieved as well. And similarly, with the next target, which relates to market opportunities, um, we should have supported around 50. We were able to support 68 um, SMMEs uh, from, from a marketing uh, exposure perspective. Uh, and a lot of this was done through some of the programs um, that are actually owned by uh, Conil itself. Um, Chair, then moving on, uh, and as I alluded to yesterday as well, the construction of land parcel E, we should have been on 25%. Um, that didn't happen. Um, aside from COVID, and we're not going to use COVID as an excuse there, but we did have delays around the um, SEM processes. Um, that that uh, particularly around probity on on that particular um, uh, construction program. Uh, Chair, then we also had a target of completing the creative um, content studio at Conhill, uh, and that was done. Um, just to indicate, also Chair, that this was a um, uh, program that we were able to raise external funding for. Uh, through through the partnerships that Conil has, uh, so that that uh, creative studio um, did not or was not funded uh, via MTF funding, um, and then chair the um, last target at Conil relates to the rand value of fundraised, and the our target was around four million, um, and unfortunately chair that that target wasn't achieved. Uh, yeah, I think just partly due to non-responsiveness from some of the stakeholders that we normally engage with. And I think there just the sort of uncertainty and hesitation with regards to what was going to ha be happening around COVID and lockdown and restrictions did impact uh, us on, on that particular target. 
Chair, then part D of my presentation looks at the um, Human Capital Report, uh, and I'll try and go through this quite quickly. Um, just to indicate, Chair, that across the group, uh, from an approved structure perspective, um, the GGDA should be having just around 536 staff members. Um, the number of positions that are currently filled uh, is 300, or well, not currently, but as at the end of the financial year, is 363 um, warm bodies, which gives us a vacancy rate of um, around 32%. Uh, Chair, um, you would notice that I think AIDC had the highest vacancy rate. Um, I can confirm that between quarter one of this year and quarter two of this year, we've been um, slowly eating into that vacancy rate by bringing in uh, additional uh, skilled staff into the AIDC to support the entity with its operations. So that number has improved um, significantly as well, uh, as we speak now at the end of the second quarter. Chair, this slide then goes into just the um, classification of the 363 colleagues that we have at the AIDC in terms of their skills level. Um, and I'm not going to go into, into um, detail around that, um, but you, you would notice, Chair, that the bulk of the, the, the skills um, do lie at uh, sort of senior um, to middle management level as well. Uh, yeah, and then Chair, I'll ask uh, our group CFO, Mr. Paul Baikis, to take over to deal with the uh, financial information and the AG matters. Thank you, Chair. Mpo? Thank you, Jason. Through you, Chair. JC, maybe you can put down your presentation. I'll, I'll, I'll beam it from my end. It's easier for me to drive in that. No problem. There you go. Chair, I hope my presentation is visible. Yes, it is. Thank you, Chair. Chair, this is the financial information for the 2020-2021 uh, financial year. As uh, the CEO has uh, alluded to the performance, just like yesterday, uh, the committee will see the impact on the spending, especially on areas that um, we didn't perform as initially envisaged, um, Chair. Some of the information, because uh, the projects are multi-year, Chair, it might sound like I'm repeating myself, but the aim is not really uh, to repeat myself, but to emphasize um, the impact of some of the delays on multiple, on multi-year, multi-year projects, Chair. Chair, for the 2020-21 financial year, um, we had an 892 million allocation. Uh, year to date, we actually spent uh, 594 actual spending and about 300 million was not spent, although it was committed at the end of, of the year. Chair, the biggest contributor Again, is our infrastructure projects. If you look at program one, which is GGD Holdings, um, we had 238 million that was not um, spent at year end. And the two main contributors, Chair, one is the Conhill Visitor Center. As we have uh, mentioned yesterday, the delays in so far as the drawings, this uh, uh, challenge actually started in the previous financial year and it spilled over into the current financial year. So um, one of the reasons why we didn't spend, actually the main reason why we didn't spend on the Conhill Visitor Center is the fact that uh, the drawings are still still not um, approved by the city. But I think we've mentioned um, since the financial year end to today, a significant amount of progress has been made. Uh, we have done a section 76 application. We have um, appointed a fire engineer we had also um, done significant amount of stakeholder engagement where our MEC and other uh, senior officials had to meet to resolve this, this item. So the progress as at year end is not the same as at today. Today we have made significant strides and significant project on this item. 
The second item, Chair, it is um, what Jamil had referred to is the biopark phase three. This biopark phase three, um, it is at 48% um, completion and the work was halted in the 2020-21 financial year because the main JV partner went into business rescue and eventually went into liquidation. And on this item, Chair, the biggest challenge we had was that the JV partner that was left did not have the required CIDB credit to finish the work. However, since the financial year end to date, um, we had given the, 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 the contractor an opportunity as per the contract to remedy that situation. The contractor has since remedied that, um, that situation. We are appointing a new PRT because we have uh, terminated the old PRT, um, considering that uh, the old PRT uh, actually failed us as GDA insofar as their contractual obligations were, were concerned. Then on AIDC chair, um, AIDC spent about 90% of uh, of their their allocation. The 20 million chair that was not spent was because of one tender that was uh, delayed relating to the roof replacement at uh, at Supplier Park. Uh, we have since written to provincial treasury requesting to retain these funds, um, and um, I think provincial treasury was waiting for the audited financials sometime last year, uh, sorry, sometime this year, and uh, following up with them on Monday, which was day before yesterday, that uh, promised us a response by Monday, um, which we, we never received, but we are hoping uh, we will be able to retain those funds and replace uh, the, the the roof that is that is leaking um, chair. So for TIH um, chair, uh, although the 4 million was committed, as at year end, it was not spent, uh, Chair. Most of it was uh, for, for, for services, Chair, that were disrupted due to the pandemic last year. I think, Chair, we had um, expressed uh, in last year this time, I think it was in quarter two of the previous financial year, the impact that COVID has had um, on, on, on our operations. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to make up an excuse, but Chair, if you remember when we went into the hard lockdown on the 27th of uh, March 2020, um, Chair, uh, services could not be rendered. For example, we had cleaners that could not uh, perform the service. We had security guards that could not perform the service. We had uh, uh, service providers that are doing printing and the likes. And I think from uh, hard level, hard lockdown level five, level four, it was only when you got to either level two or level one, when the economy was uh, opened up a bit, that's when we started seeing the economic activity. Unfortunately, into quarter three and quarter four of uh, the set financial year, which is 2021-22, we could not uh, accelerate the spending as much as uh, we we had hoped um, and that is why when you look at TIH and Conhill um, we had that uh, underspending of uh, of about four million and six million then chair the 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 GIDZ 29 million uh, is the same contractor that we referred to yesterday um, chair uh, in the 2021 um, is when we actually appointed the contractor and uh, because of the hard lockdown, uh, the work actually commenced late. And unfortunately, when the country actually started uh, opening up economic activity, that set site uh, uh, that we are referring to was hard hit. Uh, 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 it was also referred to as, as, a, as a super spreader because some of the site managers and and other people who were working on site, unfortunately, they lost their lives uh, as a result of contracting the the virus um, chair. So that is that is the reason why uh, for GIDZ you see that significant uh, non non spending uh, on that on that project, chair. Then the AG matters, the the five entities um, uh, for for GGDA, including the group. Um, we received clean audits, uh, safe to say the Innovation Hub. The Innovation Hub received an unqualified audit opinion. However, it had material findings that needed to be um, adjusted. 
Chair, I'll speak to those five findings. So if you look at the entire group, uh, we did fairly, fairly well uh, by not receiving any qualification uh, and actually receiving clean audits uh, because there were more, no material findings except for the Innovation Hub Chair. Then I'll speak to those findings at the Innovation Hub in, in my next uh, slide. So the Innovation Hub Chair had, uh, had six uh, uh, significant uh, findings that affected the audit, the audit outcomes, and those findings were resolved uh, last year already, when I say last year, uh, before the sign off of the financial statements, because the auditors would not sign off un unless you actually resolve all those findings. So those uh, findings required management to make adjustments. We adjusted the financials and the AG was uh, happy with the way we have adjusted. They gave us an unqualified. However, they said uh, you cannot get a clean audit because the adjustments that you had to make were actually significant. That is why it's referred to as significant uh, audit findings. Although all six have been uh, resolved, Chair, um, of the 13, because I think TIH is the one entity that had a lot of findings, um, of the 13 that are still in progress, I'll speak to them now. Oh, there we are. Um, oh, yes. So of the uh, six findings, although they were all closed, Chair, because you see, Chair, I've mentioned that all six were closed for the auditors to to sign us off. Um, the other four, we are saying they are in progress, Chair, because what internal audit wants to do is, although there was a finding that you have closed, they want to see in this current financial year that actually there is no repeat. And these findings uh, will be tested in the year end in quarter four, because they all relate to, to year end procedures and only once internal audit has reviewed uh, that there is no repeat, these four findings will be um, classified as, as closed, Chairperson. Then Chair, the remedial actions that um, have transpired since the, 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 the end of the audit, um, because there were a couple of uh, findings which might not have been referred to as significant findings, like the six findings that I, I was referring to for TIH, but we had other findings, although they are not significant and affecting the audit opinion, we still needed to put in remedial actions. And, and we have provided a, a, a training to all SCM um, officials, including EXCO, because uh, Remember, Chair Exco. Uh, most of the Exco members they sit on the big committees, whether it's PSC, PEC, or or, or PEC, PEC, PAC, and PSC. Um, Chair, we have amended the policy uh, on 16A6.6. Uh, 16A6.6, Chair, is the participation into another organ of state's contract, and we've realized that some of the colleagues have been applying this uh, regulation incorrectly. And we therefore changed our internal policy to say nobody in the group will apply this regulation without consulting with group. Um, so that is the monitoring that uh, we, we have uh, put in place. And also from the department side, in our quarterly meetings with the MEC, the MEC wants us to report to him all the 16A6 participations and provide reasons. Why is it that you can't go out on open tender? Chair, we have uh, uh, instituted um, consequence management uh, on, on where required um, employees have, have received um, their either verbal uh, written warnings. Some uh, employees have decided to actually resign um, uh, because they could see the consequence management coming uh, and, and they would resign with immediate effect. But HR does have uh, certain uh, steps that they are following to ensure that some of these employees actually do not go in other organ of state and, 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 and apply regulations incorrectly. Our IT procedures, chair, policies and procedures um, are being reviewed and are being enhanced. Um, we are also uh, upgrading our leave system because one of the findings was that uh, some employees would go out on leave, although they have applied for the leave on the system, 
the line manager had not approved um, the leave. So we have enhanced our system to have a reminder to the line managers to say, please remember that your subordinate is going on leave tomorrow. And if you need to approve, you approve the leave. If you need to decline with reasons, you will decline, you will decline, um, you will decline the, the, the leave chair. So chair, these are, 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 are the remedial actions that we have uh, in, implemented for all findings. So whether it's a significant finding or a not significant finding, all of them we have uh, instituted and implemented remedial remedial actions, chairperson. Um, <clears throat> oh, okay, then this is on 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 accounting and tax uh, uh, complex matters. We will be appointing a service provider that will assist us with uh, training on complex grab matters. Because if you look at the TIA findings, most of the findings were complex technical matters. That is why some of them we had to escalate to the Auditor General's uh, uh, research and development team because they were very technical in nature and we needed to make sure that uh, we don't differ in opinion on technical matters. Chairperson, that's the, 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 the finance section and the audit outcomes uh, section. I will pause here, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Then let's get to the AG office and uh, we'll interact and then maybe we consider breaking for a few minutes. Let's get to the AG. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'll be sharing my screen. Uh, please let me know when you can see my screen. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, we can. Okay, yeah, thank we, you. We can. We can we can see it, but who is holding the flag? Uh, my apologies, uh, committee member. I'm I'm not hundred percent sure because he's facing the other direction. Uh, no, but the problem is that is he's wearing a pink shirt. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. Um, I'll be taking you through the the PFMA uh, audit outcomes for the Houghton Growth Development Agency as well as its entities. Uh, Chair, this this um, we've gone through this in in our earlier discussion, so I'm not going to go through it. Uh, the the content of of the presentation um, speaks to the key message, the audit outcomes, and as well as the recommendations. Um, moving on, if we look at the the key message, we we've actually um, um, drafted the key message for the whole group. Um, of which we, we state that the uh, GGTA and one of its entities has significantly improved on their audit outcomes from uh, unqualified with findings to clean audit in the current year. And, and those entities are GGTA and AIDC. Uh, uh, before that, I, I see a hand of Stanley. I don't know what. And thank you, thank you, Chair, for, for acknowledging. I just wanted to ask Mbongeni to actually present, Chair. We can't read the text because he's presenting from with inside the PowerPoint. So he's oh, going yeah. to keep okay. presenting. No. Thank you, Chair. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yeah, Is we can. More? Okay, thank you. Uh, Chair, I was still um, on, on point number two, um, where we state that two entities maintain the audit opinion as unqualified with no findings, as no material findings were identified on the audit of the financial statements as well as performance information and those entities were, were Cornhill and GIDZ. Uh, material amendments to financial statements submitted for audit at one of the entities was identified, and that entity, I think, as alluded by, by the group CFO, was TIH. Um, I think we, we also want to, to recommend that management should continue to monitor compliance with laws and regulations at entity level. And as indicated, one of the, the entities within the group had, had regressed um, in overall outcome as TIH had a, an unqualified with no findings in the previous financial year to, to the current year where they got uh, unqualified with findings. Uh, Chair, I'm going to take you through the, the pictorial for, for the GGDA, uh, the, entity, the, the holdings. Um, if you look on the top left corner uh, where we present um, the audit outcomes for the past three audit cycles. Um, 
in 2019-20, the, 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 the entity had unqualified with findings and in the current year, as indicated, has improved to an unqualified with no findings, which is also known as clean audit. If we move to the top right, um, where we, 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 we speak to the assurance levels, um, uh, we must comment the, 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 the entities management as well as oversight committees uh, for, for providing um, the assurance that resulted in, in the entity obtaining a clean audit. And if we move down to the, 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 the just below um, on, the, on, the bottom, on the bottom right, where we speak to the status of the internal control drivers, um, if we look under the leadership chair, you will see that uh, for HR management as well as policies and procedures, um, they, they, they remain a concern with policies and, and procedures regressing from the previous year. And, and the reason for that is that on the HR, as indicated by the, by the group CFO, we had some findings on HR management in relation to the leave, um, as well as identified some key um, vacant position at management level. Under financial and performance management, uh, processing and recon reconciling controls as well as um, IT systems controls has, has regressed. And there was a slight improvement on compliance monitoring, even though they remain a concern. Um, the, the, the areas that we had identified on, on the, excuse me, on the processing and, and reconciling of controls um, was on the on the fruitless and wasteful expenditure that was not appropriately disclosed in in the financial statements, and then on compliance we had some some compliance findings on on the on some of the quotations, um, as well as some bids document which were not material to justify um, a compliance finding in the audit report, and on the IT systems as well there were some findings um, that we had identified on the on the ICT management. Um, in relation to the passwords um, the, as well as the, the user account management. And then if we move on to the risk areas, uh, I must mention, Chair, that in terms of the quality of the submitted performance report, there was a, a slight improvement as compared to the previous year, of which that will explain why we have that legal arrow facing up, which is green. Um, similarly, with supply chain, uh, there was a slight improvement as we did not have a lot of, of findings in that space. Um, and in terms of financial management uh, as well, the, 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 the entity looks uh, in good financial health. Um, in terms of HR, as indicated with the findings that were identified, even though it remains green, there were just a few uh, slight regression in terms of the, the, the controls within the environment. Um, and then in terms of um, in information technology, uh, there was a slight uh, as well regression. Um, as a result of the findings identified. And then if you look at the, the TIH, which had regressed, um, where, which obtained unqualified uh, audit opinion with, with findings, uh, basically the, the finding was, as indicated by the CFO, uh, was on the, the material misstatements in the financial statements, uh, which was in the areas of provisions, commitments, uh, investment properties, as well as PPE. So we, 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 are, we, we are alluding to the fact that management just need to, to make sure that they, they improve in, in the leadership oversight and, and make sure that they, they follow up on, on the identified root causes, which is the inadequate oversight over financial reporting. Uh, Chair, um, uh, here we, we look at the, the total uh, irregular expenditure for the group. Um, making a comparison in the past three years, which we, we can see that there's been an increase on an annual basis. And if we look in terms of the top three entities within the group, we've got GGDA that contributes uh, 42.2 million of the 65 million. Uh, Supplier Park, also known as AIDC, uh, which contributes 10.2 million and GIDZ 5.7 million. Um, the areas of, of, of concern uh, that we've identified was on the supply chain management regulations and process not being followed adequately, uh, non-compliance with CIDB regulations and procedures, participation in contract uh, um, arranged by means of a competitive process by another entity, um, of which the root cause um, from our side was that there is lack of monitoring and review of the compliance with supply chain management legislation. Um, in order to improve this, to, to make sure that um, 
management tries and 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 and, and limit the increase in the regular expenditure. Uh, we recommend that adequate monitoring of compliance with applicable laws and regulations to identify and prevent non-compliance, more robust oversight and monitoring of competitive bidding processes, Samia's investigation and implementation of recommendations on irregular expenditure in CAD. Um, um, further, Chair, we, we've got more recommendations to the accounting officer. Uh, we encourage the accounting officer to continue to providing sound leadership and adequate oversight responsibility over financial reporting and performance information um, to ensure that daily disciplines that sustain positive audit, come, audit outcome are, are in place and effectively implemented. Continue to track commitments made by uh, made to maintain audit outcomes rather. Continue oversight monitoring to ensure compliance with laws and regulations. And in terms of the recommendations to the portfolio committee um, is to provide effective oversight to ensure that risk areas and control weaknesses mentioned above are being addressed, including corrective actions to be taken by the accounting office to improve the audit outcomes of the innovation hub. Closely monitor the implementation of the PC resolution and collaborate with HSA through regular interactions, um, preferably on a quarterly basis on the implementation of the resolutions relating to the audit outcome. I think that's it, Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me give it to honorable members if there is anything. Also, there is an improvement. They caught the clean audit, but there were issues that were raised, especially on irregular expenditure. That is really worrying. Uh, honorable members, if there is anything. Okay, uh, I can see uh, Stanley, you want to, uh, maybe Stanley, I'll note you because you'll be responding to. That's right. Yeah, I'll have to note Honorable Makubela and then from there I'll give it to you. Uh, Honorable Makubela. No, Chair of Chess, thank you very much. Um, but I think the 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 father of what is the uh, international political dynamics uh, by Hans Mojentau makes a point which I fully agree as evidenced by the performance of this agency that the world will be a better place if that world is will be led by women and I think that we have to continue to do that chair of chairs and myself and yourself and the many men who are here uh, who are actually uh, creating problems of net network because of the levels of uh, the high levels of uh, testosterone in this virtual city. Um, we have to step back and allow women to, to lead. You can see the performance of this particular agency, which in itself is not just an agency, that is an agent, agency which is managing other very important units. I think let's welcome the clean audit. Um, let's welcome the overall performance. Let's welcome its ability to, to be able to set targets and to meet its own targets. There's an under-reported uh, story, or, or actually there's work that they do that I don't understand why the department is not even uh, priding itself with that work. And that is the work on on bringing foreign direct investments directly into the country. It's, uh, it's encouraging to see that they are able to do cross-border work and bring capital in the province in the form of investments that have, uh, that have come uh, through them. And that should, be, that should be noted. There's also a lot of work. I'm not happy with one part of, the, of, of it. I don't know whether it's the department, the agency itself, or the officials of the agency, because most of its work, for instance, I saw on social media, the CEO, I think is somewhere in Devon doing very important work. We want to be part and parcel of that work. We, we, I've attended uh, some of the, uh, uh, the summits, the, the investment summits that they've hosted. We don't get invited to these summits. Uh, we want to be invested. 
to be invited. Unfortunately, we get to to attend because we find these on on social networks as well as on business uh, magazines and newspapers. And I think that we need to improve that chair. Uh, we also need to to applaud the the work that we are doing in the incubation hubs. And I think the committee must undertake to actually visit these places and also visit these companies that have been or that are incubated by by the agency because part of the the, the, the the important work that the agency has to do and that we have set ourselves up as a target to do is to ensure that we incubate um, uh, entrepreneurs and that we walk them the difficult uh, road of uh, of business and also ensure that we mess them in the mainstream economy of uh, of our province which is still um, really white owned by white men who are refusing uh, and fighting uh, for change. And, and I think we need to applaud them on that. The, the work of the incubation hub, we need to also incubate them because if you, it's a good story that we must tell. And that is the work that is also done, that is that is being done by the AITC. Um, if you go on the, on the 20 Houghton belt of the, uh, automotive industry in the Roslyn, the amount of work that they are doing there, the success that 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 is that is actually uh, beginning to sprout from that part of our province. And how do we measure that success? That success is simply measured through the appetite of these multinational uh, automotive companies, who then put money, more money into that. If you go to BMW, BMW um, has moved from saying we are no longer only going to be building, Not I'm not talking about assembly plants, Chair, I, I want us to, because this is a very important. These car manufacturing companies, because of the, the work that we do, that the agency is doing, led by the capable uh, young woman CEO, who's also a chartered accountant, they have confidence in what is happening there. They are not just building assembly points. Assembly points means the parts come imported somewhere from China, Taiwan, and elsewhere in the world, and they just get assembled in South Africa. They are building manufacturing hubs in, in our country and diversifying the kind of um, uh, automobiles that have been created and that we need to, to applaud them. Um, um, uh, GGDA on. The only concern, which I think it's a, I call it the deep, the demon of um, of the Houghton Provincial Government. We need to improve on it, and and I understand that that uh, uh, one of the reasons why that problem still persists is informed by the fact that people are afraid of the Auditor General, and therefore they are, they want to spend money correctly. But I think we need to find mechanisms and ways in which we must spend this money that we ourselves as honorable members pass in the appropriation bill. The demon of underspending still bedevils us and we need to be able to address that. When you don't spend, it means you are not employing people who are in your agencies. It means that unemployment, we cannot defeat it. When you do not spend, it means that you are actually affecting the entire economic pyramid. The money does not flow uh, down and when you do not spare, spend, you are actually stifling um, the economy. The private sector in South Africa, which is really wide, has actually embarked on what COSATU um, uh, and the South African Communist Party labels as an investment strike. What does that entail? That strike means that whatever they make from the economy in South Africa, they don't reinvest it back. We can't be behaving like that, that we also embark on a silent um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 investment strike where we are, not put, we are not spending money, which then inhibits the growth of our economy. And I think that I don't want to, I'm happy that the, the, um, the agency, when it reports on the, the matters of emphasis from the AG or matters that arise from the AG, they don't only report on them, and just um, uh, uh, put their uh, put their hands to the sky. They also tell us 
what they are going to do and what they are currently doing. Uh, let me close by saying, let's just give this machine to women. And I can tell you, we are going to progressively move South Africa forward. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Makovela. I don't really have much, uh, except that uh, I think the, also the emphasis should be put on the regression that we see from the TIH. I know others, uh, Constitutional Hill, uh, the holdings, they are really doing well, but that regression, I think just to work on it so that uh, we end up really being complete at the end of the day. And also that uh, the grab accounting, that technical problems that you encountered, I think you learn in the process, but uh, it, it's something that uh, as, the, as, the, as, the, as the, the, the entity, you need really to live to that uh, expectations. But otherwise, you really performed well, you have really improved from where you were, and then here you are, and then you have to ready to sustain the level where you are in terms of that audit opinion. Yeah, I think that's that. Unless uh, the, 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 the accounting officer would like to say something, but uh, as the committee, I think we're happy that we can move to the next entity. Uh, can I give it to you, uh, the accounting officer? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. It's uh, Chamelia again. Now, um, Chair, I, I think I think the comments are, are, are well noted. Um, I think you know, even though we, we 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 did sort of show significant improvement, I think from our side the the um, the way forward is to actually improve on that and and to just keep on and uh, looking at how we can better uh, implement our processes. So we're definitely not going to be sitting back uh, and assuming that, well, because we had, you know, a, a fairly good outcome in the previous year, that will happen this year as well. Uh, we want to make sure, Chair, that we do reach new heights. Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you for, for the sentiments expressed. And I think some of the comments that, that members have made, um, I think we will internalize those as well. But thank you to yourself and, and, and the committee chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, with due respect, uh, maybe let's just break for 20 minutes. We really come back at uh, half past one. And then when we come back, then we get to the routing enterprise propeller. Uh, I, I think uh, let's uh, take it in that particular fashion. I see. Uh, let's see, we'll steal your hand. It's an old hand. Yeah, let's just no, it's, it's, a, it's a legacy hand, sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. And then I can see Stanley still want to, to come back. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, through you, Chair. I'm, I'm not sure if there would be opportunity for, um, for comments uh, from the external parties, if I may then um, refer to it that way. Um, before we move on to the next uh, to the next um, uh, presentation or entity. Yeah, let me check uh, if we still have those comments from external. I think in the absence then yeah, as it appeared too. Would yeah. there be would there be an opportunity for um, ourselves um, uh, to then just before we start uh, chair after we come back from the break just to give some input on in particular the uh, ggda's uh, presentation would they or should i do it now I do it now uh, thank you chair um through you chair um i i concur with the speaker in everything that he has said in particular that we should be appointing women in this role and effectively we've just fired the ceo and the cfo um, if it is that we're going to deal with the issue of under underspending, uh, Chair. The fact that we've underspent by about three, uh, 300 million is, is criminal, um, given you know, the social challenges that we're sitting with. Uh, any form of underspending within government, given the reasons that have been cited, and I agree fully that our economy is still driven by white males. And for that reason, they hold back on spending. And we know what happens to any economy uh, you know, in the world when, when uh, spending is contracted, um, it, it, it frustrates growth, um, it, it results in unemployment, et cetera. And, and while we understand that a great part of that 
understanding was as a result of the construction um, and due to COVID. That, that is fully understandable, Chair. Um, I, I am particularly concerned, Chair, with regard to the fact that Gauteng represents 33% of SMMEs in the country. That's a staggering 860,000 SMMEs um, that, are, that are in the formal economy. Uh, and while, while the um, GGDA should be commented on its performance, uh, Chair, I'm particularly concerned at the, at the targets, at the low targets that have been set um, in terms of the number of SMME supported. Um, in, uh, are we to understand, Chair, that out of the entire um, Gauteng that the GGDA had supported 10 uh, SMMEs, has trained 1,000 a, a um, uh, uh, individuals, and, and, and while we agree that women should be, should be um, supported, but the numbers doesn't speak to that. Because out of the 700 and something um, uh, people that have been trained, uh, I think only 88 of that um, was women that was trained, uh, for example. Um, and, and, and quite honestly, uh, Chair, when it comes to, to the targets, it's one thing performing well against um, you know, stringent targets. But if your performance of 73% you know, is against, against targets that have been set that low, um, it is it is a bit of a concern, and to get back to the issue of uh, the CFO and the CEO, it would be interesting, Chair, to see um, how their personal performance and the bonuses perhaps that they've received, if it is that they did receive any bonuses, has been has been linked to the KPIs and whether those KPIs includes um, whether there's been under uh, under spend, spending or under performance in that regard. I do believe that the GDDA, as, um, as, it's, as it itself states in its mission uh, and in its vision, uh, Chair, that um, it is to be the premium catalyst of innovation, sustainability, and inclusive growth um, and socioeconomic development within the province, that, that it would revisit its vision and its mission and, and, and measure its key performance indicators or its key performance areas specifically against its mission. Um, because if we look at the level of unemployment, especially amongst our youth, if we look at the number of SMMEs that are not supported, there's a great deal to be desired. And, 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 and as much as they are doing good work, Chair, um, the work that they're doing, we're only going to see the fruits of this work after three, five years um, when, when, when those um, infrastructure that they're currently developing has been fully populated and so on. I think as a final point, Chair, um, the, the CEO and the CFO um, has to take significant introspections with regard to the targets against they measured. We should be training a lot more women. We should be training, supporting a lot more SMMEs, and we should be um, supporting a lot more youth than what we're currently measuring ourselves against, Chair. I thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we nearly really missed uh, this important uh, input. And I think uh, it's really noted both by the department and also as a committee, we will have really to, 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 to really put that uh, uh, on top of, the, of our agenda because we need really to monitor the issues that we've just raised. Very, very uh, important. Uh, unless if a uh, uh, chat, you wanted to come back, but I think this is just the points that you've really to note. That does not really need uh, a direct response uh, chat. Uh, yes, no, Chair. I think I think those those points are noted. Um, and and Chair, I think if we look at our 21-22 APP, you would see a, a sort of significant uh, change that that does focus on the issues that Mr. Bezaidenot has has raised as well. So so I think Chair, that that is noted, and I think we are on our way to basically addressing that already in our current end in the 22-23 APPs. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> no, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, let's just break for 20 minutes. Uh, I think at uh, 25 to 2, then we resume. Let's just stress our, our, our legs, get water, and then come back at uh, 25 to 2 o'clock. And um, thanks, let's come back. Let's just break, and we'll come back at 25 to 2. Thank you.
I take it uh, we are all uh, back. And then we're supposed to move to the next uh, entity. Uh, the department, are we ready with the routing enterprise propeller? Yes, maybe we can put it on a slide, the slide mode. Oh, okay, sure. Um, no, thank you, Chair, uh, and committee members. I hope I'm um, audible enough. You are um, audible this, enough. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Chair and honourable members um, and colleagues. Uh, honourable Chair, we tabling the um, annual report for the Gauteng Enterprise Propeller um, to indicate um, to to Parliament um, what the successes have been and some of the challenges. Uh, this is the legislative mandate which the committee is very much aware of in terms of our act and the policies that drive us, including the growing Kauteng together and the different other plans. And our role again, the committee is fairly aware, which is largely the facilitation and promotion of entrepreneurship in the province and the development of SMEs. These are the strategic objectives uh, we have over a five year period and top of it because of our challenges has been improving good governance. But the most important thing is not just focusing on governance, but reaching out to the SMEs which are meant to support. Um, I think the challenges of uh, inequality and in SMEs are well documented, which have also been compounded um, by COVID, which has largely affected a lot of SMEs. Challenges in the operating environment in the previous year, particularly COVID was a big one, but we know COVID made the situation worse, um, which was already there over the past uh, couple of years. And then in terms of our own internal challenges, uh, we've had staff challenges, um, we've had stability at a leadership level where we've made some appointments and we'll get into some of those. Our responses to the challenges have been to improve business continuity, which has included, like everybody else, working virtually and finding ways for, for staff to still be productive outside of the office. Um, provision of some of the support and uh, previously some of that non-financial support, which was meant to be done physically, was a bit of a challenge. And then there were some relief measures which were made to some businesses. And again, we've made the point that some of these relief measures were too small for them to be sustainable. But be that as it may, um, there's been some of those relief measures. Uh, some of them have also included permanent holidays. Um, and then there was slight improvement on performance from the previous year and then an improvement on the opinion. Uh, unqualified financial opinion and then no improvement on the performance information. Financially, the original allocation was 231 million and then an additional 215 million, which was meant to be for partnerships. Um, and then there was interest income uh, raised and then um, some additional income uh, from debt collection. Um, and part of this also, we could see it starting to move a little bit as we were trying to prove existence of some of the clients. A lot of them, when they were contacted, started then um, um, paying uh, some of their uh, entities. In terms of the performance over the three year period, um, 1819, it was at 80%, it dropped to 60% in the year 2019 2020. And then there was a slight improvement, 2020-21 to 71%, which is also not yet uh, the ideal performance. Um, these are the areas where there's been performance and in some uh, improvements on performance or, or targets exceeded. Uh, this is the administration one where this was procurement. So the targets were met. <clears throat> um, and then on audit action plans, um, there were at least some improvements at the end of the of the financial year, which was positive. Uh, on the um, financial products to some of the enterprises, again, some of these targets were met and slightly excite, uh, exceeded. And then the non-financial support to hair saloons and spazas, 
uh, is one of the targets that was not met. Um, and then um, non-financial products to small enterprises, the targets were met. Um, and then again here uh, on the investments, part of the grant funding uh, and the non-financial support and incubation on the furniture and trade uh, entities, the targets were not met. Um, uh, in terms of uh, partnerships, um, you know, some of the resource mobilization was was met. And then some of the partnerships which then related to procurement opportunities in the public and private sector <clears throat> were not met. But again, here, if you look at some of these targets, a lot of them ended up being memorandums of understanding, which are also often very difficult in the public sector because there's PFMA, so you can't really say only GEP supported entities will have opportunities into this. So what we're trying to do as part of the enterprise supply development is to provide contract finance to those um, entities that are getting government work. So entities like health, education that have large budgets, agriculture, we're trying to provide contract finance that is going to help uh, some of the entrepreneurs. Uh, audited financial statements, I've already mentioned that there's a slight improvement in that it is unqualified uh, with um, uh, material findings and a lot of these findings related to restatements which we did at the end of the financial year. And the reason why we did a lot of these restatements was that uh, some of the challenges for the entity were related to the loan book. So we have adopted policies um, um, uh, for debt management, uh, for impairment, and have then started introducing some of those impairments to ensure that uh, we meet fair representation in terms of the performance of the business. Uh, in audit uh, of annual performance still remains qualified and part of this is related to the fact that we couldn't really prove some of the things we said were done which were related to the grants and some of the loans that were given out. So again in the presentation yesterday we put a bit of emphasis on what it is that we're doing. The audit committee then added onto this some of the uh, actions that it has taken uh, or at least made sure that they are taken in the business. Part of it has been evaluation of the finance function. So we have a CFO now um, that is appointed on a five year contract and we have a finance manager, which was another critical position, a chartered accountant that we've appointed a lady. And then in the evaluation of the financial statements, um, the, the audit committee has been fairly close to it in terms of, you know, changes in some of the policies that we've done, um, you know, challenging some of the assumptions and reporting and compliance measures that we're doing, and also ensuring that there's a compliance um, uh, in terms of disclosures that we're doing. We have um, um, done as management an imposition on ourselves of doing uh, half-year audits, uh, so we'll do ha we're doing half year results which the colleagues are completing and we'll then <clears throat> do our own audit uh, onto that as a way of preparing for the next financial year that by the time the auditor general comes at least some of the issues uh, we've addressed already internally. A uh, continuation of this uh, compliance with the PFMA and other legislation and there's a lot of emphasis again we've done here to deal with some of the basic compliance where there was oversight historically and then we've also adopted um, the integrated reporting approach so we're starting to report on more than just um, um, the financial information. Um, some of the work looking ahead um, we've spoken already about the strategic partnerships uh, we're securing and these will help us one to leverage the funds uh, that we can make sure the province has access to additional funds from both the public and the private sector but we're also looking at this to assist us in also tapping to additional you know capacity where for example we may have joint investment committees to approve as a bit of youth focus um, We've again altered uh, the program um, to focus on sustainability because what has happened historically is that you have these programs where young people for uh, six months 
get stipends, but they don't really get a skill that is going to make sure that they are employable in, in the future. So we're now increasing the time period. We're putting them in for, for between 12 to 24 months, but we want where they are placed to at least have entities that commit that they would um, uh, employ on a full-time basis at least more than 80 percent of them so that's part of the, the approach we've done to change to change this and uh, and member ghana asked about this program yesterday part of it was you know the problem came because we changed this approach and it appeared that there may have been people who were promised to do work who had never even given us proposals as an entity but had expectation that people were going to be placed but as i said there's a bit of uh, a legal going back and forth with us uh, on on that program and then institutional improvements um, so some of these, you know, we had a task team that were put together to deal with the matters raised by the by the AG. Some of the critical vacancies we've approved um, by end of November. Um, we by end of October, rather, we had nine policies which are outstanding out of the 26. We are now left with one policy. Um, uh, the others have now been approved and we have a new credit model that we've done. And this is just a roadmap of where we think, you know, our approach has been. And this, I think, also ties to another question which was asked about the reconfiguration of the entity. We're at a point where we're now trying to stabilize the entity and deal with some of the basics uh, of, you know, five, six years of leadership instability. So that is now there. We're putting together policies. <clears throat> we're now having some of these partnerships. And by February, when we then submit the new corporate plan <clears throat> for the year 2022-2023, we will then show and report what are some of those proposed changes which take into account some of the work that have, have been done. So <clears throat> a lot of the reconfiguration, if you call it that work, is being done by, by GEP now and will present to the committee at the end of the year until we have an entity that is, you know, customer centric and really our customers being SMEs in the province. Um, um, and again, I mean, you know, our way forward is basic, you know, we've got to implement our strategy and be responsive. Um, the partnerships remain something good, something we have to focus on. Um, good governance uh, and clean governance, again, being important. And again, they will not, placing this above delivery. Our focus is really making sure that what we do has impact. And that's why we said, you know, either than chasing a target of 500 entrepreneurs, which may mean 40,000 rands per entrepreneur, we would rather have a lesser number, we would rather deal with 100 entrepreneurs, but we know those entrepreneurs have a chance of survival. Um, to retain jobs, but also have a chance to maintain and grow. So that is where you know our, a lot of our focus is 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 on the on the outcomes and the impact. And we will then, um, you know, as I had said also yesterday through the reporting in the province, have uh, some of the um, geolocation that shows what our impact is across provinces. Uh, thanks a lot, committee members. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. I think also yesterday we dealt lengthily on this entity, though it was the second quarterly uh, performance report. Uh, let's get to the, the 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 auditor, the office of the auditor general. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Chair. Um, my name is Senele Lala. Um, I will be just taking you through uh, my presentation. Uh, let me just uh, project it now.
Okay. Um, um, I hope to, uh, my screen is visible from your side. Uh, yeah, it is visible. Well, thank you. Um, uh, like I said, that I'm I'm Senator Dada. Um, I'm the audit manager uh, who was responsible for a holding enterprise uh, propeller audit for um, uh, 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 2021 um, uh, financial year or audit cycle. So I will just be taking you through the the presentation. Um, <clears throat> on the key messages, um, we are indicating. Can you try to put it on the slide form? Thank you. Thank you. Um, on the key message, um, we we are indicating that um, uh, JP improved uh, improved on its audit outcomes from a qualified audit opinion on financial statements to an unqualified uh, audit opinion. However, there were still material misstatements in the financial statement, which were subsequently amended by management. Um, on performance management, uh, performance information had material um, findings. This was due to non-submission of supporting evidence for the reported achievement and the incomplete, the incomplete reported achievements. And the entity did not fully implement consequence management as instances of irregular expenditure in carrying the indicated to determine if liable for the expenditure. Entity incurred irregular expenditure amounting to 21 million um, in 2021 uh, and, and 47 million uh, increased to 73 million uh, from the 51 million of the prior year. The main contributor to the increase in irregular expenditure is the legacy contract in relation to price standardization tender which was concluded uh, during 2018-19 financial year. Um, just on the um, uh, graphics, um, so like I, I indicated that there's this, there was improvement, um, um, the, there's, the, the entity uh, attained or achieved uh, unqualified with findings. Um, and I want to just go um, to uh, block number five uh, and just block number four uh, to talk to those. So um, if I can start on block number four, you can see that um, we uh, on the quality of submitted financial statements, uh, uh, intervention is required. Uh, this is mainly due to the fact that there were material misstatements that were subsequently uh, updated by management. And as uh, and on the quality of submitted performance information as well, um, we we experienced um, uh, quite a, a material limitation in that uh, area. Uh, there was a slight uh, improvement on on supply chain management. Uh, I think this is uh, attributed to the fact that uh, there was no big uh, tender uh, that um, uh, was issued during 2021. It was mainly quotations, and, and uh, that's why we are seeing a bit of, I think, uh, a bit of improvement when it comes to uh, SM. Um, financial health, uh, HR, and IT, they remain stagnant, and, uh, you know, as uh, their uh, assessment uh, being concerning. Um, on the root causes, uh, we as uh, saying uh, inadequate oversight responsibility exercised on the financial and performance uh, reporting compliance and the internal controls instability and vacancies in key management positions inadequate consequence management for transgressions inadequate document management those are our uh, those are root causes for the outcome that we we have um so um, I, I think I, I have uh, spoken to, to to this. I will just skip it. Uh, um, so on the uh, recommendations, uh, the key recommendations, uh, we saying the, the accounting officer and management should ensure that they exercise oversight and monitor compliance with key legislation, 
adequate review of financial statements uh, and, and performance report to avoid repeat findings prior to the submission to the AG. Uh, supporting schedules, uh, listings and registers to the to the financial statement should uh, should be adequately reviewed to eliminate area, uh, errors. Management should timely address root causes um, in audit findings identified by AG and internal audit to avoid repeat findings on compliance methods and procurement and contract management. So diligence should be robustly and closely monitored during the award awarding of financial support loans processes. Um, uh, um, uh, and another uh, a set of recommendations as well. Uh, the following key um, identified findings and observation may be used as a base to direct future oversight actions um, and ensure stability in the recently filled key positions, uh, including that of uh, CEO position. Uh, debt management uh, must be closely monitored to ensure high debt recovery, recoverability rate. Uh, contracts identified to be regular that are still in use should be phased out as soon as possible. Um, action taken on finalized investigations uh, should be implemented. Um, monitor that the weaknesses identified are being addressed, as well as providing the necessary oversight where there are reported instances of non compliance. Uh, monitoring a poor uh, record keeping of predetermined objectives, uh, monitoring of the comprehensive review of, of performance uh, uh, reports, closely monitor the implementation of the resolution and, and collaborate, uh, collaborate with AG uh, through regular interactions on the implementation of resolutions. Thank you, Chair. That's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that. And uh, I think uh, if you look at the spending pattern, uh, what we really interacted with yesterday of the second quarter and this one of the annual, it's more or less uh, the same. And then if you look at those recommendations as a committee, we have to make sure that we really hook them based on your, your recommendations. Let me check if members still have something to this. I know yesterday they really engaged uh, the CEO on this department. Uh, I'm noting uh, Honorable Ghana. Uh, Honorable Ghana, on the floor. Th th thanks very much, uh, Chair. And uh, welcome the report. I welcome the report. Uh, the slight improvement is noted. Um, I, I did say uh, CEO yesterday that I'll ask. Uh, I did say that I will ask a, a very, a, a very pointed question. Mm -hmm. uh, and the question that I want I want to ask is. Uh, yeah. as it relates to the Youth Accelerator Program. Uh, and, and it seems like uh, someone is speaking, Chair. Uh, can you mute? OK, thank you. Uh, continue, Honorable Ghana. Thanks very much. So the pointed question that I want to ask is with regard to an organization called the uh, OL Media Foundation is to check whether the, the CEO is aware of this organization. Is the CEO uh, aware of the promises uh, that were uh, made to this organization insofar as it relates to the Youth Accelerator Program? Uh, because I've been made aware that uh, this organization uh, together with some with a group of young people, uh, they once staged a sit-in in the office of the premier as a result of uh, some unfulfilled promises. Uh, uh, want to check if you are aware, uh, and then if you are, 
what 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 is what are the nature of the promises uh, that were made to this organization because it is in the in the financial year uh, and what is being done um in in that regard so that that's that's the first the first question uh, then the the second question you know i I, I find I find some of the way it, it, it's I think it's the way you report. I raised this yesterday on the on 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 how we report the spending, and it it's like it just yeah. Method, as as someone who likes numbers, I look at that as like the target is forty percent to achieve seventy seven percent. Is it the seventy seven percent or forty percent? Or is it the seventy-seven percent of the total hundred percent? So maybe what we then need to do, chair, uh, where where there are percentages as a as a target, uh, there needs to be accompanied by the uh, by the actuals. Uh, so if if I'm planning to spend hundred rand and I spend hundred rand, then I spend hundred percent. Uh, but if I spend 100% to buy shoes, uh, I can equally spend 100% to buy a shirt. You know, uh, if I only had 100 drop. so that that creates a, a bit of a uh, uh, an, an issue. And then there are two two interesting non-financial targets, which for me doesn't make sense. CEO. So. One one of of those ones that we didn't uh, uh, do well uh, uh, of providing non financial support we give we give as a reason that the 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 entities are not registered with SARS. I mean, surely, if you are offering a non financial uh, support. Uh, you should be assisting those ones that are not uh, <laughs> registered with SARS uh, to offer them that that particular support and, and advice. But then to say that we could not achieve the target because some enterprises are not registered with SARS, uh, I, I think it's a bit of a we are it's a bit of a cop out. I think we are hiding behind something that doesn't exist. And and I need to understand. So an another one that we did not. Which you did not uh, uh, achieve is this one that relates to assisting uh, small enterprises uh, uh, with uh, uh, or linking them to procurement at the at, uh, with public and private uh, entities. And I'm trying to think. So the the housing department, as I mean, the housing government, the public entity, there are a lot of departments. There are a lot of public entities in there. I mean, just just looking at the economic development uh, entities that are your colleagues, uh, uh, and trying to to link and create uh, some sort of uh, partnerships and the likes. And we did not. We we achieved uh, nothing. I mean, it's if we ourselves are a public entity. And uh, our performance area is linking enterprises with public entities. What what was the difficulty? Uh, is it uh, are your, uh, is the what you call the the department not not responsive? Uh, other entities in the department not responsive. What what's what's the What's the wall there? Is there a Berlin wall between JEP and other entities in in the DD? Uh, that that's that's something. And then finally, chair, I I must say, one, I'm starting to be slightly worried, chair, and I need to register it as, as such. So there is this SMME fund which at times is a partnership fund that is uh, that's mobilizing money and money is coming in but then the performance 
uh, seems to be very, uh, very worrying. So, for instance, there was this 250 million, and as I understand it, 50 million of that 250 million is the one that has gone to the uh, to the rebuilding fund together with the IDC 50 million, and then there are other there are a lot of monies that are coming into this uh, so-called SMME fund or partnership fund. But then the plans in terms of how these monies are going to be uh, to be used to assist this, uh, small enterprises in, in Khalte, and they're, they're, they're a lot more confusing, Chair. Uh, because the rebuilding fund, as, as the CEO said yesterday, that as of the end of uh, October, uh, I think uh, uh, only 2 million of the 100 million, or just less than 2 million of the 100 million, uh, uh, was, was dispersed. So was given to enterprises, uh, which means it's a two percent spend of the hundred million rand uh, rebuilding fund, uh, which is, I mean, considering the agents of uh, of of this need, it's very low. So just need to understand fully the relation between the rebuilding fund, the SMME fund, the monies that are being mobilized. What is the overall big idea? Around all these monies, because we we said on that 250 million for the entire for the entire financial year, Jeb said on it for the entire financial year, didn't utilize it, uh, and now when you you open, uh, only two percent has been spent, uh, two million rand out of 100 million has been spent, and you know it, it's it's quite it's quite worrying. Chair, uh, I th- I think maybe. Uh, the CEO can say something around the the irregular expenditure and the consequences of the of the people who incur or encourage uh, the continue the continuous or continuing uh, uh, increment of uh, irregular expenditure. Uh, I'll I'll pause there, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any other, even if it's external or? Also, our 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 stakeholders, uh, Honourable Mubin. Thanks, Honourable Chairperson. Honourable Chairperson, uh, mm, the first one is related to the not registering what sales. That. I remember there was there were policies. Let me say that at CHEP, uh, in terms of training and supporting small businesses, in the interest that uh, of of equity, access, redress, there were policies which includes also uh, the co-ops to say they will be mentored and supported for, for three years. Then after three years, then uh, 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 the, 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 that unit within JEP will then have evaluated and see that uh, uh, it, can, it can survive. To, to avoid uh, that the business starts today, tomorrow it's dead. The co-ops survive only for six months. It was there. Where are those policies? Because really, you can't see no, no selves. Those women and uh, the vendors, they must be assisted by yourselves, by your different units in terms of for them in the, at the hall. Outside, there must be different stalls that uh, even 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 those that are registered for SARS, all, all those units that will make them, uh, that will make them uh, qualify. Where is that thing now? And it can't just disappear. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any other additional input? Okay, thank you. I'm largely can uh, respond to it. We can then respond. As I said at this stage, I'm just worried about uh, what may be then the legal implications of what I say publicly, but it's a matter of uh, honorable member and we're dealing with. 
uh, the comment about giving actual numbers, uh, we've taken that. I've already asked the team that when we do then the quarterly report, uh, next time we will then correct it. Uh, the matter about SARS, uh, again, we dealt with it yesterday. Part of it is that, I mean, the members are correct. These are problems we create ourselves. We can't really put as a criteria um, something that's difficult to meet for the entities that we're dealing with. So for non-financial support, where it's businesses that need to be, you know, put to a stage where they are able to trade and it is training, that shouldn't always be a requirement. But again, the balance, as I'm saying, has been that um, because it's a public entity, generally it becomes a, an audit finding if you're doing work uh, with entities that are seen not to be tax compliant. But again, I mean, these are, <clears throat> are things that uh, if we planned better, uh, we should be able to do. So these are challenges I mean, we've raised to the colleagues that we've got to up our game in the way in which we do things that we don't uh, commit to things that uh, we are not able to do, which is the same with the uh, procurement opportunities, uh, because there's no reason for us to put a target that we are going to create uh, procurement opportunities in the province when we know there's a PFMA. Because the reality is that um, we can't say to any department, here's the list of people that you must give business to. They are still bound by the PFMA and transparency. What we've then said we will do with government entities, because often part of the difficulty that these entrepreneurs face in fulfilling uh, their tenders is access to finance. A lot of them, more than half of those that fail to deliver, often the failure to deliver is related to their inability to access finance. So we, we're then trying to commit with these entities where we can say uh, to a department, when people have a PO uh, with yourselves and it has been verified that it exists and we are satisfied they have the capacity to deliver, we will then finance them and get paid either by the department or the money going into a joint account so that we are able to to recover the money. So it's not that the province is not spending, there is spend, but the reality is that it's been difficult to practicalize it. I mean, there's been MOUs which were signed, and then you ask the colleagues, okay, there's an MOU, but what does it mean? Um, can, you know, health or education or agriculture or transport just decide uh, they're going to go to a database from GEP. It's forever going to be challenged uh, legally as being incorrect. So those are some of the things that uh, we're addressing. A uh, fair point, uh, again, on Replicana about the performance and it being worrying. Um, this is a function of a couple of things. Some of the prop some of the approvals are taking longer than they should for these funds uh, to be deployed. That's one. Two, where in the case of the rebuilding fund, for example, uh, there's been a couple of issues. One of them, which has been our internal uh, capacity to process, uh, it's become clear to us that we don't have the skills that we require. And again, I mentioned yesterday, we've started putting people on performance management. Those who who lied about their qualifications, we've started disciplining and, and dismissing them. And we've also put up a training program with the ITC, but we're also putting up additional analysts. So by end of this month, we'll have the first four analysts that will help with the processing. And then we, we've already advertised for another additional 10, which you know are temporary and will increase our capacity, which at this stage is uh, seven analysts that we're having. So that's part of then the work we're doing to make sure that there is improved performance. So we've set ourselves high targets uh, to meet um, at the end of the month uh, of November and also the end of the month of December. So when we report to the committee, we'll probably report end of quarter December and maybe even show what it is that we're doing um, in January. As a result, I mean, as a business, we are not closing. Um, we will let those colleagues who are not involved in the direct lending go and leave so that to reduce our leave liability. But those who are directly involved in the disbursements, um, they will take public holidays. 
um, and their leave will approved as and when. So those are some of the measures we're putting together. And uh, Honorable Member Mnube, um, um, you know, same point about SARS. It is correct. I mean, it's not a policy issue. Our policies effectively allow us to do the things that we need to do, and the act empowers us to provide the support that's needed to entrepreneurs, including compliance with SARS, if that's what they need to do. But we just seem at times to put targets uh, on ourselves and then trip ourselves with the fact that we've put the criteria as SARS when the criteria shouldn't have been SARS or the way the policies are interpreted are interpreted uh, to be incorrect. So those, I think, have been more uh, our own internal performance issues, which again are, are the issues we're dealing with. And then on irregular expenditure, um, there is a matter which, you know, related to the building and that has been raised with the Department of Economic Development and with the Treasury because that's largely been outside of our control uh, as the GEP. Um, and then we've had also transversal contracts which were uh, by DED as well and they're also outside of our direct control. And then on some of these legacy contracts, which were irregular, those are the ones, some of them that relate to the SIU investigations, they relate to the Kabela investigations, and, and then maybe some of the internal, you know, disciplinary processes that we, that are taking place. So where there are recommendations for us to act um, based on, you know, some of the uh, uh, wrong uh, that may have happened. We 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 we're acting uh, on those things. So so that that I hope I've covered all of the questions, uh, honourable chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Is there any follow up uh, question? Okay. No. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Ghana can come back. Yeah, I had asked the question on the SMME fund um, as it relates to the relief fund, as it relates to the other funds that are being mobilized to come into it, uh, to understand what the, uh, the bigger plan is. Because my understanding is that of the 250 million that uh, was transferred to JEP in the last financial year, <clears throat> 50 million of it is what what is being uh, uh, used in the in the in the rebuilding fund so which which leaves the 200 million uh, and is try to understand what is the plan for this 200 million and also the other money so the other funds that are being uh, mobilized to come into some kind of a, a central fund that was a question that i asked and the ceo just forgot to respond to it thanks no, thank you very much, uh, CEO. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair, and uh, and apologies, Honorable Ghana. I just responded on the performance. I didn't get the part uh, on the breakdown. So you correct the 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 end goal with the with the 250 million is to make sure that we mobilize funds that will make it as a minimum 500 million and hopefully up to a billion. So this is the target that we've put on ourselves that will leverage this 250, one rand for one rand or one rand for four rands. So yes, the first 50 million has been committed in the partnership with the ITC. We are then now on the memorandum of agreement that we've put are also um, uh, proposing to commit additional funds with the ITC. Now the ITC will either put um, a hundred million or two hundred million in it. Include hundred million from the uh, from the SASME because it has also already indicated a, an intention to come. And again, why it's been one of those prioritized is because uh, honourable members will recall when there was the initiative between business and government to to avert the downgrade. There were four programs which the government had announced and one of them was the creation of an 
on, of an SME fund. Um, and the commitment by small business development was that the government will put 1.5 billion and the private sector will put 1.5 billion. The private sector put 1.5 billion, but government didn't come to the party. So the provincial government then engaged as a SME to come on to the party. So we would discuss it with Gads for them to come. And then we had also shown yesterday that we have um, um, that we have um, a pipeline of projects not approved because, as I said, we're waiting for these memorandums to be agreed to and approved by the board. We're shown so that when we say we have a pipeline, it doesn't look like we are just making promises. So we've shown there's entities like UBank um, that are already in the SME environment and had said they could match us one rent for one rent or even le leverage it for one to three times. Um, what it is that we're putting. So that's the breakdown, uh, Honorable Member. But I think an important number to put in mind is that as a minimum, the whole, all of these initiatives in the different pots that uh, they are going to be in will not be less than 500 million that will then be dispersed. And again, for simplicity's sake, how we've structured these um, these uh, partnerships is that they are purely on a first come first served basis anyone can apply you've got to show us you are in the SAE environment and you've got to put as a minimum one rent for one rent um, uh, that we're putting and of course you then apply to us um, uh, for us to then consider and it will be approved uh, internally so that is that is what uh, is being done uh, honorable chair thank you Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I know that uh, these discussions are not really conclusive. It's ongoing. We'll keep on really asking these questions, checking the progress where you are and getting clarity on the matter. But thank you very much, uh, CEO, on, the, on your response. So let's move to the next. Uh, uh, is the Houting Gimbling Port. <clears throat> but again, I know you've also forwarded a proposal where is part of the consultation in constituting your board? But I remember they've received your letter, they've received all those CVs, but I think it will be upon the members whether they will really respond on the spot or they'll request time to go through that and the committee will respond formally to you. So you, 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 you'll just put your, 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 your consultative uh, initiative and then we'll really take it from there. But for now, Yes, go on with the uh, table in the report. Thank you. <clears throat> Afternoon, Chair. Uh, just put this into a presentation mode. Okay. Afternoon, Chair, Honourable Members. Thank you very much for the opportunity for us to present on our annual report for the year 2020-2021. My name is Tiran. Um, I'm the acting CEO. Um, Chair, my, my presentation should not take us too long. I will uh, proceed as it relates to the matter at hand. Um, naturally, as far as the economic environment that we've had over the last year, I think we're all cognizant of the fact that COVID has been um, uh, the pandemic itself has has uh, affected all markets and the economy um, in all forms. Um, the industry in Kateng, um has uh, remained, uh, the gambling industry in Kateng has remained um, uh, a massive role player in trying to continue to assist the province in terms of sustaining jobs and um, the economy in an inclusive manner. The um, during the first part, in the first quarter of uh, last year, we had a massive issue in that the, 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 la the lockdown resulted in um, us only generating approximately 10% of revenue through uh, online platforms. Um, and it was only when we got to advanced level three that we were then able to then uh, proceed with then the industry opening up in a controlled manner. As such, the taxes and levies that were uh, collected and then distributed to Houtek Provincial Government amounted to 795 million. This presents a decline of 38% from the previous year, 
um, against that backdrop of the lockdown, as well as then the, the further lockdown that we experienced in uh, December. In terms of our overview, the GGB has received uh, unqualified audits uh, from inception. Um, and in 2020, 2021, the GGB has achieved a clean audit. All of the audit findings that were raised by the AG uh, in this financial year have already been resolved. Uh, we had two findings that were still from the 2019. Open the window a little bit. I'm also hot. Sorry. Uh, KG. OK, thanks. You can continue. Sorry, Chair. Um, there are two findings to the previous year, the prior year, 2019-20, that relate to irregular expenditure. This has to do with um, 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 a legal procurement that was done. Um, and um, as such, uh, the investigation was uh, conducted. Uh, we implemented the disciplinary processes in this regard. Um, those investigations were done in the year 2020-21 and concluded. Um, and now we're uh, just waiting on that uh, response for condemnation from Treasury. In terms of the performance targets for the year, uh, we've achieved all except one. I'll go through them here, Chair. I do have a narrative with explanations, but I'll, I'll sort of talk to them as well. Um, as indicated, we've uh, achieved our um, clean audit status, so that was achieved. IBAS is our business automation uh, project as we look to, to automate the internal processes of uh, GGB and then work towards then an enhanced monitoring of our licensees. The development process has uh, been achieved. Uh, we have conducted our quality assurances processes during the course of this year. Um, and we then proceeding then with those findings there, which uh, will then see how the project will then progress through the year. In terms of gaming license applications, these are entity applications. Uh, um, uh, in with regards to this, we had 35 applications and we've processed all 35 applications within the desired time frame. Employee registrations, um, we had 524 applications um, that were processed. Uh, all 100% of them were processed in accordance with those requirements. We've overachieved on our compliance audits. Um, Chair, the overachievements relate to our business continuity and uh, COVID response as an organization. We were able to then uh, conduct more audits than anticipated um, with the support of our licensees as well. Our gambling inspections, which are on-site inspections of our various licensees, uh, was achieved. Uh, the percentage of uh, gambling disputes processed was 97% uh, uh, of the, the disputes that were received. Percentages of licensees non-compliances was 63%. Uh, we only had 14 incidences um, that were then um, achieved. Uh, and that relates to the 63%. The percentage of gambling equipment applications processed was 338 applications. And uh, the progress towards a review of the Gambling Act, we didn't do anything there, so that was not applicable. The RAND value of the uh, gambling tax is distributed, um, that we've already spoken to. The revenue audits uh, was an overachievement, again, as it relates to business continuity and our COVID response plan, we were able to then conduct more revenue audits, again, with the assistance and support of our licensees. Um, we did our assessment report of triple BEE as we look to fo uh, foster and improve opportunities uh, in terms of transformation within the gambling sector. Um, that resulted in um, uh, targets for transformation into our 21 22 um, uh, annual performance for the current year, as well as then uh, the rest of the MTEF. The Percentage of information received for illegal gambling uh, that was achieved, uh, the number of people uh, reached through illegal gambling messages was uh, overachieved. Uh, this is primarily through our 
social media campaigns and uh, those types of platforms, which was then became important for us during the hard lockdowns as well. Um, education and training sessions held. This is for our police service. Um, we uh, we try to go out to our various police stations so that we can try and assist in in improving the levels of gambling education and training sessions so that they can then assist us um, as part of our process with the, with regards to our combating of illegal gambling. Our responsible gambling messaging, uh, which remains an important part of our mandate in terms of um, the socioeconomic responsibility we have for Gauteng. Uh, we've uh, also then overachieved this. This is in, in relation to, uh, as I'd indicated, social media campaigns, etc., that then reached or improved our reach as far as uh, number of people. Our underachievement chair um, relates to the sports development fund and the distribution thereof. Um, we only distributed 21% of um, the available funds within the SDF. Um, this is a fourth quarter target, but um, unfortunately, due to um, the uh, inability for our board to correct, there wasn't anything that we could do with regards to this one. And um, we, we, we then uh, resolved some of those issues in the first quarter of uh, this financial year. Uh, corporate social investment. This this relates to to money spent for for CSI funding, uh, which is the 10.1 million rand that's been achieved. Um, as indicated, we have 19 targets. 18 have been achieved, with one underachievement that puts us at 94% uh, achievement for the year prior. Um, I've already explained the the underachievement in terms of the sports development fund. Um, I've reflected on the uh, overachievements um, as well as the gaming equipment applications, um, the disputes as well, um, which allowed us to, to then proceed, uh, as well as then the overachievements on the uh, legal gambling, on responsible gambling. In terms of uh, the, the financial environment, um, our revenue stream uh, relates to the following breakdown, primarily for the tax collection. And then we've had our sundry income and sale of goods, etc., which were received along with the grant for the business automation project. The operational expenditure um, is against compensation goods. We had uh, increased um, uh, spend on CapEx. This is in regards to the addition of lands and buildings uh, that was procured during uh, the last financial year. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, I just noted the two specific questions. I know um, Member Ghana did ask about COVID-19 and its impact on taxes. Um, uh, yes, sir, it does. It does remain um, an impact in terms of entertainment and leisure when we consider that our industry is that of entertainment and leisure. Um, and then the availability of disposable income, uh, the, the, the COVID pandemic continues to uh, cause a concern in terms of the raise of taxes. Uh, and uh, in relation to it, um, uh, even though we've gone through different levels of uh, or reduction of different levels under the, the, the Disaster Management Act, the regulations for uh, the gambling industry has remained unchanged since July of last year, which means that we still operate at 50% cap capacity and then we're still limited to the curfew requirements, whereas, as, as uh, many of you would know, that the casinos normally do operate under a 24-hour period. Um, this will continue to be a limitation for us, um, but I think as well, it's, it's we remain cognizant of the fact that we still wish to maintain um, that there should be responsible gambling um, and uh, in the economic environment that we have, there is a reduction of disposable income that's uh, available to the general public. Um, Honorable uh, Makubela mentioned the, the issue of suspensions and the, 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 the leave from the, the CEO and the CFO. We do take note of that. Uh, uh, honourable member, 
Um, we, we do acknowledge that. Um, I believe that the administrative processes that you will then undertake as far as um, a review on the uh, application that's before you with regards to the board will assist us in this process that we can then proceed within the uh, necessary appointments to then fill that gap. Um, Chair, uh, with that, I thank you. I, I think I've concluded on that matter. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I know we we engaged on this also yesterday, and then you also attempted to respond to some of the potential questions that might be raised uh, by honourable members. Um, I want to see if there is a hand. Uh, honourable Mube, is that the KTC hand? Thank you. Yeah, I think in the absence, uh, can you really take us to the issue of the board so that we are able to respond to that? Certainly, uh, certainly Chair. Thank you so much. Um, I, I think ours is uh, a, a matter of uh, an administrative process. Uh, um, naturally now responding on behalf of uh, the, the the department but essentially in terms of the the legislative process that sits within the Gauteng gambling act um, there's a, a requirement in fact that uh, the appointment of um, the board members um, and that list shall be deliberated upon by by legislature um, uh, it is on that basis that the application has been put forward to you, sir, um, as it relates to um, the the consideration that's uh, for for the appointment of board members to the to the Heart and Gambling Board. Um, that's uh, ultimately uh, where uh, this. Uh, Am I the only one who doesn't hear anything? Uh, we were able to hear him. I can also hear. Uh, do you hear us, uh, Honorable Nube? Honorable Nube? Yeah, I'm sure you are the one who has uh, some technicality problems. Uh, you can continue, uh, CEO. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, so so essentially, sir, against that uh, backdrop, that that is um, where we are. I'm just going to flight the the requirement from the Act quickly. This is the Hot and Gambling Act of uh, 1995 as amended, and um, uh, is this my catch? Yeah, two says a problem on network. We can't hear anything. Yeah, I'm showing sure it to it's to a network. I'll the. Our supporting staff should be in touch with you so that you are really on board uh, where we are. Let me let me try and move closer to my mic. Maybe that will assist. Um, uh, as I'd indicated, um, th there is uh, reference or inference within our act, and you can see uh, subclause C uh, that I'm uh, looking at, which is uh, reflective of. Um, that uh, the responsible member after consultation with the legislature and this the committee will uh, then make deliberation so that the um, appointment of the board can then proceed. Um, through you, Chair, I would ask if um, the department has anything further to add on this specific submission and application uh, that has been put forward on behalf of the Houghton Gambling Board. No, thank you very much, uh, uh, CEO. I think uh, it is really proper because you have to follow those processes. But now for me, I think, I'm not sure how soon, but uh, as the committee will table this in our meeting, uh, it will be next week Friday, our formal meeting, and then we'll definitely respond immediately after that to say we've considered, and then this is how our recommendation on how you, you, you wanted it to move forward. I think in that 
in that way, it, it will give us the space to go through those CVs, go through whatever as members of the committee, and then we'll finalize it in our meeting next week. Thank you, Chair. It's much appreciated. Okay, no, thank you very much. And uh, there was no specific question to this, so we'll have to move to. And let me check if ever there's any other question from even outside uh, honorable members. Yeah, I'll keep on checking, but it seems you also responded to the, 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 the questions in anticipation, and I think that's how it, re it really helped. Now let's get to the routing uh, tourist uh, agency. Um, thank you, Chair. I uh, just want to confirm that you can see my presentation. Definitely, we can see. Okay, thank you, Chair. My name is Mbali. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for the Houting Tourism, currently acting as the CEO. Um, I'll be taking you through our annual report for the 1920 financial year. I mean, for the 2021 financial year. So for us, 2021 was very challenging, um, mainly because of the space that we work in. We work in the tourism environment, and we are obviously affected largely so by COVID-19. We had to quickly adjust last year so that we are still able to deliver on our mandate as, as articulated on the Harding Tourism Authority Act. Um, and I think we did that successfully. You'll see when I go through our performance, we actually overachieved in most of our indicators for last year, but we had to tailor them um, in light of the new normal. So our forecast for last year was not the traditional marketing of the destination of Gauteng, but it was through the implementation of the tourism recovery plan. And also our priority was on safeguarding jobs, especially in the tourism sector and supporting the SMMEs. So that was the bulk of the work that we're doing and exploring different ways of marketing the destination um, while still complying with the COVID-19 protocols. Um, so we, it was very, it was a transitional year. We've never gone through that before, but I believe we, we did it successfully. So as you will see on our performance for, for last year. Now in our indicators for last year, it was most of them, we actually overachieved them. It was quite interesting for us because when we moved, when we transitioned from the traditional marketing platform that we've been using, that use, that use um, physical contact and going through the virtual platforms and the hybrid platforms of, of hosting events, we're actually able to do more than what we had anticipated. And the nice thing about it is we were able to achieve all our targets and even overachieve them with little resources. We only discovered during last year that it was cheaper to actually do some of the events um, on online and hybrid platforms. Hence, we were able to overachieve them without necessarily exhausting all our funds. So, but now we know better. We can we can budget correctly now because we now know the cost implications of going online and of using hybrid platforms. Unlike last year, which was the first time we were, we were exploring with these hybrid events. So, on the number of destination com communications, we did nine against the target of five. Um, destination brand communications, we achieved our target of five. The one I'm interested in is the number of bids presented. We exceeded our target. I think even yesterday when I was talking about, about our Q2 performance, I did allude to the fact that our focus is on bidding. And I'm still expecting that even for this year, we are going to exceed the target on the bids presented because we um, we've intensified all our efforts of bidding so that by the time the the by the time the economy opens, we are ready to host events that will contribute towards the economy of the Gauteng province. The number of black SMMEs we achieved our targets. Um, number of virtual business exchange programs again we we exceeded our target of four and we delivered five because um, we are in the business of mining for information of mining for bids um, from last year even continuing up until the current year and it shows in the performance that we deliver. The one that I'm very happy about is the number of tourism enterprises participating in the Gauteng Tourism Enterprise Development Program. Our target was 30, um, but we way over exceeded it. We delivered about 111. 
Last year was the first year where we decided to take full advantage of partnerships, of collaborating with other stakeholders so that we can deliver maximum impact, particularly to, to safeguard the jobs also of the SMMEs and, um, and individuals in the, in the tourism space. And we signed a lot of partnerships. We had a lot of partnerships with the National Department of Tourism, as well as our sister, our sister agencies. And I believe it yielded um, positive results. That has continued even in the current year. We have a lot of partnership agreements that we've signed with other stakeholders and I believe that the impact is going to be even greater than last year when we're piloting it now we are doing it full scale and I believe it will show when we present um, the results for the 21-22 financial year we're very happy about that one um, on our financial performance as I indicated that because it was the first time we were exploring online and digital and hybrid events because in the past we, we, are, we are experts in delivering physical physical events we we're not that clear on the cost implications of doing it and we were able to overachieve our targets but using less resources so um so the understanding is not necessarily because we did not do what we're supposed to do but it's because we use different platforms particularly digital platforms which turned out to be somewhat cheaper than the than the than the old platforms that were that in the past we were exploring. For example, we don't have to hire massive venues now because we are doing online platforms. So it was a bit cheaper. But from the grant that we get from the department, our 74% expenditure, mainly it comes from destination marketing as well as the events where we were using um, online platforms of doing things and still exceeded our target. So we, we are not concerned that much from, from a performance perspective, but from a costing perspective, it was the first year we, we had to figure out how much does it cost to go the online and the hybrid platforms of delivering our services. For the National Department of Tourism, the Tourism Monitors Project, we only spent 38%, but it's no fault of the GTA um, when COVID struck. All the tourism monitors that were deployed in the different tourist attractions, they had to be recalled because of the regulation. So they were recalled and the program came to an end in December. Um, so that's why the money was not spent. Had it not been for COVID, definitely they would have continued doing what they were appointed to do. We would have spent the, the money. Um, Department of Small Business Development, we're very happy about this one. This, is, this was a project we are running to provide relief to SMMEs that were affected by COVID, as I indicated earlier on, that our primary focus was safeguarding the jobs and supporting the SMMEs. And we did, we were able to get into this partnership with the Department of Small Business Development, and we successfully um, supported SMMEs with 2.2 million. The 8% that was not spent, because currently it looks like we underspent, no, we actually spent the full money on the qualifying SMMEs. We left a bit of money behind because there were some that were, they did not succeed the on the first round but they went through the appeal process. We concluded the appeal in the 21-22 financial year and those that were qualifying after the appeals have actually been paid out. So I believe we, we, we rendered and delivered on that project very, very well as the, as the GTA. And we are doing even more now in the current financial year. There's a lot of, um, we just got another partnership now for the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, where they've entrusted us to do more because of the successful delivery that we did last year on these partnerships um, on, the, on supporting the SMMEs. In terms of economic classification, compensation of employees, we spent 86% because we had 12 vacancies that we planned to fill last year. But uh, towards the end of the year, we got a cut of 28 million on our compensation of employees budget over the MTF. So even though we had the funds last year for us to fill in these vacancies, we're not going to be able to sustain those employees over the MTF with a 28 million cut um, in, in, in our salaries budget. And by the time our budget was cut, it was towards the end of the financial year. So there wasn't enough time for us to surrender the funds timelessly since the, the cut came after the adjustment budget period. That's why we got that 86% expenditure. In goods and services, our 58% mainly coming from the Tourism Monitors Project, as I alluded to, as well as destination marketing and events because of the virtual platforms that we're using, which um, turned out to be costing much cheaper, much cheap, much, much more cheaper than the, the traditional physical platforms of marketing that we've been using in the past. 
For capital assets, um, we had a bit of a delay there. Um, we wanted to buy laptops to enable employees to work remotely from home instead of using desktops. Uh, all the procurement was done. We just had delays from the service provider in delivering the laptops that were ordered. But from a procurement perspective, everything was done. We are just waiting for the service provider to deliver. And I believe in this year now, um, there's been quite a lot of traction and some of the laptops have already been delivered in, in this new year. Um, in terms of our programs, um, you will see here the storyline is the same, destination marketing 24%, but over and above the online platforms that we're using to market the Gauteng destination in 2021, which was for the first time because of COVID, there was a tender. We wanted to do um, a trade regulation 16A6 participation on the contract that the South African tourism has on digital services. Everything was was approved by Treasury. We were already at a contracting stage. And just when we were about to start rolling out the digital services, we were advised by um, by Treasury of the, of the impending change on the GPG SM framework relating to the participation. I believe the CFO for GGDA did mention also some of the challenges they have. We also had a similar challenge and um, we then decided to err on the side of caution and not to proceed with the participation and to rather do our own tender, which we did successfully will advertise in the on the 21 22 financial year closing on the 16th of april so because of that the change in the in the in the rules um, pertaining to the treasury um, pertaining to this regulation on the participation on the last minute towards the end of the financial year we couldn't appoint a digital services company in the 2021 financial year but we are finalizing the the procurement process now because the tender is already closed the evaluation is done so we will be doing that rolling it out fully in the 2021-22 financial year for um for events I've spoken to the events were hybrid um therefore they were much cheaper than what they would have been if we hired stadiums or any big venue like we like we like we historically did. Destination management fifty three percent expenditure because of tourism monitors. That's where the tourism monitors project sits, and as I indicated, the, they all had to be pulled out when COVID struck and the regulations were much stripped, not allowing them to be at the tourist attractions, which I think 90% of them had actually shut down during that time. Our support services expenditure of 83% is due to the salaries and I've spoken on the details on that one. Um, I think I'm gonna jump here because the narrative I'd already spoken about it. In terms of our audit report, we received a clean audit. It was our seventh consecutive clean audit from the AG. Um, we didn't have any matters affecting the audit report, but we did have um, about seven other important matters. What we've do, we develop, we've already developed an audit action plan, and we're actually reporting on it on a monthly basis to the Gauteng Treasury on what is the progress on addressing the the seven findings, so that they are all cleared by the end of the financial year. Um, to avoid repeat findings in the new year. And I must say the, the Office of the AG assisted us a lot in identifying any shortcomings in our processes so that um, going forward, we can do things better to avoid a possible regression in our audit report. So working with the AG, I believe um, we, we are in a position to develop proper action plans to make sure that we never regress in our audit report and I'm comfortable with where we are in the implementation of the audit action plan as of today. I, I think everything is on par. Um, we've actually resolved practically everything that was pertaining to those seven audit um, findings, which did not affect the audit report. Um, Chair, that concludes my, my presentation. Thank you. No, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. I think uh, you really presented it well, and uh, it's a sequel for from what you really presented yesterday on the second uh, quarterly performance uh, report. Uh, let me give it to the office of the AG. Uh, you can flag your presentation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Nitin Tuaka. Responsible. Uh, may I please get a confirmation if my presentation is this? My audible colleague. Yeah, but you are not audible. Can uh, but you can see the the slide. Okay. Um, I've just adjusted and taken over 
off the earphones because I'm actually at the client. Uh, hopefully, the background noise will not affect you. Um, am I audible enough now? Yes, you are. Okay, thanks, Chum. Um, as I said, I'm an audit manager responsible for Gauteng Tourism. Um, we just have a short presentation um, regarding the Gauteng Tourism. Um, the next slide is just our HGSA mission, which our colleagues have alluded to so many times before. I'll just pass through that. Um, and I will zoom in to slide number four, which is the key message. Um, with regards to the audit of financial statement, um, our GTA attained um, unqualified opinion with no material findings on compliance and reported performance information. The performance information was valid and accurate. Um, we did note an amount of 258,000, which was reported as irregular due to a non-approved extension. However, it was assessed as immaterial, which means it did not affect our audit report. Um, there was no material non-compliance with laws and regulation reported, um, and the leadership set the correct tone at the top. Um, just to draw attention to the member, we had one significant finding that affected the management report. It did not affect the audit report, uh, but we would like to draw attention to that matter, which was in regards to the disclosure of a provision for surplus funds to be surrendered. So there was a, an incorrect um, disclosure in accordance with GRAP 19, where management did not debit a correct line item. So that's the matter we are emphasizing on um, and drawing attention to. Um, with regard to recommendations, we do have recommendations uh, to the accounting officer to continue providing sound leadership and adequate oversight over the financial reporting and performance information. Um, continue to track commitment man, made to maintain audit outcome and continue oversight monitoring to ensure compliance with laws and regulation. Um, as I stated uh, before, it was a clean audit, so there is not a lot of issues noted. Thank you, Chair. I will take any comments or questions from the floor. No, thank you very much. Uh, let me check if there, from the honourable members, do you have any input uh, on the two reports? Yeah, I think uh, it was well uh, presented, and uh, the fact that we engaged on this yesterday, I think it contributes to our inputs today. And uh, there is no need just to repeat some questions. And uh, let me thank you, uh, the CEO, for the presentation and also from the Office of the AG. And uh, well, we've noted the points that we've raised but we are talking about the entities that are that got the clean audits. Maybe that's why we can't really engage uh, furthermore. But thank you very much. Let's move to our last uh, entity, the Cradle of Humankind, uh, Dino Game. Uh, you can flight it and then we really engage on it. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, honorable members the leader of delegation of officials, Mr. Nawa. Uh, thank you for the privilege of presenting our annual report for 2020-2021 for Cradle of Humankind and the Nukem Project. Chair, I think it is just important to, to to give a short background so that we are all in the same part. And when we talk to uh, elements of our project, people understand the background to where we're coming from. Cradle of Humankind project and the Nukem project were identified in the poor resorts of Gauteng. That is in Tswane and in the Western and heritage and conservation were used to create an opportunity for economic activities in the two areas so as to create inclusive economic participation and job creation. However, 
we had 11 targets for the financial year. And I must say that uh, we achieved 100% of all the targets that we, we had uh, planned for in our APP. But due to technicalities that uh, Treasury did cut our budget by two by 6.2 million, and they brought it back in the last two weeks of the uh, last financial month, which is March, around the 15th, and the money could not be utilized. However, we made plans to make sure that the project. Uh, given that it was the SMMEs and the cooperatives that were going to be affected negatively, we had to look for alternative plans. So much that when the money was returned by Treasury in March, around the 15th, we had already committed and looked for alternatives. So the money that we did not spend, which is 6.2, uh, it's not an understanding, but it is a saving in the, in the sense that we had to make an alternative arrangement. But technically speaking, given that because of the budget cut, we had to implement those projects after the end of the financial year. Therefore, technically, uh, we reached consensus with our auditors that yes, by the end of the financial year, we had achieved nine, and that gives us 81%, which means the two targets were completed just after the end of the financial year. Uh, let's move to the next slide, Mfundo. So this is a, a, a reflection, uh, the, the graph is a reflection of the 81%. And just to say that we create, as Credit and Unukeng, we create direct jobs and indirect jobs. So the work that we do in terms of maintaining the boreholes is to sustain the cradle of humankind so that it attracts a hospitality investment, which hospitality create job opportunities for people, and that is the indirect jobs that we uh, we create in the cradle. And we do more or less the same in the okay? We create uh, indirect jobs. And as I indicated yesterday, that part of the work that we do, uh, it's in line with integrated money a management plan, which report we submit to UNESCO, UNESCO through a national department to indicate uh, that we are maintaining uh, and protecting the fossils in the credit. So the number of boreholes that were monitored, uh, our target was 17 and 19 was done. This is because of the sensitivity of the dolomite. So our researchers and scientists, when they do this exercise, should they detect that they, there might be a problem uh, on the boreholes, or I mean, in the, with the dolomite, they go an extra mile and hence the overachievement. Next slide, Mfundo. I have explained about uh, the natural resource management yesterday. Uh, we got 100% on that. The integrated management plan. This is a document that we submit to national department and they collect all the documents, uh, the integrated management plans of all the 10 heritage sites in South Africa including Robben Island and, and, and others, uh, you have to submit this and the national department through the minister submit this to UNESCO. And every six months we are monitored against the plans that we have submitted so that we give a guarantee that uh, we are looking after our fossils 
and the standard of the heritage site is as expected in terms of the uh, Heritage Convention Act. Next slide, please. So we achieved 100% uh, in the last financial year. Uh, the jobs that we, we created through the cycling economy, if you go to the cradle of humankind, you will realize that there are cycling lanes and we are using cycling activity because it's part of the regulated activities in terms of land use in the cradle. So we aim to produce 20 jobs. And I must say that in this financial year, uh, through the advice of the MEC, we, we are targeting to produce 120 jobs. Uh, anyway, for the last financial year, we achieved 100% on that. Sustainability of the jobs in the in Maruping, where we provide the interpretation. Normally, what we do, we we make sure that we employ tour guides, uh, hospitality services for visitors, uh, and there are people who are employed by Mal, which I explained yesterday. The number will always differ given uh, the fact that initially we're only counting on the jobs that we have created directly, which we use operational funding through MAL to pay for those uh, employees, as I indicated that uh, uh, yesterday. However, we have realized that with the operational funding that we are providing them, uh, we are also creating 17 more jobs, uh, which come through provision of security, landscaping, and cleaning. These are through the private companies that are providing services, and hence the achievement is uh, 133 jobs. Next slide, Mfundo. Uh, I've spoken about the vegetation yesterday. We are at 100 percent. Number of payments for operational funding to sustain the game reserve in the uh, We have done that so that we are able to ensure that we provide security. The operations of the game reserve is not disrupted. So we are at 100 percent in ensuring that we provide uh, the necessary resources. Now, Chair, this is a very important target in terms of community development because we have faced, for many years, we have faced disruptions and political instability in the area, and it has been very difficult to, uh, to set up a proper community development trust which would coordinate community beneficiation project. And last year, we dedicated effort and we even were able to secure uh, the offices for the Community Development Trust, which is supporting the bakery, the B line, and the laundry, which laundry. These are community projects which are intended to support the lodges in the area. And as I indicated earlier, that although Treasury had cut the money, we decided to talk to the uh, the Game Reserve Management Authority, which provided free offices and were able to secure furniture for them. And this target has been achieved. I must say that currently we have stability. We are focusing on community beneficiation together with the trust and communities in the area. So we had 100% on this target. In terms of the number of SMMEs, Chair, yes, we targeted 24, we achieved eight, and this is the explanation I was given that all the targets were achieved, unfortunately, given that Treasury had cut off on our budget, we could only complete this project just after the end of the financial year. Next slide. Uh, the same story goes to cooperatives. 
uh, together with the SMMEs, uh, we did achieve the full target, but the 10 of the uh, uh, cooperatives could only complete the support in terms of training and provision of equipment just after the end of the financial year. Next uh, slide, Mfunda. Chair, there's very little to, to, to talk to issues of human resource capacity, except to say that whilst we have 63 uh, approved uh, posts, we have filled 40, we still have vacant posts. And I must say that uh, we don't just want to appoint warm bodies. We are in a process with the department to uh, get a, a new structure, and we are only advertising critical posts. And by the end of the financial year, we had uh, filled uh, four posts. You would see in the next, uh, in, in this current financial year that we have made a lot of progress, including the uh, addressing the audit queries that we had regarding uh, the vacant post. Next slide, please. Now, Chair, uh, I'm going to ask, uh, through your permission, I'm going to ask uh, the financial director to take us through uh, our expenditure, and he will also take us through the progress with regard to the audit reports. Over to you, Mr. Mfundo Hadebe. Thank you, Chairperson, uh, and honorable members. Um, with regard to Credit of Humankind, we spent 95% of our budget in the year 2021, and uh, Dino um, uh, spent 81%, mainly because of the reasons that have been advanced, whereby our budget was cut, uh, and uh, we had to implement some of the project through the partnerships, and the budget was not, was not spent. Um, So this is just a sub-program uh, allocation and uh, exp expenditure for, for credit of uh, humankind, which came to 95% exp expenditure. And with the narrative, we are indicating that we spent 95% of our budget with um, um, an underspending of 3% uh, on goods and uh, services and 6% on compensation of, of uh, employees. This underspending was mainly because of compliments which we made uh, by the end of the financial year, but we're not yet uh, yet uh, paid. And also the capital budget, we had um, con conducted a service provider to supply um, laptops, which uh, they were, there was a delay with regard to the delivery of those la laptops. They were subsequently delivered after the year and hence the underspending. With, with regard to compensation of employees, the underspending is mainly due to vacant posts which were not filled by the end of the financial year. With regard to to a Dinogeng project, this is a sub program uh, de depiction of the of, of our spend spending, and the narrative chair, uh, as we have indicated, we spent eighty five percent of our um, allocation. The under spending we underspend by uh, three point seven in terms of uh, goods and uh, services, mainly because of uh, there was a EPWP project which was supposed to implement through an SLA with the national department, but there was a delay in the national department sign, signing off on that uh, SLA, and also the later reversal of the budget cut by, by Treasury, which forced us to implement some of the projects through partnership, hence the uh, underspending. The underspending on compensation for employees is informed by vacant posts, which are not filled by the end of the financial year. With, with regard to, to, to the audit for Craig Law for Humankind, we received a clean audit, which means it's an unqualified audit without any significant fi findings. We had a total of a 10 fi findings, um, uh, and of, of, of which eight have already been uh, implemented or re resolved. And this is just a narrative chair in terms of our fi findings. The first four which are depicted there, all of them were, were one implemented 
the, by, the, by the time the audit was uh, concluded by the Auditor General. And um, number six, Chair, is with, is with regard to of, uh, the identification of, identification of suppliers in the service of the state. What happened here, Chair, is that uh, every time we appoint service providers, they need to, to confirm in writing through filling a, a form confirming that they are not government employees. We also confirm with the CSD database, database which is managed by National Treasury, to confirm that uh, members or directors of those companies are not uh, employees of um, government. In this instance, uh, one of the directors was found to have been uh, appointed or in the employ of an SOE, but uh, CSD could not uh, detect that and also the service, service provider failed to disclose that in their SPD uh, for forms. And uh, this was a finding on our part. Uh, we have subsequently, uh, after the end of the second quarter, we have subsequently written a letter to the, to the service pro provider in a question with, with, with regard to their false uh, the disclosure. The other uh, finding, Chair, which is still in a progress is with regard to policies and procedures which were found to be outdated. They were in place, but they just needed to be to be updated. This is uh, currently under under underway and will be implemented in the in the third quarter. With regard to Dino Gang, uh, we had eight findings of which seven have already been implemented or resolved. Uh, Dino Gang also received a clean audit during the course of the 2021 financial year. So this is just a narrative of those uh, findings which were implemented before the, the conclusion of the audit. Um, with just one chair, one finding, which is still in progress, the one on the uh, policies and the uh, procedures, mainly because Craig Law Human Card and Juno King, they mostly share their their policies. But like we have indicated, they will be this will be also be implemented in the current quarter. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Okay, no, thank you very much. Uh, maybe swiftly, let's get to the auditor, uh, Office of the Auditor General. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, good afternoon again to the to the members and and the colleagues. I'm just gonna quickly take you through um, the audit outcomes for Credil and Dino King. Um, as, as previously indicated, they, they similar in nature. Um, it's just a few things that I would want to highlight on, on the report. Uh, Chair, can you please indicate if you can see my screen? Yeah, you can continue. Okay, I'm just going to straight go to the key message. Um, uh, the entity significantly um, improved the, the audit outcomes from the unqualified with findings in the previous year to a clean audit in the current year, as it was as it was indicated. Uh, performance information was valid, accurate, and and complete. The entity did not incur any regular expenditure in the current financial year, and there was no material non-compliance with laws and regulations that was identified. I think leadership has to be commended for for setting the, the right tone at the top. Uh, I think one item that we had identified uh, was was an error, which was as a result of the system that it didn't pull some of the of the of the numbers that had been captured. I think it was due to to a setup on 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 the system in terms of printing. So this was um, an error in the financial statements, which when we evaluated, did not really have an impact uh, on 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 compliance. Uh, in terms of the recommendations to management, um, we, we recommend that the accounting officer uh, to continue to provide sound leadership and adequate oversight responsibility over financial reporting and performance information uh, to ensure that daily disciplines that sustain positive audit outcome are in place and effectively implemented, to continue to track commitments made to maintain audit outcomes and to continue um, oversight monitoring to ensure compliance with laws and regulations. Then I'm going to move to Dino Keng. Um, similarly, I'll go straight to, to the key message. Um, the entity maintained the audit outcome as, as unqualified opinion with no material findings on compliance and reported performance. Of which there's just a, a minor difference in terms of Cradle and Dino Keng. Cradle was unqualified in the previous year, of which they improved. 
and 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 uh, Dinogeng maintained the, the, the audit outcome. The performance information was valid, accurate, and complete. The entity did not incur any regular expenditure in the current year, and there was no material non-compliance with laws and regulations that was identified. And I think as well in relation to to Dinogeng, we we commend leadership for setting up the the, the correct tone at the top. And in terms of the errors, as I've indicated on, on Cradle, it was more or less the similar error as entities are, are more or less like uh, the, 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 they, they operate on the same system. And in terms of the, of the recommendations um, to, to management, the accounting officer is encouraged to continue providing sound leadership and adequate oversight responsibility over financial reporting and performance information reporting to ensure that daily disciplines that sustain positive audit outcome are in place and effectively implemented. Continue to check commitments made to maintain audit outcome and continue oversight monitoring to ensure compliance with laws and regulation. Uh, thank you, Chair. No, thank you very much. Uh, let me open it up uh, to members uh, for input. And also, as indicated, uh, the same as others that have been affected largely by the COVID and uh, very less to report. But in terms of the, 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 the books, the accounting, so they got the clean audit. I, I think in the, in the, in the absence of uh, any questions from members, can I check uh, also outside uh, the members, the stakeholders that are there, if there's anything to raise? And then that will really lead us to the end of the, the presentations from the department and then also from the, from the office of the AG. I must say we are really grateful that you were to be with us up until thus far. Your support is really valued for this committee starting also with the AG office and then also with the department. And uh, we want to thank you for being with us today. I know yesterday also we were together up until very late. So your commitment and then also you are willing to work with the committee. I think it is something that we have really to, to appreciate as a committee. We have raised a number of issues. And those issues that have been raised, as a committee, we are going to formulate them into questions. And then we also wanted to get the response from the department. And again, I still reiterate that we have sent these questions to you, and that were written questions. And then we gave you up until today that you have to respond. And I take it that will really be followed as it is. But before I just close, I can also give it to uh, also Ndadenawa uh, if you've got anything to say. But before that, again, Ndadenawa, I want to say we have also called the department for next week Monday. And the meeting next week Monday, we want the MEC, the HOD should be there and then also the team to make a presentation. And then I really explain it because uh, our, our, our support staff, they've sent you the letter and the letter is clearly explaining why you have to come and make a presentation on the bill. The day we called the department, we gave them the opportunity to present the bill. When they come to the clause by clause, the committee realized that you are not really talking to the original document. What, where the, 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 the bill, let's say it talks about clause number 23. Now your clause number 23 is different from the original document. So that really, that raises a lot of questions. So now what we are requesting from the department is that what the MEC has, has presented in the house is the one that must be presented to the committee. I, I think that is the message that should be very clear so that when you come on Monday, 
you really present the right document. We are just following the process because if you don't do that, at the end, there will be one party, one sector, or from anywhere to say the process was not followed. Therefore, we're not supporting the bill. So that's why I wanted really to be sure from the onset that the process that we're taking, it is in line with our constitution, it's in line with our rules. So that's why we are requesting the department to come on Monday and present before the committee. And uh, I'll give you an hour if you have got anything to say and uh, just your last words so that we conclude this uh, 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 professionally and uh, properly. And at an hour. No, no, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, and thank you very much once more to, to the members of the committee for for the commentary they have made, one which is very complimentary to to the department and the agencies. We we take that home, Chair. As, as the Chair was talking, we were also planning to retreat with all comments and questions that were raised for, for administration to clean up that uh, what the chair and the members have raised. So just to workshop all the issues and, and certain that uh, some of the issues that we have said should not come back again. We are particularly interested to, to ensure that we don't want to once more give you some flimsy or unconceived uh, responses. So we will we'll come to that. We, Chair, we, we also say we will take the message of the Monday back to the department. There were some issues, but I'm sure this committee is important that we will have to withdraw those issues and, and indicate to the MEC and the HOD that the committee has called us. I must also indicate, Chair, that we are doing everything humanly possible to ensure that before the, the day closed, all those questions are answered. I've seen them. I've just requested through the the Office of the HOD that they do the cleaning of the questions so that they, they are submitted. So we will do everything, Chair, to ensure that before the, the day closes, actually, I've asked them by 2 o'clock, they must be with the Office of the Chair. Uh, and, and I'll follow up whether that has been done. Uh, but the rest, Chair, we, we want to say thanks for, for this opportunity of us accounting and ensuring that even our agencies account we commit that we some of the questions that the, the the chair and the committee raise are issues that should be raised by the by the shareholder and I think the shareholder is committed to do that. As I indicated, Chair, that the fundamentals of why the war, war room was created was to ensure that uh, we clean everything, we raise the questions that the chairs raised and the members, we report progress, we also report impact. We don't only talk about percentages, but, but we, we also we talk about what deliveries all about uh, that needs to be dealt with. So, so in that share, we want to express gratitude for, for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, in that hour, we thank you also with the team. And in Memo DC, also we thank you with the team. And uh, you, the department can lock uh, and also with the AG, but if you want to remain, because we're just left with the, the last uh, standardized items, you can remain, but you are really excused if you really love to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Jamil. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Nawa. Thank you, Chair. Sure. Thank you. Thank you uh... Thank you. And also our stakeholders that were in the platform, though they couldn't really, um, uh, they were listening. And I take it their active participation, if they were, uh, it's really valued. And then want to thank them also for being with us today. Thanks. And um, Tavo, you can take us through the, the last items. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, would you speak to like to resolution checking? 
this is one of the items that we're going to deal with in our next meeting, which will be our last, uh, that will be on Friday. Um, provincial bills, as indicated, as indicated yesterday, Chair, we've got that one bill, which is the Township Economic Development Bill. Um, as you just mentioned, now the department once more is coming again to present on this actual bill, um, as introduced by the MEC on, on, on Monday. Um, and, uh, well, that will be a joint meeting between ourselves and CSSL Chair. And um, with respect to correspondence, there is actually nothing um, as we've addressed the matter in relation to the GGB and with respect to petitions as well, um, there is nothing there. And um, I guess the date of the next meeting for this particular committee will be on the 3rd of uh, December. But with respect to the joint committee, it's going to be next week on Monday, which is the 29th chair. Thank you very much. And uh, let me take up the opportunity to thank members once more. And I must really say, your commitment will never go down unnoticed. And uh, I don't want really to say much. Let's meet on Monday. And uh, thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned. I thank you. Thank you, Jay. Okay, thank you, colleague. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much.